Looks like meat's back on the menu, boys! <laughs> today but I have to point out a few other things here is whenever I give you red meat there's always a nutritious prize inside yes it's like when you give your dog a pill and it won't take the pill you just have to like plug it into some cheese welcome to the cheese Soda bourbon. Bourbon soda? That can be cut. Don't need to tell anybody I said soda bourbon, but I cannot do TikTok reaction videos dead sober, or my face is just going to be. <laughs> the entire time. What was your current relationship with God? That's an intense question. I don't know. I think it's good. I think there's more that I could be doing. I was reading the Bible more a year ago. And then since my sleep schedule kind of went off track, I stopped waking up as early and then I stopped reading the Bible in the morning. So I should work on that because I did feel better reading the Bible more. Seems weird. I know to all you people who aren't Christian, that sounds strange. It was strange to me too. It's still strange to me. I don't know how it works exactly, but it makes me feel better. I'm trying to go with the flow. So if things don't work out that I want to work out, I'm thinking, well, maybe that's not meant to be. Maybe God doesn't want that for me. So I've been trying to operate like that, and it's been good for me, I think, because I like to exert a level of control over everything that isn't good for me or the things around me. And so I've let that go a little bit. How is your current relationship with God? That's an intense question. Which is why people like Andrew Tate popped up. I and people like my dad. Um, and I'm not a great admirer. Demographic evidence suggests that women have become increasingly unhappy since the early 1960s. So, you know, cross-sectional studies continually conducted year after year show precisely that. And it could easily be because they've, you know, they're taking on more and more responsibility. You think, well, you have a career and it's fulfilling and all of that. But it's not just fulfilling. It's stressful and difficult and if you have a career and a family especially if you're a single mother well good luck to you man you are run off your feet non-stop and you're a target for every predatory male in the neighborhood <laughs> it's not a pleasant mode of existence and it's not one i would recommend for people even though there are many single mothers who do you know heroic work doing the best they can for their families but they're completely <laughs> overwhelmed you can't work and have kids and be single how the hell could you do that? There, it's two full-time jobs, at least, and that's only if you have one kid. How do you feel? Disgusted with everybody who <laughs> follows me. Are you joking? Seventy-six percent. You guys correct. say bagel and tomato too. No one says Disgusting. bagel. I'm literally gonna take your. People are freaking out about me posting about asking for a babysitter online. I talk to these people. I'm not a moron. I don't particularly like agencies. I don't like the people that agencies send over. I find that the people I found off of Instagram are really kind individuals once I find somebody. So you guys, you guys should calm down. Of order, let's say, and you make an advance on a woman, the feminine, you make an advance on the feminine, then we'll say archetypally, and you're rejected, then that interjects a tremendous amount of chaos into your existence. The chaos that's attendant on such a fundamental rejection. 
<laughs> and that rejection may require a total rethinking of the order because the fundamental purpose of the order at least as it's manifested by men the ma the, fe the masculine is to be attractive to the feminine and so if that's not working then the order needs to be restructured and so how would you symbolize what it is that calls for order to be reordered if you wouldn't symbolize it as chaos Emotional. Young man, and, and all the women are rejecting you. Who's got the problem? It's not all the women. That's a bad road to go down. If all the women are rejecting you, it's you. We both agree on this, but why is enforced monogamy the solution for people that are involuntary celibates? Well, it's the solution to the it's the solution to the relationship between men and women fundamentally is monogamous yeah, social but these norms men are unattractive if these oh, men well, are the unattractive to them but if these men are unattractive to women i don't mean just physically unattractive i mean women aren't seeking them as mates mm -hmm. they need to become men yes they certainly do this is that's what it the is. solution that's the solution absolutely and we man. both agree on this so, yes but, but, but they need to do that in a society where monogamy is the social norm but isn't that's it all. the social norm anyway well that was partly my point although to the degree that we deviate from that, we tilt towards a more violent society. Stop the cow! It's about Beauty and the Beast, and I do think that's the best Disney movie ever made, was that it's a real female hero myth. I mean, the woman, Beauty, is beautiful, so she's high up in the female dominance hierarchy, but she's witty and well-read and intelligent and adventurous and brave and courageous and truthful, mm -hmm. all of that. And she doesn't fall for Gaston, the psychopathic persona. And young women are much more likely to fall for men like that, by the way, than, than women who are slightly more, uh, um, what would you say? Mature. Uh, yeah, yeah. Wiser, wiser. So they'll fall for dark triad men, and that's partly how psychopathy propagates itself across the generations. <laughs> right? They can be enticed by psychopathic personas. But she prefers the beast. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, the beast is the adventure. It's like, well, it's this terrible man, you know, like he's, he's rough, he's unhewed, he's, he's, but he's got potential, right? And that's what really attracts her. And she wants someone who can guard the walls and make a safe haven for the children, but who's generous enough to, who's productive enough to be useful and generous enough to share. Mm -hmm. And so she civilizes him. I hesitate to talk about Andrew Tate because I don't know that much about him, you know? But I'll, I'll tell you what I know and what I think, and people can take it for what it's worth. First question is, why is he so popular? And the answer is, well, if you have to choose between being depressed and anxious and laying downstairs and covering yourself with Cheeto dust and looking at pornography and being timid and never going out, or, you know, listening to someone like Andrew Tate who says, like, get the hell out there and take the world, like, that's better. That's the shadow, right, speaking in some ways, right? Like, if you're naive and Wrong. timid and anxious and intimidated and useless and resentful, there's going to be a bit of a monster that needs to call to you to say, gird up your loins and get the hell out there in the world. And so it's better to be a I'm monster than a rabbit in some ways, right? Or at least there's some utility in the more monstrous predatory path that isn't there in the pathetic rabbit path and that's partly because if you are a pathetic rabbit you're going to become a predator anyways you're just going to become a dark backdoor backbiting gossip mongering oh, resentful the the tape things because for some reason people think that there's something there and there's not like we were chatting on social media for a while um he like the, the things he does for business I just don't care. I don't care about the drama. Like he was kind of interesting to go to. He was like, I'll buy you a ticket to come out and say hi. And that's literally what we did. He, we went out and he bought me a steak and he was a really interesting person. Um, he's way more of a douchebag on socials than he is in person. And that was, that was it. That's the drama. Um, what he does for business. I just don't really care. Um, but I'm not going to do business with him, and I'm certainly not interested in him romantically. I'm certainly not interested in him romantically. Oh, boy. You know, it's been, how long has it been now? It's almost two years, almost two years. Gosh, good times, man. Really good times. How are we all doing today? 
Woo, today's going to be a good one. Today's going to be a very good one. Coming in hot. Coming in hot. Yes. Uh, I do have a new, uh, before we get started today, I needed to uh, also uh, point out, if you haven't seen it already, I've tagged it up on the, I have my chat. I've got a brand new monitor right here, just dedicated just for the chat. It's like one of those coding monitors that you turn on the end. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, today I'm going to have to initiate a new rule. Um, I'm going to, I'll still read super chats, no problem. Um, I'm just going to stick to like $20 and above because I was going over a lot of, like, well, Glenn and I were going over a lot of my old videos and it's like, you know, things when I'm, when I'm going for like two, three, four, five, let's just, let me quit lying, five hours. A lot of the times is because I'm reading like $1 super chats and I've always wanted to, I've always prided myself on like reading every single damn super chat. And even if it is still like a $5 one, it's like really, really interesting. I still might read it, but I have to institute this because it's just for, just for logistics alone. Uh, you want to know why I'm, I'm, was it the last time I was the last time was the time before that. I think I was like pushing like five hours and 20 minutes. Guys, I got to stop the insanity. <laughs> I really do. I have to do something. And then people, are, I've, I've always avoided that because like, I, I don't want it to seem like, oh, rolls on the take. He just wants your money. Like, well, I mean, I, this is a live stream and that's how things work. But man, uh, you want things to be a little bit more concise then that's just basically what I have to do. I know there's other streams that all will only read you at a hundred dollars or higher. But uh, I think I'm being, pr I think I've got a pretty happy medium right there. And I've always tried to be, be cool with you guys. And by the way, if I ever do, um, well, actually, if I ever, when I do uh, my next AMA, my ask me anything or Q&A or something like that, I'll read everything. So just, just throwing that out there, just to make sure that you guys don't think that, oh my God, what, this, the, the change has come, <laughs> Rolo's on the take. I love that, man. I'm like My favorite thing is when I get guys who are going to say, well, Rolo, you only go on these shows so you can promote your books. Yeah. <laughs> See, look, here's the first one's in already. Thank you very much. You'll still get the good. You'll still get the good stuff here. You'll still get one of these. <laughs> I'll still give you sound drops. I'll take you out. Uh, uh, what is uh, Tom like style? <laughs> Yeah, I, I love doing that, man. It's, I, I, I like the sound drops. Hey, I'll tell you what's funny is the sound drop. People, um, when I was on uh, Access Vegas on Thursday, we had this one girl on who was a professional wrestler. She was on the far end of the table. So she's like directly opposite me. And every time I'd throw in a new sound drop, she would, I, I'd stop her in the middle because she would just be laughing too hard. But yeah, it was pretty fun. Uh, if you haven't seen last week's uh, Access Vegas, we did it on Thursday. we got another one coming up. We're doing one damn near every week now, uh, with the exception of the middle of October. So the, here are the dates. The dates are going to be the 6th, and that's a Friday. And the reason we're doing it Friday is because Mike Sartain's birthday is the 4th and the 5th. He's so he's so B.I. bitching, and he's the Dark Lord of Vegas that he gets two birthdays. So there you go. Oh, shut the fuck up, idiot. Thank you very much. Okay, bye. Bye. Wait. Population. See, I got. I even have a sound drop for idiot trolls. <laughs> uh, but so he's got it. Uh, his birthday coming up, and I'm not going to give away the. I'm not going to give away the surprise. You're going to have to watch my Instagram this Thursday, which will be October 5th, if you want to see what was what's really going on. And yes, I have to dress up for this. And yes, uh, well, here I'll just give you this part of it. Whenever Mike has a birthday, all the girls that he knows, like all the girls that he promotes and pushes and does the, you know, the swimsuit USA and Paradise Challenge and and our show and everything else, they all get together, they collab together in a, a WhatsApp chat and they come up with a theme. Last year's theme was like uh, cheerleaders. I and mean, this was the first time I was even introduced to this because I think I'd done like two shows with him before all this happened. And we went out to Zook that night. It was the first time I ever went to Zook, which is a very, very nice club in Resort World in uh, in Vegas. And um, so we were out there and I hear all of a sudden right around the corner come like about, I don't know, 20, 30 girls in like uh, cheerleader outfits. So it's just, it. I was like, wow, but now I'm in on it. I'm sorry. I'm the only guy that is in on it because I'm, we're partners in the, in the, you know, he's one of my, you know, Mike is one of my best friends. I, I will say that he's actually one of my best friends. Uh, anything worth doing is worth doing for money. F you pay me. Stop that bitch. Thank you, Paul. Paul also is going to be doing his, I, are you guys actually going to beat each other to a pulp this week? Probably. He's supposed to be professional wrestling. <laughs> we'll see what we can do. I'll see what we can do for you guys. Uh, you know, I tell you, I, I, everybody knows that I'm in Vegas now. And so everybody wants a piece 
Um, we're going to get into uh, Michaela Peterson today. I wanted to sort of catch up with catching up with the Petersons. It's almost like Ozzy Osbourne, like, catching up with the Osbournes. <laughs> you know, it's it, it's almost like a reality TV show at this stage. But like, um, I thought this was interesting and it was funny as hell because people kept asking me, hey, what happened to Michaela? Like, where, where, where has she been? And I didn't even know because I don't, I don't give two shits about this. I've been like dealing with Lauren Southern and all that other crap. Right. And. So I'm trying to stay, I'm trying to keep my head down. I know what's coming for the 2024 election cycle. And by the way, everything I'm about to get into today is also very relative to the 2024 election cycle. So keep that in mind as we progress today, because all the crap that I got into last week, and I don't know if you guys have seen, thank you very much for that. Oh, I need, God, I got to get a dog. I got to get. Hello there, children. How's it going? Thank you. Ned, thanks you too. Keeping my boy off of OnlyFans one super chat at a time. Porsche. Um, what? What's this? There you go. Not talking, Doctor Phil. Worrying about his hair. Yeah, yeah. I'm not worrying about my hair. Trust me. Um, because this is actually real hair. I guess it doesn't pull off. It's not like it's not a cap or anything. And by the way, I was just people just okay. God damn, I feel like I got to give you guys like uh, updates in the beginning of the shows because you know, I know damn well you're not going to listen to like once we get past the second hour. But the uh, uh, some more updates today. I uh, I actually posted a few pictures of myself. Like I did a half back. I, I pulled my hair back. Every now and then I'll I'll I'll, I'll go without a, a beanie just to like throw people off, throw people off the ch- off the scent. Thank you very much. Uh, hello, Rolla. We uh, rational pack and turkey uh, are following you, Doctor Red Pill. Uh, by the way, I need to talk to Doctor Red Pill. I know he's coming out in November, and I want to hit him up and see if I can get him to Vegas. Or else, if I can't, then I'm going to go to Philadelphia or whatever the hell he is because I'm going to do something with Doctor Red Pill when he comes out. I have decided. Thank you very much for your participation. Thank you for your your support. I love each and every one of you dearly. <sighs> Another one. Jeez, you guys are killing me today. All right, I will get to these. I promise you. Tate is the one of the rare guys that's not only successful, intelligent, but he's also he's also a pookie, and Michaela loves that. Um, you know what? We're, we're holding. I'm holding on to that one. That's too good. Hold, hold. You know, here you get one of these for that. That's, yes, 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 yes. And I I need to clarify some things. I haven't done it. I haven't done a show on Tate in quite some time. And this is kind of like I'm still not doing one on this one, but I kind of have to a little bit. So I'll dig into it. I've been kind of like holding my holding my ground on Tate right now. I'm, I'm sort of Tate agnostic at this stage just to see what happens, to see where the cards fall. So, and yes, before you go and throw shit at me, yes, I'm aware of Sartorial Shooter and stupid ass Sneakos crap. And I'll be happy to address that later on, maybe towards the end of the show today. Um, but we're not going to get into that today. Today is really more about why is it that Michaela Peterson has decided to, to now uh, come forward and start talking about the Tates. Well, I'll tell you why. Um, it's because a guy like Tucker Carlson interviewed the Tates. It's it's why it's because a guy like, uh, oh, I don't know. Piers Morgan has like what interviewed him, what, four times? He's he's been on Pearl once or twice, I think. Um, in fact, Pearl has the dubious honor of having him as the last interview before he got arrested. Um, and let's see what else. Um, yeah. So. Oh, and then oh, well, then you got Candace Owens, of course. And I, I brought this up uh, in my my. By the way, there is a midweek uh, midweek video. I I really laid the hammer down on. Uh, uh, I was I'm sorry. I I was a little heated in that one. I actually I shouldn't even apologize for that. But like I'll tell you, I was I was it was righteous anger. So I uh, I threw I threw some grenades at Matt Walsh, and I regret nothing. <laughs> Uh, I don't think they're ever going to, they're never going to take the, they're never going to take the the challenge. Um, another, there's another, that's another um, episode, by the way, or that's another uh, 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 announcement, I guess. Um, I've been announcing this for almost a year now from uh, November of last year to right about now. Well, till now, um, if you want to debate Rolla Tomasi, if you've got a bone to pick, if you got the chip on your shoulder, you want to call me a fucking asshole to my face, you are more than welcome to come to Vegas and do so live in person across the table from me and tell me why I'm wrong. And I'll be happy to explain to you why you are mistaken. The only two people who have in this, in one year of that challenge being laid on the table, only two people have taken that up. One was Sergio Solis from purple pill podcast, which I'm, you know, I have to give him props. You know, I say what you want to about Sergio, but like he had the balls to come out and do it. And 
Gary, the numbers guy, <laughs> Gary, Gary Ginsburg or what Grin, Grinberg or Greenberg. How do I say your name, Gary? I'm, I'm sorry. I butchered it. Anyways, uh, uh, GG33, right? Um, Gary, the numbers guy. He took the challenge and came out and uh, talked to me and Mike Sartain. Actually, he wanted to, he wanted more of a piece of Mike than me, <laughs> actually. But, um, but, but still, those are the only guys that decided that they wanted to come out. So... Where are you at, guys? Especially guys who like have really hardcore, hard ass takes like Matt Walsh. Let me tell you why you red pill guys are anti American. Blah 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 blah. You, like just shit and diarrhea, just blowing out his mouth. Knows nothing about what he's talking about. And three show, well, actually technically four, but three shows later. I do, well, let's talk. Let's call it four, okay? Because I, this was kind of before, but like in August, I go and I do the interview with. Um, with Jim Sexton, James Sexton, the divorce attorney who did soft light under Billy. And by the way, just did Lex Friedman's show for about three and a half hours. He told me it was about five or six because they, he, they chop out parts and everything. And guess who's talking about him now too? Joe Rogan. I'll tell you about, I'll tell you how that happened here in a minute. I talked to him in August. We're talking about divorce. We're talking about marriage and Lord in heaven above. I really wish I would have had this information. I, I apologize profusely, Jim, for not having like answered your emails or getting back to you sooner because I would have loved to have Jim's information and his knowledge base when I was going head to head with Hafiz or Ruslan or God knows whoever else, right? Or hell, even even uh, even destiny. At least parts of that discuss parts of that debate that he says that I didn't do anything on, but except for the parts that I did something on, right? So I would very much have loved to have had um, Jim's like you know picked his brain and you know, had his knowledge base before I, I launched into those things. So along comes uh, Grifter uh, Pearl and decides to you know essentially reheat my vasectomy tweet that didn't play as well as her her handlers thought and so now she's like decided that she wants to jump on board with the uh divorce this and divorce that because she i tell you any i will give her one thing okay here's the thing is like either she or she and her people really keep their finger on the pulse of what's going on right now and so when um was it jeremy boring from the daily wire or matt walsh from the daily wire or ben shapiro from the daily wire or michael knowles from the daily wire or Candace owens from the daily wire or uh, even andrew clavin from the daily Wire, old ass andrew and i love andrew but the, the he's probably the one dude i really like on daily wire and i think what's really fascinating is how how quickly i, I mean just like lickety split man i mean like johnny on the spot she's just like whips out the next fire bomb about marriage and divorce and and guys shouldn't shouldn't marry and and you know it's it's a it's a racket about and, and the only conclusion i can draw is that she has some sort of contractual arrangement or she is an employee or is she is a shill or whatever do i have a fucking pay stub from daily wire to show you that she's on the take no i don't but all i can do is point out the fact that she's the only one that anyone on daily wire ever quotes not me not anyone else they wouldn't even say jim sexton's name and he was on lex fucking friedman it was oh some divorce, some alleged divorce attorney. We we don't know who the fuck he is. But here's this pearl girl who's talking about this stuff. Get the fuck out of here! Don't take like like who's I mean like I'm taking crazy pills. Like who is not seeing this shit, right? So anyways, well Rollo doesn't have any proof. I even said that in the video. I, I said I don't have any proof. I don't have like a, a pay stub or anything like that. I don't have a bank deposit or what is it? Electronic transfer of funds? <laughs> of course not. All I can do is look at what's going on. You should do. Jesus Christ, it's right in front of your face. But anyway, so I'm I'm going through this stuff with with um, with Jim Sexton. That was in August. Then, of course, we did the Rule Zero thing right after. We did Rule Zero, which, of course, Matt Walsh decided to pile on, too. Then I went and did last week's show on Matt Walsh once again and sort of ripped him a new one. And then finally, just because of a response to a response to a response, it's like playing Inception. You know, the Inception is like probably back in August somewhere. And I'm at the lowest part of the inception here. And now we've finally gone from, oh, here's a video of a reaction of a video, which is a reaction to this video, who is re reacting to this video. And it's like down, 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 until you get the bottom of the inception. I'm playing inception. That's basically what my career, my, my YouTube career has become when I do red meat videos anyways, which is playing some sort of online 3D, 4D chess and it's really just like, well, what's at the bottom? What's what's the most bottom most chessboard look like? It's like insanity. But 
And then dealing with like guys who want to say who really love Daily Wire. I can't believe you're punching right, Rolo. You're supposed to be a conservative. I am. I'm not a liberal. I am not a conservative. I don't know what the fuck I am. But let's talk about it base by base. But that's never been what I've been about. So, so anyways, we get into that. And now, of course, I've got um, what Michael Knowles says. Well, we would love to have you on here for a, for a debate. Just sign this NDA. Mm, no. <laughs> Wrong. I, I signed an NDA for uh, for Dr. Phil. And I am regretting it to this day still because I have yet to do the, the Dr. Phil breakdown episode. In fact, I almost got in trouble for doing the one I did immediately after the shooting last November. So if you want to see, well, how come Rolo doesn't do anything and how come people don't take him seriously? I did two fucking shows with Dr. Phil for fuck's sake. Like, go, go look at that. God, that's more than a man can take. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, uh, and now, so here we are. And Michael Knowles wants me to come out and do his show. I'm probably going to uh, politely decline. Uh, if he wants to come out to Vegas, I'll be happy to talk to him like a fucking man. On a, you, we will be. I'll be glad to do exactly what we do on uh, Access Vegas. You come to Vegas, we can restream from to my my account live with you guys and your wonderful forty dollar, twenty dollar <laughs> super chats, and um, and we'll take we'll take questions from the audience, and I will run the table with you. I will table you in the first thirty minutes. Get me. You come out here and face me and Jim Sexton. We'll do it in twenty minutes. Because you like the, the problem is, is these guys don't have a leg to stand on and they know they don't. That's why they're never going to. That's why it's never going to happen. You say, oh, we're going to have this debate. We're going to have this big come to Jesus, you know, big roundtable discussion about marriage and conservatism and this. And I'll tell you, the only one who has the balls in the sack to do that is Andrew Wilson, who, by the way, I, I really like. And I think we probably agree on maybe 80, 85 percent of stuff. I'm he's very much a, a quote unquote ortho bro, but at least he's like uh, you can actually have a conversation with him. But uh, I'll tell you right now, uh, Andrew Wilson has more ball, has more ass in his britches than freaking Michael Knowles or Matt Walsh or Jeremy Boring or anyone else at Daily Wire that has yet to even, you know, acknowledge any of this shit. They won't even, yeah, they won't even say my name. Won't even say my name. They're scared. That's the only thing I can think of. Because Pearl's easy. She's, she's low hanging fruit. Like, honestly, I think she's probably controlled opposition for controlled opposition, but that's me. All right. So there's that. Um, and yeah, and you can tell her I said that. Thanks. Bye. Poof. <laughs> Send that one off. <laughs> and I know you will. I know I'll hear it. I know I'll hear it back very soon. So thank you very much. So today we're going to dig into uh, uh, McCain. We're going to dig out Michaela Peterson. Oh, the reason I started with nothing but like Michaela Peterson um, intro videos today was simply because I wanted to give you sort of a timeline Last time I had locked horns with Michaela Peterson was in, uh, let's see, uh, well, technically it was the last part of November of 2021 and then really into December of 2021 as well. And she pulled exactly what I would now come to expect from people like Michael Knowles and the rest of these people. And even Andrew Tate has been on record as saying exactly what I'm going to say here in a moment, which is, most people don't care about truth, including Michaela Peterson. She has no Jordan Peterson. They don't care about truth. They care about content. They care about clicks. They care about engagement. They care about, and I'm not saying I don't myself. I care quite a bit about that. But as I said before, I was joking around this when I was uh, doing the intro for today's show. I, I was talking to my wife today. And I was saying, you know, it's I, what, I hate doing these red meat shows because everybody think that they'll see this one show and they'll think, oh, that's all Rolo's about. And I'm like, no, that's not what I'm about. But sometimes I got to do them. And so what I was saying is like, it's almost like when you have to take, like your dog has to take medicine and you can't get the dog to take the medicine You get well, you, because it tastes like shit, right? So what do you do? You like take the pill and you push it in a piece of cheese and you give the dog the piece of cheese and it eats, the, it eats it up, right? So it gets what's good for it inside the cheese, but there has to be cheese around it. So welcome to the cheese. This is the cheese, but I'm going to try to give you some good information, some nuts and bolts stuff uh, along the way here. So whenever I do red meat videos, I just want, this is my standard caveat is I'm not doing this just to be, oh, gossipy or salacious or whatever thing else. I, it's going to be, sorry, there's no way around that. But I'm going to try to do my level best 
to ensure that you guys get something more than just like, oh, I can't believe it. Ah, give me more meat, bro. Oh, not, or give me more cheese, dad. <laughs> you have to pay the cheese tax. Um, I'm, I'm not going to just give you nachos with just cheese on them. I'm going to give you nachos with like meat and, and cheese and jalapenos and cilantro. Do you guys like cilantro? I love cilantro. Um, now I've alienated half my audience. Cilantro tastes like soap. <laughs> I know Tim Pool hates cilantro. I've heard that. I heard that on one of his episodes once. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, Rolo. I only want you. Only wants the meats. <laughs> we have the meat. That's how I should have started. The man. I got to do an intro like that. We have the meat. <laughs> like that Arby's commercial. Anyways. Yeah. Uh, what's. Uh, let me see here. What, uh, this is good. Devil's advocate here. Why would Jordan Peterson only care about clicks? The internet is only a portion of his wealth. Um, that's how he got his wealth. Let me just, I will explain to you why, how he got to where he is. He does have a lot of traveling and engages with the live audience. Yes. Uh, all staged, all, all controlled, by the way, I've talked to people who have been at his shows and it's very, very controlled. The only, the only people who are asking questions that are something that he wants to talk about, they, they're the only ones that get to go up and do that. And by the way, I shouldn't even criticize him about that because really uh, I understand why they, why they would do that. I mean, just for like, you know, just to keep the, the show flowing kind of thing. But also when I was on Dr. Phil, I'm playing to, I'm there in front of a live studio audience that has about eh, two, two or 300 people in it. And then I got to remember that I'm playing to really a worldwide audience of about two, three million who are watching the lot, who are actually watching the show. And then God knows what the reruns are. Um, apparently that's one of their best watched shows too. Um, but the, uh, the studio audience, when people stand up and they gave me the questions, they have three by five index cards that they have them written on. They might've come up with those, but those are the ones that are approved that they get to ask. And you'll notice that they only asked me. They didn't ask Dr. Phil. They didn't ask anybody else. They asked me every single question on those shows. That's plan. That's why. So because of the whole thing was that I was like, dude, I was like Neo dodging the bullets in slow motion on that show. It was, uh, it was interesting. If you haven't seen those, they're, they're available right now. The last, the second one, there was two shows, actually. The first one came out in February of this year. And the second one came out in May, I think. So go check those out. And yes, this is the last season. I, I was on the last season of Dr. Phil. I got in just under the wire. <laughs> hey, Matt Walsh, I've been on, I, we, we have something in common. I've been on Dr. Phil too, and they worked you. I, I, I tabled his ass, but you guys, um, tell me. Would you like me to teach you how to do that, Matt? I'd be happy to instruct you for price. <laughs> All right. So anyways, the, um, the, the long and the short of it is today is I'm going to riff on this video just a little bit because Michaela Peterson has taken it upon herself to uh, to interview dad. Dad, once more time. Well, well we got to ride dad's coattails for a little bit. I'm going to explain to you why he is dependent on the Internet. Uh, and I can do that in one simple one. Well, one simple sentence and probably a lot of other complicated sentences is that. He is dependent on it because he is contracted to Daily Wire. I don't think people really realize that uh, uh, you want to talk about who is actually a real employee of Daily Wire. That is Jordan Peterson. He's been he's been a contract employee or a contracted talent content provider for Daily Wire for probably about two years now, maybe eight, maybe a year and a half now. I'm not really sure when he signed that contract. I remember I, I on this on this very show, I talked about it. He's he's owned by Daily Wire. Like I like go look. It's on the. It's all over the internet. Go Google. Like really, do me do me a solid and go and do your own homework on this because I sure as hell have over the years. Anyways, he's a contract employee. Of course he is. He has to go and do this. He has to do those shorts. Do you know how many different like sub channels? He's almost like Andrew Tate. He've used he's used the same anyway the same business model because there's all these little sub channels that keep uh, retweeting his sh his shorts and everything else. I don't know if they're Daily Wire affiliates, but I will tell you that that is exactly the same business model that Andrew Tate used uh, oh, about a year ago, right? When he became a household name. That's how he got it. He just, he basically, <laughs> essentially, he took his web, his girl's webcam business model and he applies it to all the people who are his fans. Like you are technically his webcam girl by being an affiliate marketer to keep like doing his bidding as far as making, you're not doing porn but you're just rebroadcasting re his stuff and making him money. And you're paying, you're paying a luxury of, of what 49 99 to be a part of that, that whole shtick. 
and people made money off of it. I haven't, I don't have anything against that. I mean, Hey, pff, go for it. You know, respect the hustle, but like daily wire with Jordan Peterson, you're doing exactly the same fucking thing. <laughs> I mean, maybe not as scaled up as to, you know, draw notice of the the powers that be at YouTube, but they're doing the same thing. So I don't think people really understand the the business and the the sort of the the shenanigans and the templates and this the just the shtick that people use for do, promoting a channel. I have three channels, man. I have this channel, I have Access Vegas, which I share with Mike, by the way. <laughs> and then I have my clips channel. That's it. He's on the take. Yo, thank you. Please give me another $20 super chat. God. Man, you got to, I'm a bargain. Are you kidding? You would have to pay a hundred dollars to get your super chat read on whatever podcast. <laughs> yep. Yep. What's this? Uh, let me see. What'd you say here? Uh, yes, we all know he works for DW now, but he can do his own. He can do his own content. Yeah. Up to a point. He hardly even cries anymore. Mm, yeah, that's just because he's he's been on his meds more consistently. Quite honestly, I think when he's off his meds is when he gets a little bit emotional. That's the first thing. I, I, I mean, I don't know what he's what his meds actually are, but like it can make you make you cry. Uh, so uh, to tell he's going through some of the motions and arguing that okay, the Pontiac Trans Am thing. Yeah, I have to say that. Uh, that's another that wasn't yeah yeah exactly thank you he did i was just about to say that spartan gamer yeah he did crowder exposed everything i'm i'm everything i'm about to talk to you today has already been confirmed by crowder so like when we talk about like when i told you just a minute ago like i'm not i'm unwilling to sign an nda and certainly not with fucking D daily wire of all people i would like i said i'm still regretting signing the nda that i did for for uh for dr phil I can't, I ser I literally cannot talk about that show, at least behind the scenes um, until that show, it finally goes off the air and it's still being run. And I think it's being run to probably till the end of 2023. And so like 2024, I think is when I can probably talk about it. So, but who cares, right? The, 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 the mac and cheese is cold. Nobody wants to eat it. <laughs> Nobody cares. The red meat is not red meat anymore. It's just cold, dead, nasty meat. So <laughs> uh, anyways, um, but again, the reason why Jordan Peterson will be doing this in the first place, and I'm going to throw, this is me. I'm spitballing. This is my opinion. This is my take. This is not anybody else's take. Okay. Can I give you just a little bit here? I think that a lot of these guys, uh, Patrick bet David for one, I think, uh, probably Tucker Carlson, definitely, um, who are not affiliated necessarily with daily wire, uh, Candace Owens, who is, and did a full interview of the tape of what well, did she do? Tristan do. I think she only did like Andrew. Um, but you look at these people who really want to pile on the tr the tape trend. They want to get their last licks. They want to just squeeze the last little bits out of this dying cow, you know, before the party's over. And I honestly have, I have some other theories about it as well. But I think that the reason why they're doing this is because they know he's not going to be around to really be a hot hit, to, to draw eyes to whatever it is that they're doing. I'm, and I know, fuck hell, I'm, I'm, let me tell you something. When we had John Zerka on Access Vegas, that was our best watch show for Access Vegas. We, I mean, we did numbers like I do on this every Sunday on Access Vegas, and that's saying something. And remember, we were splitting that between three different streams that night. So, yeah, there are certain personalities and individuals that people really want to see, and they want to see John, they want to see John Zerka come on to Access Vegas and just wreck the place. When we had Myron and Fresh, even Myron and Fresh, they did good numbers. They did not do Zerka numbers when when we had him when we had him on. And I'd be a hundred percent upfront with you. I'm complete transparency when it comes to Access Vegas. Um, but yeah, when we had him on, I was like, yeah, I can't wait to have him on. Let's say I, he was actually pretty like off camera. He's actually kind of fun to hang out with. He's actually a decent dude. But like on camera, he's in character, and and that character just does numbers and wrecks the house. And it was good. It was a, it was a great show, but. Uh, that's the that's the nature of the beast man the nature of the beast is that it's uh um it's all about who you're having on like when you when you go and look at myron and fresh and you look at the well, i mean back before they got demonetized right you would have they would have the girls the girls shows always out out number where we would always do way better numbers than than anyone they would have on like me even me i mean i just think i was a pretty good draw but they would have you know sneeko or zerka or destiny or I don't know, whoever else, right? Those names, you know, they, they put a lot of eyes on the screen. And whenever there was a scandal going on, whether it was Abba and Preach or if it was H3H3, 
that's what that kicks the numbers. And you know who knows this? Daily Wire. <laughs> they know it too. So that's why they're, you know, they want to make sure that they're getting the last dying gasps out of the whole Tate situation before before things change. And even if Tate gets off, he beats the rap, man. I mean, he's still not going to be what he used to be in 2022. So so that's why you see Michaela Peterson being comfortable talking about the Tates right now. And that's why you see even Jordan Peterson, who has to know the history of Michaela Peterson and Andrew Tate. She, he has to know this. And I don't, I, maybe he's like been a little too whacked out on whatever his, I don't know, his rehab drugs are. But the, the fact of the matter is, is like, it's an, like everybody on planet earth, anybody, anybody in the manosphere knows that's what hell that was like. One of the first questions like Myron and fresh asked um, Andrew Tate when he came on their show. And then this is also one of the, well, I mean, it was not the first question, but it was certainly a topic when Michaela Peterson went on fresh and fit too which I, I was really pissed off. I, I That was the one time I almost got in trouble with Fresh and Fit because I was like, you guys need to fucking nail her ass to the wall. And they, they just softballed her the whole time. I think probably because they thought that they had these ideas that like, um, uh, was it uh, that Jordan Peterson was actually going to come on Fresh and Fit? <laughs> Trust me, he's he's not. There's a there's a certain like hierarchy to shows right now. like uh, Like Joe Rogan. Everybody wants to get on Joe. So I remember when, like, for instance, here's what I saw. I'll give you the, the background story with Jim Sexton. When Jim Sexton and I were talking, it was like right after he did Soft White Underbelly, and I had him come on my show. I was almost a little hesitant to have him come on my show. Now, I did because I like him and we're, when we're friends, right? But um, I was like, you need to be careful who you go, whose show you go on. Don't go on Pearls, period, end of story, because she's a shit person. That, that was my personal feeling about it. But also, if you go and you start – if you start like associating with those shows, then that's when Joe Rogan is not going to take you seriously. And I had that confirmed last week, actually. So, and then he told me, he said, oh yeah, I'm going to go on Lex Friedman. And I go, good, go on Lex's show. Lex is a little bit higher, cal way higher than Pearl, but like higher caliber than say like, uh, certainly a destiny or certainly a, a fresh and fit or whatever, H3, God forbid H3, H3, right? Um, like stick to some like real go on Chris Williamson's show and just like mop the floor with him. I don't think that'll happen. Um, Chris Williamson really doesn't want to talk to anybody that is like associated with me. So I'm sorry, guys, uh, Mike Sartain in particular, like I know, but my right, you sometimes I get, yeah, I'm going to be the albatross around your neck, I guess with guys like that. But I would say, you know, there's a certain hierarchy of, of shows. Lex Friedman is definitely, I would say he's a, just a notch below um, someone like, uh, like Joe Rogan. Now, is he making that kind of money? I don't know. Probably. I wouldn't say he's making a hundred million dollars in Spotify. But uh, so I told him, I said, you know, just stay with the stay with the high caliber shows first. And then once you're done with those and once you once you get the call from Joe Rogan, then eh, consider doing, you know, uh, fresh and fit. Um, I'll be happy to go on with you. Come and do whether well, he's going to come out and do Access Vegas uh, the middle of this month. Actually, he will be out the 9th through the 14th in Las Vegas and we will have Jim Sexton on our shows. So look forward to that. That's coming up and you can bet your sweet ass we're going to be talking about everything I'm talking about today. So, but I told him, I said, you know, be careful of going on, just like stay with, with the high caliber shows first, because the high caliber shows will then refer you to other high caliber shows. And what I mean by like, like the major leagues, I would not be surprised if he did, if, if Jim Sexton didn't get a call from like, say, like even, um, even um, like Pierce Morgan, or uh, I, I'm surprised he hasn't got the call from Tim Pool. He might get the call from Tim Pool. And you have to remember, like, there's certain, like, there's certain people, certain personalities that you don't call and try to get on their show. They call you. Joe Rogan. I remember one time I was trying to get, I was when Hotep Jesus went on Joe Rogan. And I was like, I was like, Hotep, can you put in a good word for me? And I, because Hotep had already mentioned my name like twice on Joe Rogan, because I did the covers to um, Hotep's book. And we've been, we're really good, you know, Hotep and I have been really good friends for like almost 12 years now. And, um, so he mentioned my my name and I said, so at one point I said, do you think it'd be okay if I called up, you know, like try to reach out to the, to Joe Rogan's people? He goes, oh no. I'm like, why, why, why is that? He goes, you don't call Joe. In fact, if you call Joe, you're off, the, you, you'll get blacklisted. You don't call Joe Rogan, they call you. So I'm thinking maybe Joe might call Jim Sexton because I just saw a clip, like a five minute clip with Joe Rogan and this one dude with pink hair. Like curly pink hair. I'm like, what the fuck? Is that like the new thing? 
Um, and then there's some other guy and they're talking about marriage and everything. And Joe's like passing this off. Like, and I'm, I don't know if it's producers told him to say this or not, but he's passing off this stuff. Like um, it's passing off this, this stuff about um, uh, how he saw this. Oh, this short came up in his feed and it was Lex Friedman. And there was this divorce attorney guy on there who was talking about the the stats and you know, he was basically referencing uh, Jim Sexton. And I, I hit up Jim and I go, I go, he's talking about you. <laughs> you know, like, did you see this? I sent him the clip and everything. I said, see, this is what I said. Like you stick with Lex Friedman and stay with those high caliber shows. Even if he's just like in passing mentioning you, at least you, it's a possibility that they're, they're going to call you. So you have to do those. You don't want to, you don't want to, you don't want to slum it with a roll of Tomasi and Pearl and fresh and fit and, you know, whatever podcast. So there you go. Um, I've got the video up here, but I have to show you this one again, just really quickly. This Cobra Tate things, because for some reason, people think that there's something there and there is not like we were chatting on social media for a while. Um, he like the, the things he does for business. I just don't care. I don't care about the drama. Like he was kind of interesting to go to. He was like, I'll buy you a ticket to come out and say hi. And that's literally what we did. He, we went out and he bought me a steak and he was a really interesting person. He had the meat. Um, he's way more of a douchebag on <laughs> socials than he is in person. And that was, that was it. That's the drama. Um, what he does for business I just don't really care. Yeah, that's not the drama. Um, but I'm not going to do business with him, and I'm certainly not interested in him romantically. Now, you know, I have to be careful of my words here because I do know that she's a drinker. I'm already shown you the, the intro videos here, but it kind of sounded like she was a little slow on the uptake on this one. And I know why she's doing this because I have to give you a little bit of a remedial lesson here. Um, when it was, hell, you know what? I can even, I'll dig up the, uh, the tweet, but she, um, right around the end of November, she hit up, uh, Instagram saying that she wanted to interview me. And she also knew the guys, she also knew Myron and fresh, right? I happened to be in Miami at the time. She threw out this tweet saying that she really wanted to meet me. And I looked at it and I, I still have the tweet or not the tweet. Uh, it was a, an Instagram like story or something like that. And I still have it. I'll, I'll go. I'll go dig it up here in a second while we're watching this other video. But the 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 gist of the of the reel was I really want to see Roll Tomasi, and she was like putting like my my podcast in her like uh, I don't know, watch reels or watch roll or something like that. And so I'm like, oh, well, that's interesting. I don't know how to get in touch with her, and I didn't really care, but I knew what she was doing because she was responding to the video that I had put up uh, in that month, which was the Kill to Party video. Now, Kilt to Party was once again me, my attempt of putting the nice nutritious medicine pill inside of the cheese. Okay. And the cheese in this case was Casey Anthony and uh, Michaela Peterson, amongst other people as well. Now, she took great offense to the fact that I would mention her name and Casey Anthony in the same breath. Well, turns out that she's just as bad a mother as Casey Anthony is. And I'm going to, I've already proven that over the last, you know, over 2022 when she decided to petition all of these people on uh, all of her followers on Instagram, because she needed a babysitter. She going to need a babysitter. Thought mommy's in the club because she was going to Miami. Now, why was she going to Miami? Well, the reason she was going to Miami is because uh, about a month or two months before that, she was now. This is prior to her getting married. She wasn't even married to her her new beau, which is George. His name is Jordan Fuller. <laughs> I'll tell you something. Um, and she had this religious conversion, and she was just had this religious epiphany, and that's why I put that uh, video, that intro video, in there about like, are you closer to God now? What's how's your walk with God going? And she's just like, it's not basically because it's a shtick. It's to get you suckers. To think that she's on team God or team evangelical Christian or team whatever. And we're going to run her up the flagpole for that one because there is nothing that pisses me off more than disingenuous people when it comes to, to religion. I'm looking directly at you, Michaela, and directly at you, Sneeko. People who use religion as their content, fuck you. I'll tell you, and I'll, I'll speak for every Muslim, I'll speak for every Christian, fuck both of you. If you're going to use that as your hustle, fuck you. The reason why I say that is because I took, where did it go? I took, 
three years doing the studies and the work and everything else. This book is 400 pages of my fourth book, Religion. If I was Muslim, I would be, I would be, you know, I tell you what's crazy is like they put out like some sort of fatwa or some kind of holy war or jihad war. I don't know what the hell to call it on Salman Rushdie for his book, The, the Satanic Verses. It was like, I don't know if it militant, what, whoever did it. I don't even know. Right. That's the level of, of zealotry and fervor you'll do. You'll put against a guy like Salman Rushdie. You need to like take that and start aiming that towards somebody like, like Sneeko. Because I would say that that offense should be more offensive to, if I was a Muslim, I'd be more offended by that than I would by Salman Rushdie. Because really what that is, is to not only taking your God's name in vain, it's taking your religion in vain. For people who want to like make, who like you can't even make fun of the prophet Muhammad. You know, you, Jesus Christ is another thing. You go ahead and make fun of him out however often that you like. Right. But as serious as Muslims take their religion, why are you not just hammering? Sneeko right now, who's basically renounced Islam. Why? I had to sit there across from that son of a bitch with a freshly minted copy of the Quran. I've got a Quran that was gifted to me from my good friend, Abu American, when I was writing this book. Why are you, where is, where's that outrage? Nowhere, because he's not making fun of, you know, bitches and hoes anymore. <laughs> Same thing with Michaela Peterson. If you're a Christian, I would be just as offended by, by Michaela Peterson, as I would, uh, uh, Islam should be offended by, by Sneeko at this point. Why are you not just up in arms about that right now? Blows me away. Anyways. And yes, go, go look it up. He's, he's essentially has renounced Islam at this stage. So there you go. Sorry, not sorry. Yeah. I, I, I that pisses me off too, because it's like, I talk to like so many guys, so many people in so many different religions that since they have sincere beliefs, and you're going to use sincere, but you want to know why I don't talk about my faith. Although I do in the very last chapter of this is because exactly that I do, I refuse to use it as like a bargaining chip or a content chip. That's why. Oh, Rolla, you're married. How come you don't talk about marriage? That's why. Rolla, you have kids. How come you don't like, that's why some things I reserve. I don't like the, the thing that really annoys me about like the influencer generation right now is the fact that everything in your life is content. I'm not going to say, I'm not going to name names, but there's a certain content pro, uh, producer guy that I know right now who has said, if I could have like a personal camera drone, follow me around everywhere, e anytime, everywhere, that that's what they would do just so they can get content. If they had like a robotic, like a little mini drone that fo follows them around and gets like a good, like, I don't know, videography. <laughs> Why? Why would you want that? The last thing I would like when I lost my uh, my greyhound uh, Bambi last year, last December, you know, just suddenly, right? She had osteosarcoma. We didn't even know she she wasn't even so showing signs of osteo. And it would it devastated me. I don't want a fucking drone on me when I'm like crying over my dog. Oh God, no. Well, there's certain things you have to reserve for yourself, and that's one of those should be religion. I think, anyways. I don't. Know. Maybe it's just me. Maybe you're just getting old. Aren't you a boomer? No, I'm Generation X. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, Bambi was a good girl. Anyways, um, so uh, the why? So why am I giving you the background story of this? Because that's really where she was at uh, in 2021. She invites me to come on the show. I innocently, stupidly, maybe naively say, "Oh, sure, I'll be happy to." Oh, it's going to be a pre-record. All right, it's Michaela Peterson. Oh, you know, hey, cloud it, cloud economics, right? So I go on there and she does pretty much what everybody else does right now is does about, I think about two hours, two and a half hours. And she chops it down to about an hour and 45, maybe two. I don't know exactly. And essentially like drops in all of these clips where she thinks that they, that make her case and then just sort of like destroys my case kind of thing. And then just put, you know, shines me in the worst light. Oh, thank God. Thank God. Hold on one second. I had, I just had some really good news. Hang on, hang on, hang on. This just in. <laughs> oh, I had to, I just got the best news of my life right now. And I have to celebrate with the rest of you guys. <laughs> oh, no, nobody. No, it's not the birth of my grandchild. I feel like it, it should be, though. Oh, man. Um, so anyways, yeah, it was funny. Uh, so she's, uh, you know, she's uh, basically t it does a two hour, uh, a two hour show 
uh, breaks it down into uh, about an hour and 45 or something like that and just put, paints me in the worst light she can. And then prior to her releasing the entire video, and this is how this works. This is the schedule, right? This is how these things work, is the, the content creator will then take the whole thing and they will sit on the main video and they'll like produce like 30 second reels and TikTok videos and sh well now shorts. Um, and then they'll produce, they'll throw those out there. So you already have a preconception of what you're going to watch. So most people won't even, they sort of shit won't, I mean, you, thank you guys for watching my, you know, hour, two hours so far. Well, an hour, almost an hour so far. Most people don't watch past 30 minutes of this show. If they're watching the rebroadcast, the thank you for sticking around by the way. But, um, wait, wait, this just in, this just in, hold on. Oh my Lord in heaven. Wait, wait, where's the sound drop for this one? can't show it to you because I don't want you to see the numbers on it. Uh, this says certificate of title. <laughs> and this is the real title. This is no longer a salvage title. I can't, I'm glad I got to, to read this live on air right now. This is the certificate of title for my salvage title, 2011 Chevy Camaro. Thank you very much. It's finally inside here. Finally got it. Thank you. Live on, live on. Oh, man, it has this nice little hologrammy thing. I'm going to frame this. If you guys did not know the amount of shit I had to go through to get that salvage title car put in my name. <laughs> it was bought at an auction. It went through like God knows how many different people. And it's like I have been waiting for like about a week and a half for them to finally give it to me. And it's a real title. It's not a salvage title anymore because I had the car rebuilt. Yes. Now I can go do the actual video of that car <laughs> in Vegas. Anyways, thank you. Thank you for the, thank you for the, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, anyways, getting back to our topic. So she puts me on there. She throws out the videos in advance, the 30 second clips. And then as, as a result, nobody really watches it. And of course I do exactly what everybody else does. I say, that's not how it went down. This is bullshit. Go watch the real video, which she's already doctored. Right. So you can, you can go watch that and say, and people go, Oh man, she owned you. No, she didn't. She's just cut it up and you are only looking at the clips and not the actual full video. Well, guess what we're going to do today, children? Hello there, children. How's it going? We're going to look at the real video of that because I actually have the recorded video of it. So we're going to do that. And we're going to do a compare and contrast episode today. So I'm going to show you guys this just so you can get a background of what was actually going on. Now, this was her original story. Okay. I'm going to riff on my own video here in just a second. But, uh, but bear in mind, this is from uh, December of 2021, and this is right after, oops, I got to go back to main videos. Um, this was right after the um, Sunday show, where'd it go? This is right after the video that I had done with, um, oh, there it is. Okay, show clips. Thank you. Uh, that's it. Okay. So this was the video that I did right after the kill to party video. So keep this in mind here. So first, I think I should address the Andrew Tate situation. Listen, that's listen, not, not, she's a nice lady. Nothing happened. I spoke to her a bit. She was in Germany. I think I said, Hey, Germany's Romania is not so far away. Come visit. We'll go see some castles. It'll be fun. We'll jump in one of my 17 supercars. And that's what we did. That's the story. Translation, I fucked the shit out of it. No! <laughs> no. <laughs> that, that's all it is. She's a nice, she's a nice girl. She's a nice girl. Yeah. And uh, that's it. I, 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 I'm not really a fan of her dad's. I know her dad said some smart stuff. And yeah. I know he said some cool stuff. I've seen a couple <laughs> clips. I'm not a super fan of nothing. I've never watched him from head to toe Love or anything part. like that. Um, but yeah, it is what it is. What it is. That's all. That's all it is. I'm not gonna say any more than that. So sorry. <laughs> yeah. Sorry to give a boring answer, but that's the answer. There you go. There's our good friend. So before I went to Russia, this was October. Before my dad is, was in the hospital. Before I went to Russia, I was in Germany, and Andrew Tate invited me to come see his house and talk business, and he flew me over there for a day. I was there for a day. He was talking about starting a paywall, trying to figure out how to monetize content. And then I flew home. And so we took a couple of kind of puts things into perspective now, doesn't it? <laughs> like you couldn't have done this over a phone call or even like a video. I was hell. I was doing StreamYard with her right at this time. Like 
there was all these questions that came up after this. And I really, I was kind of fed up and kind of sick of the whole damn thing at the time. I probably should have like clarified. I did a few other follow-up shows. Now the problem with Rolo Tomasi doing shows on Michaela Peterson is everybody thinks I have a hard on for fucking Michaela Peterson. I don't care. I really could give two shits about it. What I care about is this false bullshit information and people canonizing all this stuff and then turning her into some sort of like martyrs or turning her into some kind of like essentially what she wants to do is ride her dad's coattails up until the point where he retires and then she's going to wants to take over. She's essentially taken over his business as it is anyways and has admitted to it and he has admitted to it as well. So when you see these really kind of out of character tweets that he throws out there, it's not him doing it. It's her that's doing it. She has taken over his Twitter account and had has really, I think she, they're probably in year one or year two right now where she has been responsible pretty much for his PR, certainly for his Peterson Academy thing, for, certainly for his his uh, presence. And I'll tell you the reason I'm going to I'm also going to uh, something I didn't uh, quite finish up a, a story here is she was with her dad in Nashville because that he, because he was there working on a deal with Daily Wire. That's why they're in Nashville and she is in Miami, Florida right now. That's why she needed to find a babysitter because she was out in Miami trying to find trying to put down roots, trying to find a place to go because that was that's Miami is one of the meccas of podcasting right now. It still is. That's why you want to know why Dave Rubin went out there because that's where that's where it's at, man. That's it's like Hollywood in the freaking metal years. You can't we can't do it in, you know, Paducah, Kentucky. You got to go and get get your band together and go out to Hollywood and make it big, right? Well, there's three places right now. Well, I technically four, but three places right now, and one of them is Texas. That's where Rogan went. That's where um that's where Lex Friedman is, I believe. Austin, I think. And uh, even Purple Pill Podcast, I'll, I'll throw you a bone, Sergio. Even Purple Pill Podcast is in out in Texas. Maybe they're in Austin. Maybe they're in Dallas, wherever. And then there's Nashville. And Nashville is oh, also in Dallas, uh, the, uh, the Blaze. I don't know if they're still there, but the Blaze was also there. Um, and then if you go to Nashville, you've got Daily Wire. That's where the headquarters are. And then you've got um, uh, Tommy Laren is out of Nashville. Surprise, 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 surprise. <laughs> and then you've got um, uh, Prager U is in Nashville. OK, so you've got Nashville, Tennessee, and then you got Miami, Florida, and then you got Austin, Texas, Dallas, Texas, that that's that area right there. Oh, and let's not forget. Now you have Las Vegas, Nevada, because Roll Tomasi and Mike Sartain put that on the fucking map. Thank you very much. <laughs> Number one podcast in Las Vegas, which I ought to tell you something. So, yeah, so we've got Red One Studios. Thank you, Glenn Lawrence. I'm sure you're probably going to watch this. But uh, those are the places that you go. So she was uh, you. She was talking about how she was going to set down roots in Nashville. And my guess is this. This is me spitballing. My guess is that she was also trying to work out a deal for herself at Daily Wire at the same time that Daddy was. Now, Michaela Peterson, they don't Daily Wire at that time probably didn't want to have anything to do with her. So what does she do? She goes down to Miami. She starts her own thing. She starts doing her. I, I, maybe things didn't work out the way she thought they were. But I mean, she's a rich little, you know, trust fund baby right now. And so she goes down there and wants to put it up to podcasts. I mean, she's got her own podcast, but other than that, I haven't really seen her do much. Hell, I mean, value Tainment has done more than she has in the same time. So, and I mean, it's, it is Patrick Bet David, but I mean, money's money, right? They're doing the, the Peterson Academy and all this other stuff. Great. Fine. Have, you know, do what you're going to do. But she's in no way as big a name as say like even Chris Williamson is, or certainly not Lex Friedman. She is not even in that same league. Remember I told you about the hierarchy? I mean, she's not like down low, but she's like not, she's Bush league still compared to some of these other guys. And I think that that was one of the reasons she decided to go to Miami because things didn't work out for her in, in Nashville because there was no contract forthcoming from Daily Wire, at least not in like 2021 or 2022. So now she's in Miami and now she wants, now suddenly she's comfortable in talking about the Tates because she needs to jump on the Tate train, you know, better late than never. So that's really kind of what's going on now. She's trying to explain this to you. Now, remember this. I have to point out that this is December of 2021 that I'm having this conversation with her because we have to fast forward this through all of it. She can't keep track of her own lies. So keep this in mind. Photos, one's in the cigar lounge. But just because I flew. Okay, these are the photos. I'll, I'll show you the photos. They were already in my thumbnail. But let's, uh, this is in the, this is in the quote unquote cigar lounge. Now there is a timeline for the photos here, okay? This was the cigar lounge one, okay? Infamous photo, everybody's seen this before. That's her, 
That's her old look. And by the way, look at her face in this one and look at her face in the uh, the video as well. There's a reason I'm going to have you pay attention. The, the, hold that thought. That's going to be for the for, for later on in the show. But do your do your homework, gentlemen uh, and ladies. Here she is in a cigar lounge somewhere, probably in Romania. I don't know exactly where this is, but it looks like it's like an outdoor kind of area. I was I've had people in the since the since this video, I've had so many people like throw other things at me and say she was wrong. Here's what was going on. This is what really happened. Blah, 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 blah. I try to stay away from it because the minute that I start talking about it and even at the end of this show, everybody's going to go, oh, that Rollo, he's such a gossip. He can't keep his mouth shut about freaking let, let Michaela Peterson. I know. I know that. I know that's what you're going to say. Again, cheese, pill inside the cheese. Okay. That's the, that's the cigar part. Yes. I'm going to show you the other one here in a minute, but uh, that's, this is okay. This is what she was wearing. I'm going to bet that this is the first day she showed up. She was there overnight. I'm going to, I'm going to say it right now. She was there overnight. I'll explain to you why I think that here in just a moment. Over there and talk to him. Doesn't mean there was anything sexual that occurred which is what happened when the internet saw that photo. Which of course is what Andrew has said on pretty much any time I've talked. I, I actually interviewed him right after that because of course everybody wants to know what was going on, right? So when you put something yeah. like that out at that time, um, that's what everybody's gonna, gonna say. And he's pretty much said exactly what you have said as well. So um, I, in fact, I think I even mentioned that. I, I, I pointed it out in the Fresh and Fit video, as a matter of fact. Where they were mm. interviewing him about that, about that, those, I guess, there's a couple of pictures. Mm -hmm. um, but you got to probably there's a bit of inference mm. that maybe something had occurred. So I just wanted to set that straight. Right. Right. So, so that's the. Why do you think that inference occurred there, Michaela? First thing. Um, the second well, thing is. Can I can I ask? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so that was in October of 2019, and you were in Germany. 2019. Mm -hmm. So you were already in Germany at that time or were yeah, I'd, I'd been in Germany. This is where she can't get her story straight. Now, remember, this is prior to her getting married and having she was probably in a relationship with Jordan Fuller at this time. Now, the half the other half the reason I think that she insisted on doing this or having me come on, she had no idea what my book was about. Later on, she talks about, oh, yeah, I've read your book. I read it when I was in high school. Well, the problem with that is it wasn't even published when she was in high school. So I know that's bullshit. And that was the first lie that she brought up. I, I did this and then I'll, I'll actually link the uh, I'll link the previous videos where I catch her in all her lies. I've already done that video. So but right here, she can't get the timeline straight. I flew from Toronto to Germany. I was in Germany for business. And then on the way home, I stopped in Romania for a day. OK. And then but January, you, I, I, you, I stopped in Romania for a day. She literally said, or actually, she literally said earlier that she was flewed out. That might have been 2018. But he flew you out there, correct? On the way back, yes. From Germany to Romania or all the way? Germany to, to Romania and then Romania to Canada. Oh. So that doesn't sound like the back going the back. Well, I flew myself out and then he flew me back. No, no, that's a both ways, baby. It was like, I'm busy, but... I'll come see. I was interested in what he's done. He's made a lot of money. He's put things behind a paywall and I kind of wanted to learn. See. Do you know what he did? Do you know what he was doing with the paywall? Did you know any of this stuff? <laughs> God, hindsight is so fucking great. Seems like an interesting character. So I thought what, that could be interesting. Were you aware of what he does for a living? <laughs> no. Thank you, Rolo. <laughs> he told me once he got there. It's not like he was how you, hiding anything. How did you guys? You know, fucking looking back on this, like after everything that's happened in the last like two and a half, well, yeah, I guess not two and a half years. Um, well, almost two years, coming up on two years. Um, wow, it really kind of puts things in his perspective. <laughs> well, he told me once I got, you're going there to get business information from Andrew to, and you don't know what he does for a living. That doesn't sound like somebody's going there for a business venture i really want to go there and get some hands-on uh <laughs> experience and all of this please show me like me oh like online oh over instagram okay yeah <laughs> during 2019 i guess i can't if that was this is a child who got caught in her lie 2019 or 2018 um 
that would have been 2018, October 2018, I think. Mm -hmm. Because 2019, it was January 2019. Well, I know that that's a lie too. So let's uh, let me explain to you why how I know that. So let's uh, where to go? Because this was the uh, this was 2019. This was the first incident, and I, I kept this man. I am so glad I kept this when this came out because I was laughing my ass off when this first came out. Now, Mr. Plenty of Wudan is, of course, uh, Andrew Tate back then. That's his original account. He throws this out there, and he's like. She said, and I laughed my ass off. She, she said she likes top quality meat. And that was, was funny as fuck, right? So I copied, I, I did a, a screen cap of this. And he's like, you're such an unbelievable brat. Like you can hear that coming out of her mouth, right? That's what, that's what girls in love talk about. Because maybe I'm wrong. But this response right here, this doesn't look like this response and this whole exchange. I mean, it's very short exchange. I would, I really need to go and see if I, if, if the account was still up, I'd love to go and like see what the rest of those comments and everything else were. It's probably most guys just saying, Oh, they smashed. But is that what you say to a guy who you, um, who you went out there to go and see and have a, you know, I really want to get to pick your mind and find out how to do things behind a paywall. <laughs> How do you run your, like, for what reason? Was she planning on running a cam girl operation? Like, what, like, what on earth could have possibly possessed you to want to go out there and get some sort of, like, information from this guy? I would like to know, like, because in that time, she has yet to produce anything that is even remotely like this kind of business that Andrew Tate ran. Nothing, nothing in the last two, you know, at least two years has in any way been anything like the business model of Andrew Tate. So I, can we please like, can we acknowledge this at the very least? Cause we're hindsight's 2020. Hopefully I'm getting the year right when I went to Russia with my dad. No, you weren't. Yeah. No, sorry. No, 2019 is right. And then it was 20. Yeah. yeah because she saw this. 2020, we went to Russia with dad. So in your video, you said, Oh, she brought her dad to Russia and then while he was in the hospital, went off and, you know, partied with Andrew Tate, which wasn't right because that was four months earlier, three months earlier. I just want to tape things because for some reason people think that there's something there and there is not. Like we were chatting on social media for a while. Um, he like the, the things he does for business. I just don't care. I don't care about the drama. Like he was kind of interesting to go to. He was like, I'll buy you a ticket to come out and say hi. And that <laughs> Okay. Are you guys buying this? Now let me let me explain something else to you here. Because here's here's something that sort of occurred to me in the interim with all of this. All of you fucking animals out there who gave Myron Gaines so much shit for flying a girl out are the same motherfuckers that did not hold her feet to the fire for this video right here. Oh, you're, but he flew her out, right? Oh, we didn't have sex. We didn't have to tweet. You are going to go and say that Myron Gaines is a son of a bitch, but you're not going to say that like Andrew Tate's a son of a bitch for flying. Like, oh, maybe he's a beta. Maybe, maybe Andrew Tate, that's beta behavior, right? That's simping. Maybe he was simping for, for Michaela Peterson. Andrew Tate was simping for Michaela Peterson by flying her out from Germany to Romania and back again, which of course now she has to, she got caught in that lie. Oh no, no. He just flew me back. I happened to be in Romania at the time. No, you weren't. He flew you out there. He talked to you, did whatever the fuck they were doing with you. I don't know. You were, maybe he was, he's the bad boy, man. He's the beast from beauty and the beast. Maybe I can take him. Let's go out there and check out what this guy's about. And remember she's married at this time too. She was on a break with Andre, her baby daddy at this time, which I held her feet to the fire during this exchange as well. And I said, you understand how that kind of looks a little weird, right? Well, we were on a break. <laughs> yeah, permanent break. Because <laughs> uh, right after that, it was all That's over. That's literally what we did. He, we went out and he bought me a steak. And he was a really interesting person. Um, he's way more of a douchebag on socials than he is in person. And... That was, that was it. That's the drama. Um, what he does for business. I just don't really care. Right. Um, but I'm not going to do business with him and I'm certainly not interested in him romantically. All right. 
let me uh damn it i i lost the video hang on one second i, I pulled it out at the wrong time so, so i want to make sure first i, I think i let me go so, okay. 2019 or 20 did i get this whole thing oh okay yeah it was just it was just a repeat my bad i thought i thought it was uh, i thought there was more to that video my bad yeah. So, oh, let me throw something else out, out here, uh, Elijah. If she was Rolo's daughter, people would be clowning on Rolo. But since she's Peterson's daughter, people ignore her thought, thought tastic, thought tastic. That sounds like a Tommy Laranism. Yeah. Thought Tiana. Yeah. That's I, at least I can say this. My daughter is married and she has never been flewed out by Andrew Tate. The end. Thank you guys for watching. Bye bye. <laughs> I can just leave it right there and win this whole fucking game right now. But I'm not going to have to do that because we have to we have to dig in here a little bit deeper. I'm sorry. I'm going to make you do it. Uh, thank you very much. Hawk. Dude, the Fabio. Dude, the Fabio. You know what? Fuck it. You get this. Just for Fabio alone. Monko, Monko, My bad. I know I told you I would just like skip by those, but that was too good. <laughs> thank you. Uh, if you put Fabio, uh, you know what? If you're only going to give me like a two dollar super chat, I'm probably just going to throw it up on the thing. But if you have a kick ass av av picture, I might actually put it. I might actually stop my stop in my tracks. So yeah, win Tate. Oh yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go there now. Before we go there though, a lot has happened in the interim since that interview. Now that's the part of that interview where I was talking about Andrew Tate. Now she gave me the, she read me the riot act about like trying to compare her to like Casey Anthony, which I wasn't actually doing. She was one of many other examples. I happened to use her face in the thumbnail. and think that's what really kind of threw her off, but she's a celebrity, right? People recognize her. Oh, Rolo's going to talk about Michaela Peterson better get in there. Um, yeah. So with that, with that said, um, this is a this is a girl who, quite honestly, in my opinion, as a sort of a armchair psychologist with only a bachelor's degree in psychology, um, she looks like she has is on the spectrum somewhere. Now, before we could keep going, I have to also catch you guys up to a few other things here. Now, in the interim, when all this was going on, and I really wish I would have. I wish I wish you guys would have you know, apprised me of this situation earlier. But when I was looking at these pictures here, let's see where to go. Show me that one. Why is that not coming up? How about this one? Oh, that's why. Okay, my bad, because it's not on me. There we go. Uh, not that one, but this one right here. Okay, let's uh, let's do a little bit of uh, analysis, analyses here. All right. I have three pictures of this time. This one, I have the infamous mini axe picture, which is right here and i have this one which is probably the most widely known picture of the both of them together okay so let's uh let's analyze this first okay i'm going to throw something out here and people say oh you're speculating you're reaching roll up. now i want you guys to have a look at what she's wearing in this so she's got she's got looks like maybe uh, maybe that's pantyhose or something like that maybe stockings of some sort she's got the black jacket on she's got the little red bag going around this nice little euro thing remember this is a sweet little girl from Canada she's not the she's not the Michaela Peterson that um, that uh, everybody has come to know and love and and if you look at her face and you look at her nose I want you to also just pay attention to her face okay she's got that very bright red lipstick on. And that red lipstick is almost like a uh, characteristic of her look of her persona is that red, red, red lipstick. And during this time of uh, like her life, I guess. And I remember she's not with Jordan Fuller at this point. She is on a break from Andre, her uh, baby daddy. Da her father, of course, is in is convalescing and rehabbing from his addiction to benzodiazepines in uh, Russia at this point at this time. And so she's there smoking cigars or whatever those are. Mini, what are those? Cigarellos? <laughs> Would that be a cigarello? <laughs> and if we look at what she's what what she's wearing here, and we look at her hair, I want you to pay attention. And also look at what Andrew is wearing too. Okay, just so you guys can sort of get the timeline and all of this. Now people go, oh, why are you so anal retentive about this? Like I'll tell you something. Whenever I wear, whenever I wear mirrored sunglasses, you know what the first thing people do? When I put a picture like that on Instagram, they look in the glasses to say, oh, look, it's his gay lover taking pictures of him. Right. Or 
I have the one with the cigar in my mouth and I'm sitting, I was, it's me and Brickle and stuff. And in the reflection, it says Aaron Clary, Captain Cappy is in the, in the reflection and people are like, yeah, Cappy. I'm like, what's where are you getting Cappy from? It's like, cause he's in the reflection. Now, am I going to this level of detail in this? Yes. Yes, I am. Because I think it's necessary in this case, right? Usually I could give two shits about that. I don't, I actually don't go looking for people's images and mirrored sunglasses. Thank you very much. God, it's so annoying. But uh, so anyway, so this is I, I'm going to bet. And this is probably her just getting off the plane and coming out and just finally meeting and going to the cigar bar or wherever the hell they are in Romania. I don't know. Uh, you know, I could probably I if I really want to be a prick about it, I could probably run this by Justin Waller. and He could tell me where where this probably is, because this seems like someplace that like like Andrew would probably frequent. Right. This is outside. You can tell by the tables. You can tell by the awning in the side there and and, and everything else. Um, and then you've got the infamous mini axe picture which i think she probably thought was lost to history but no 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 trust me i have lots of people on the inside especially when it comes to the war room and it comes to guys like andrew tate i have known andrew personally since about 2016 i have known andrew longer than sartorial shooter than um than justin waller than mike sartain than uh, uh yeah, certainly longer than sneeko before all of you was me and, and Andrew at this time. And I know this is his place. I know this is his couch. I know this is his, his compound. It's inside. If you've ever seen any of his interior pictures you of any of his old videos, you know that the, where this was shot. Here she is once again in that same outfit. Now, she doesn't have the red uh, satchel anymore, but she still has the, her hair is still very similar to uh, this right here. And she's got the signature red lipstick on. And she's hanging out and showing off the legs. Maybe she wasn't wearing, I'm sorry, she probably wasn't wearing any stockings or anything like that. Uh, if we look at, I don't, I don't even notice that. Hold on a second there. We go and we look at the, uh, I have to like sort of zoom in on this so I can get an idea here. If we look at her hand, she's got her ring on there. That one ring, it's not her wedding ring. It's because it's her right hand, of course. Which, by the way, is going to be something that uh, we're going to talk about here in just a moment. She's got a necklace on. She's got a red Red lipstick's very much in effect. Um, and she's got uh, the same, she's got basically the same outfit on the white top with the black leather jacket, the black um, mini skirt. And uh, let's see what else here. And then, of course, uh, Andrew's looking at the mini axe right there and he's got his watch on. So he's still in that same outfit that he was in in the cafe we just saw a minute ago. So either this took place before or after. I'm going to say probably after. It might have been they got off, she got off the plane and she went right there. But again, the, the lipstick is what's going to give it away here in just a moment. Uh, let's see. So that's that picture. And let's go to the, the last and final picture, which is the most infamous picture here. Now, if we look at her, do you notice anything that has changed about this outfit? We have noticed that there's a hand on her ass from, which is nothing, I would expect nothing less from, from a, a beast, a beast like Andrew Tate. He's, he's, he's the, he's the Gaston, right? Was it Gaston? Yeah, Gaston. She still has the necklace on, but look at that face. Look at that smile. Much, much different, much different expression than here and a much different expression than here. Ladies, ladies in the audience right now. Do you understand me when I say something like when I when I use the term afterglow? Anybody use that at all? Anybody use that terminology? Late and the only ladies only ladies Soralita, I expect you to 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 confirm this for me. You're familiar with the freshly fucked afterglow? Look at her hair; looks quite a bit different than this right here. Things are messed up a little bit. And uh, I'll tell you the, the lack of uh, the lack of lipstick. One would think that if she's going out of the cocktail dress and she's going out to uh, to have dinner, have that steak that she mentioned. Again, all of this doesn't look like a business arrangement to me. Like when when was the business discussion about like how we're going to put things behind a paywall and all this other bullshit? Does this look like afterglow to you guys? Does this? Look, yeah. Somehow the hairspray wore out. Yes, exactly. Hairspray wore out. No more. The signature, uh, the, the signature uh, red, red, red lipstick is gone. Completely absent from this picture. And you know what? Let me. I have to go zoom in on this real quickly so I can actually see this for myself because this was uh, this was something that was quite incredible to me. Um, let's see where did it go. 
to zoom in on these things, you know? Mm, yeah, so no, no, no lipstick. She's got the, uh, I hope I'm not missing anything really super important, but the very fact that she's in this black cocktail dress, there was a costume change at somewhere along the way. There was a costume change. There was a hair messing up. There was a lack of the makeup's completely hell. Wait, 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 wait. Like you can like I even the mascara is not what it was in in this one. And the mascara oh, right here. I mean, look at the look at the look at the cat eye mascara. I'm very sensitive to this kind of stuff now because of after doing Access Vegas for as long as I have. Let's see if I can get a little bit and I can't get any zoomed in on that. I'm going to see if I can go pull the actual picture here so you guys can see this. But the uh I mean, long story short, there was a costume change at somewhere, somewhere along the way, there was a costume change. And I'm just wondering what took place, what took place in within the, let me see if I can find this. Hold on a second. Um, um, uh, oh, it's on the desktop. Okay. It is right. Uh, it's, ah, here we go. Ah, these, maybe this is even better. Let me see if I can throw this up here for you guys. Cause I've got, I've got a side by side comparison here. Um, do I have the side by side? I think I already, I thought I had already loaded it. No, I don't. Okay. Here's the side by side, side by side comparison of these two, of these two shots. Uh, let's see. Where's that take you? Uh, oh shit. Sorry. That's not going to show up on there. Is it? So I'm like, why did this should not, it, it showed up as a wrong file format. Hang on. There we go. I, to, I got to screen cap it real quick. Okay. And that's it right there. Here we go. Side by side comparison of both these pictures. There we go. Okay. Is that afterglow or is that not afterglow? Look at the hair. Look at the hair difference between those two. Costume change. She's still got the necklace on. Maybe that's something. Hand on the ass. Freshly fucked afterglow, very, very smiling, like from ear to ear. The, uh, let's see if I can see the, uh, let's see if I can see this on the, on the white one. Uh, so let's look in a little bit, a little bit more here. I'm I have to go into like microscopic detail. Excuse me here. This is forensic science. It's in the, in the, this is science, man. So the mascara is dead, not as done up. There is no, uh, there is no uh, red lipstick in this one. And the hair is most definitely messed up at this point right here. Uh, let's see what the jury says. What does the jury say? Put a one in the chat if you think they smashed. I'm just going to leave it up to the audience because I, I can't be speculative. I can't be, but because Lord, Lord only, yeah, yeah, green line. Where's the green line mafia? Somebody tell me, did they smash? Put a one in the chat if they smash. Put a two in the chat if you don't think that they did. After putting, after looking at this, where to go? Now, there you go. One in that, one in the chat if they smash. Two if they didn't. Yeah, one, 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 one. Right. There you go. Does that look? By the way, <laughs> ladies, ladies, ladies only. If this is you and you're going to go meet some dude who is a, who you already know as a kickboxer, who we already know as a notorious webcam girl, girl cam purveyor of fine pornography, whatever. I remember this is in 2019. So OnlyFans is not quite what it, you, what it was. I mean, it was still, it was on a come up at this point. Is this how you dress ladies? Ladies, if you were going to go see a client, is this how you would dress? If you were going to a foreign country where the guy had flown you out and you were going, you know what? Maybe that's a good idea. I think I'm going to go out to Romania and talk to this guy because I really want to know how a, uh, a, a webcam business is run. Oh, I didn't know what he did until I got there, but uh, I, I figured he could help me out with a paywall situation because there's no YouTube videos about that. And there's no, uh, there's nobody here in the States. There's nobody here in Canada. There's nobody here in Germany that could tell me this like face to face. I can't get this information from anywhere else. And he seemed like an interesting character. So I think I'm going to go out there. Hmm. What am I going to pack in my bag? How about this black cocktail dress? That seems like a good idea. Please, can somebody cut the shit here? Please, can we just like, get, just say you fucked her. Just say you did it. Just say you had something going on here. And even if you didn't, ladies, something, even if it did nothing, even if nothing happened, is this how you're dressing for a business adventure? I don't think so. 
<laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> so having said that, let's put a few other things in perspective right now, okay? Now we're going to get down to the meat of the matter today, ladies and gentlemen. Where do we go? I'm having too much fun with this one today. You uh, you know what? If you're going to give me this much leeway, Michaela, you better bet your fucking ass I'm going to do this. Oh, first, I think I should address. All right, wrong one, wrong one, wrong one. My bad. I've got the real one right here. <laughs> Dang it. They both have black, black intro, so I can't really see the, I can't see which one is which. There we go. All right, here we go. Take to talk about Andrew Tate because I don't know that much about him, you know. I can tell you what I know and what I think. Get the fuck out of here. I don't really know that much about Andrew Tate. You know who the last person who told me that was? Jetta Diabila, who I love like a sister. I'm not going to run her up the flagpole. I think she's great. But all these people run these this bullshit pretexts, this bullshit prefacing of things like, oh, it's kind of like, don't judge me. But what I'm about to say, you're going to judge me for anyway. So let's just get that. So please, if you judge me, then it's on you, not on me. No, it's on you. You know goddamn well who he is. You know goddamn well because you work for Daily Wire. And if you don't, you are as, you're more senile than I thought you were. Okay. Tucker fucking Carlson. Candace fucking Owens. Matt Walsh, Jeremy Boring, Michael Knowles, I, Clavin, like name the celebrity, name the, the internet influencer, that Pearl Davis, who hasn't done a video with Andrew fucking Tate in the last two years. I don't know that much about him. Get the fuck out of here. You know exactly who he is. Exactly who he is. And people can take it. Because your daughter was with him in those pictures, for fuck's sake. Who are we bullshitting? For what it's worth. I mean, the first question <laughs> is, why is he so popular? And the answer is, well, if you have to choose between being... Why don't you ask her why she's he's so popular? She's right there. She's an expert witness, Jordan. <laughs> depressed and anxious and laying downstairs and covering yourself with Cheeto dust and looking at pornography and being timid and never going out. Or... You know, listening to someone like Andrew Tate who says, like, get the hell out there and take the world, like, that's better. That's the shadow, right, speaking in some ways, right? Like, if you're naive and timid and anxious and intimidated and useless and... Oh, like your poor daughter was in Romania in 2019 when you were, like, on your deathbed in Russia? Resentful. There's going to be a bit of a monster that needs to call to you to say, you know, gird up your loins and get the hell out there in the world. And so it's better to be a monster than a rabbit in some God ways, damn, right. right? Or at least there's some utility in God the more damn, monstrous right. predatory path that isn't there in the pathetic rabbit path. And that's partly because if you are a pathetic rabbit, you're going to become a predator anyways. You're just going to become a well, dark, well played, door, sir. backbiting, gossip mongering, resentful monster. Society is so, also pushing that on men in yes, particular. Yes, constantly. Like, be well, I Notice the dodge. It's like he's got a fucking eel in the wheat. I love this. This this greyhound in the background though, I need me one of those. It's like an eel in the weeds, man. Oh, let me. Uh, Andrew Tate. Uh, Andrew Tate. Uh, yeah, it's the the the, the shadow self. Uh, Carl Jung. Anima, animus. Animus. Um, um, uh, Beauty and the Beast. Zing, 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 zing. I knew. Look, I knew. I knew, and I warned people repeatedly that if the culture kept emasculating men that men who said, to hell with that, I'd rather be a monster, would become extremely popular. Now, and Andrew Tate is emblematic of that in many ways, because the first thing you got to say about him is... For a guy who doesn't know jack shit about Andrew Tate, he sure knows jack shit about Andrew Tate. This is, this is, this is amazing. Where is this coming from? Are like aliens talking to him in his head? Does he have like one of those Elon Musk like neural implants so he can get the download information from the internet on a moment's notice? You know who he is. Cut the but shit. He's genuinely tough. He was very, very, very smart person. Right? So that's not a front. That's not a front. Very, very smart person. Yes. Where have I heard that before? Oh, that's right. 
it was back when I was talking to Rolo about getting a uh, business advice from him and, and literally verbatim those fucking words. He's a very, very smart person. He's a fighter and, and you can't take the courageous element of being a fighter away from someone who will actually step in the ring, right? And so now you said Tate's intelligent and what that means as well is that some of the things he says are going to be of value. Now, why he says those, that's a whole different issue. Come on, Jordan. Can we cut the shit now, Jordan? Can we stop, can we, can we stop beating around the bush here? Your girl was with him. Imagine me, imagine, like, imagine you guys giving me a rash of shit for doing something like this. And my daughter is sitting across, my baby Tomasi is sitting across from me. And Matt, I would be, I'd be ran off the internet. I would be laughed off the internet for doing exactly this thing. So when any time somebody comes at me, go, Rola, why do you have such a problem with the Peterson? This is why I fucking have a problem with the Petersons. Because the guy is fucking senile. Not only is he senile, he defaults to this like woo-woo magical, you know, fucking tea leaves and shamanism and shit like that. Ramble, it's filibustering is what it is, but it's like new age filibustering or something. So once I was there, he told me about the webcam stuff. It was something like women who want to do webcam stuff, like they already want to do it. Mm -hmm. I help them make way more money mm -hmm. and I take a percentage. Like Stop. Full fucking stop. You ready? Y'all ready for this? Y'all ready for this? We've already seen this. We've seen this this whole page play out. Let's so, have a look at this. First, I think I should address the tapes, people. But just because I flew over there and talked to him doesn't mean there was anything sexual that occurred, which is what happened when the internet saw that photo. Which of course is what so um I, in fact I think I even mentioned that. I I I pointed it out in the fresh and fit video, as a matter of fact, where they were mm. interviewing him about that, about that, those, I guess there's a couple of pictures, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. but you got to probably, there's a bit of inference mm -hmm. that maybe something had occurred. So I just wanted to set that straight. Right. Right. So, so that's the first thing. Um, the second well, me, thing can is, I, can I, can I ask? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so that was in October of 2019 and you were in Germany. 2019. Mm-hmm. So you were already in Germany at that time or were yeah, I'd, I'd been in Germany. <laughs> I'd flew from Toronto to Germany. I was in Germany for business. And then on the way home, I stopped in Romania for a day. Okay. Lie number one. Now the back try now the back pedal. And then but January, you, I, I you, can't remember. He, that might've been 2018, did, but he flew you out there. Correct. On the way back. Yes. From Germany to Romania or all the way? Germany through? to Romania and then Romania to Canada. Okay. It was like, I'm busy. Canada, Romania back. I'll come see. I was interested in what he's done. He's made a lot of money. He's put things behind a paywall and I kind of wanted to learn. Does that gel with this? Very fond of the whole online. Says those, that's a whole different issue. So once I was there, he told me about the webcam stuff. It was bullshit lie ding 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 seems like an interesting character so you know i thought that could be interesting were you aware of what he does for a living no he told me once he got there it's not like he was you, hiding anything how did you guys corroborating that oh like online oh over instagram okay i'm sorry but this has like real tinder swindler vibes like women who want to do webcam stuff like they already want to do it mm -hmm. i help them make way more money mm -hmm. and i take a percentage like i'm not very fond of the whole online porn thing in any way and i don't think that it's okay for young women to monetize their sexual attractiveness online i think that leads to a very look at what she's wearing <laughs> dark place for them, even if they're successful, no. because becoming hurts successful your, by your soul. Yeah, by, you don't become successful by exploiting yourself. And you might think, well, I can exploit myself. It's like you can't treat yourself like a psychopath would treat you and get away with it. Even if look at that. Look at the face. Look at the expressions here. 
Look at the look at the physical look. At, I mean, if you turn, I could turn the the audio off. But you you turn the audio off on this section right here. Look how look at the straight back. She's not even looking at him. She's just straight ahead. And if the psychopath that's doing that is yourself, that doesn't work. That's why psychopaths. Are yeah, because he's describing you. Aren't very successful because they exploit themselves just like other people. And so I don't like the whole online porn thing. My understanding and and. I've watched him apparently agree to this characterization online. You know, it's hard to get a, I'm not trying to be the jury here because I haven't heard the whole damn story, but from what I've watched is he would. So you do know something about him then, Jordan. You do know something about Jordan P or about uh, Andrew Tate then? Because when you started this whole fucking charade, I don't know much about him, but here for the next 45 minutes, I'm going to tell you everything about, about Jordan Peterson that by the way, and by the way, I, this is not to to burn Jedi Bila at all, but like I had that same exact conversation with her prior to me doing the very first interview with her. And we were talking about fresh and fit at that time. I don't know much about fresh and fit, but for the next 45 minutes, let me tell you everything about fresh and fit. No, you know, something you've watched something you've developed an opinion, a perception of them that you're now going to tell me. So don't tell me you don't know. You do know. Oops, my bad. Hang on. Like I think, Pimps of any sort doesn't mean you're good. And whereas I'm so, pointed this out back in the 1850s, he said most morality following and monetize that and then take a percentage. And there isn't anything about that that I think is acceptable. You know, and you could say, well, you know, women are the captains of their own soul. And if they want to monetize their own attractiveness, then what the hell, why not do it? And if they're going to do it anyways, you know, I can help them. And if I help them, why not take a piece of the action? And the answer is, to me, the answer to that is, well, how about because it's ignoble and wrong? You could counter and you could say, well, you're just too useless and timid to dare to do that. And I'd say, you know, point taken. That's not, I have actually had that conversation with Andrew Tate back in the day. And his rationale is that has nothing to do with any of this bullshit that's just coming out of your mouth right now. His rationale was this. If I don't do it, somebody else is going to do it. Why not me? Why not? To, why, why not? It's like saying, well, nobody should sell alcohol. Nobody should sell weed. Nobody should be a drug dealer. Nobody should. But you know what? People are going to want it anyways. They're going to keep doing it. Why shouldn't it be me that's making money off of it? Then that's probably been, been um, and by the way, I shouldn't even just tag that onto, onto Tate. There's a lot of other people that do exactly the same thing. Why not me? Like, and then, then they try to, of course, then they try to like sort of temper that a little bit with a little bit of ethics and morals. You know, hey, like I'm, I'm watching out for these girls, even though I'm getting paid like more money than God. And I'm doing their taxes for them and skimming money off the taxes, allegedly. Right. Is that why you went to Romania? Did you find that out? Is that, was that a business model you wanted to repeat? Because nothing that has happened financially or business-wise or anything else with, with Michaela Peterson since that business meeting with Andrew Tate would indicate that she learned anything of the like, that she's done anything. She's taken that knowledge and used it in any productive way. Get the fuck out of here. You know, Nietzsche had pointed this out back in the 1850s. Uh, said, Most Nietzsche. morality Frank. is cowardice in the guise of morality. It's not like it's not like I'm good. It's just that I'm afraid to do that. And Tate would say, well, if you're this? just not doing something because you're a coward. Quick, click away from her. Coward, that doesn't mean you're good. And whereas I'm forthright and tough and look at me, I climb into the ring and, you know, I can entice women into, you know, sex work online and take a cut. <laughs> Why the hell shouldn't I? And. I think that if you're a timid and reprehensible, resentful, bottom dwelling male, that that's going to look like an attractive alternative. You think he's got anger issues with Andrew Tate? Like, cause something tells me he knows a whole lot more about Andrew Tate than he's letting on at this point. <laughs> but it's not the highest form of human behavior, right? It's not, it's not acceptable. Like I think, you know what else isn't it's petitioning uh, your Instagram followers to be babysitters for you while you party and get drunk and poolside in fucking Miami. That's that's reprehensible behavior, too. But we didn't see any videos about that when that occurred. Pimps of any sort are I truly believe they're amongst the most contemptible of people. I think. there's. And your daughter went to go to one to get business advice. 
biz, business advice. Nothing in, you know, with a pimp is, I've got all these hoes and look at me like, you know, king of these women. And it's like, no, you are the ultimate in pathetic, parasitic predators. There's nothing about that that's heroic. It's just pathetic. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, I'm, he's not wrong. It is a little, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I don't know if I would use the term pathetic, manipulative. Fuck yeah. <laughs> This is, sounds like the venting session that he has wanted to have for a very long time. And now finally he's got the green light by Daily Wire to do it. Now you might say if you're that type, well, at least is I'm not as contemptible as the cowards who hide behind me. It's like, fair enough. You know, there's, there's ranks of order even in hell and there's lower and higher demons, you know, and the person who would. Oh, God car, bam! <laughs> Pimp car, bam! <laughs> like to do something terrible, but is too cowardly to do it? That's a pretty damn low form of demon. But that doesn't mean that the person. So are they actually demons, or are they actually just people who like kind of suck and they're fuckwits? Like, because I would use the term spurg, fuckwit, asshat, douche nozzle. <laughs> I don't know if I'd use the term demon. Well, what level of demon would douche nozzle be? Can you guys give me that? Like what, what like on, on a scale of one to 10, what would a douche nozzle demon be? <laughs> Who would like to do something and is courageous enough to do it, even though it's bad, isn't also a demon. And so, you know, I think fundamentally that Tate serves his, There's your clip. his immediate self in this like impulsive gratifying manner. And I think that goes along with his, you know, look at me, I'm in a Bugatti. It's like, you know, fair enough, man in some way do you think what he hold on <laughs> i i really hope this happens because at the towards the end of this they're gonna say well, we'd really like to see a a, a, a a meeting of the minds between andrew taylor like, it's the prodigal son is what they're going to pitch at the end of this. But like that part right there, if they actually, if I don't know if they pull this off, if, if daily wire pulls this off, you know what? I might, I might give you a gold star for it, but if you can pull off the, uh, the uh, Andrew Tate, uh, Jordan Peterson interview, and he pulls out in my Bugatti. <laughs> that happens. Holy shit! I, you, Daily Wire, make this pay per view. Really, seriously, make it pay per view. He's been telling men more on the you know take responsibility for your life and and do things. Mm -hmm. If that, I mean, it's hard to I suppose separate it from well, in actual else. life. People are complex. No, people are complex. Would you like to know how complex they are? <laughs> Here, this is how complex they are. <laughs> here's, a, here, here's, here's complex, contemplating the mini acts. <laughs> really, it's not rocket science. <laughs> All it is is insert tab A into slot B. That's, villain is simple. That's how complex it no, is. No villain is simple, you know, and, and in, in great literature, the great villain is a sympathetic figure. You're kind of on board for 75% of it. And not only that, you... Mm, see, I, I disagree with that. Actually, I kind of want to stop there for a second. I disagree with the uh, the idea that in great literature, the villain is a complex character. No, that hasn't been the way. That's only that's a recent invention, actually. If you go back and you and I, I know that there are villains in the past, and you know he's going to quote Nietzsche or fucking Dostoevsky or somebody, some other random Russian author. But if you go back as far as like, say, the golden era of comic books, for example, because I mean, I can only put it in those terms because everybody wants to talk about villains and the Joker, for example. He's a very sympathetic character. I mean, now, anyway, like in 20, in the 21st century, we've sort of made the, the villains the heroes. It's not enough that the bad guy is just a fucking bad guy. We need to fight evil and he's a bad dude. Thanos has a reason for snapping his fingers, right? The Joker has a has a backstory and he has a shit life and that's why he does what he does. And he's a sympathetic character because a lot of people can sort of like it resonates with a lot of people. Right. But back in the golden era, back in back in the time is like, like Superman just beat the shit out of this. It didn't you didn't care what Luke, Lex Luthor's horrible childhood was like. You didn't care about the Joker's horrible childhood. You didn't care about the penguin. You didn't care about, you know, the Riddler. Why does he, why does, why does, what's his deeper inner meaning for, for telling riddles all the time? Who hurt him? Nobody cared. They still didn't care. It's only recently that this has been such a, you know, why can't just bad guys be bad guys and good guys be good guys? 
Do you know why? Because we need to have a series. We need to have some sort of churn marketing for Netflix. We got to do, because what happens is when you have shitty writers who don't know how to write a real plot or they have to like stretch out a four episode plot to eight episodes, that's where you get those time slips. Oh, six years earlier. And then they got to tell you all about this character's background and stuff like that. And then like the maybe in the next episode, you get like a little bit more plot and then you get another character development. And what happens is character development becomes the fucking plot. That's why you say, shit. oh, they're, they're sympathetic characters. No, no, no. There, be, there used to be a time where bad guys were just fucking bad guys. Spider-Man, the Vulture, Rhino. Um, who else? I'm trying to think. Dr. Octopus. Uh, he was a little more complex. <laughs> Very complex. <laughs> it, it didn't used to be that way. And it didn't have to be that way. I remember there's a, one of my favorite guy. I'm going to go nerd on you real quickly here. One of my very favorite uh, comic book artists. His name is Michael Golden. And Michael Golden was in, like, one of the reasons I love him so much is because I, I really kind of like I'm on this. I've met him probably like three times, maybe four times at different like comic. I, he's been to comic book stores. And like when I lived in Orlando, I would go there. I would literally take the day off so I could go meet him and just talk to him. And one of the things he was saying at one point, he's like, I miss the days when bad guys could just be fucking bad guys. And then you could have, you could focus on the plot and you could say, okay, well, you know, Modoc is trying to, you know, rule the world, right? Okay. Well, okay. That's his motivation. He's Modoc. He's no more complex than anything else. And so then you could get on, get on with the plot instead of like, you know, hashing out this backstory about how his mom used to, his dad used to beat him as a child or some stupid shit like that. Right. He's just a bad fucking guy. Can, is, can we just go with that? Because there was a time when you could do that. Now we can't. Now we have to explain everything. You might also say, well, if I was in that position, I might do the same thing. Like, it's only a cartoon villain who's 100% evil. Even when you meet someone who's dark and psychopathic to the yeah. core, you'll find, and I've had clients- Dracula's who just like, misunderstood. You're I right. had one client who had like five restraining orders out against him. He was actually quite comical. He's quite a young guy, small guy, kind of slight. <laughs> Dracula is not a bad dude. He's just hungry. Extremely intense. You know, he had that kind of human shark thing going. And he was actually, he was quite the horrible riotous blast to work with because he was, he was a very interesting monster. And he would, five restraining orders is a lot. Yep. And restraining orders don't work on the sort of people who need restraining orders. So don't be ever thinking a restraining order is going to help you. Not if a real monster's got you in his sights. And he had a paranoid end to him. And what that- You'll notice that there's a lot of jump clips here. Like there's that one right there. You'll notice the jump clips for a lot of these things. It makes me wonder what they chopped out of this. That meant was if he was ever insulted by you, he would blow the insult up and it would put enmity between the two of you. So like talking to him was quite the nightmare because you didn't get to make a mistake. And he was like, are we going to get back to Tate? Like, is this, is this really what Tate is? Is this what you think he is? Hypervigilant because he was paranoid. So he's just watching. Look at her. All right. Now this is a good, this is a good time to stop this. Look at her left hand, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that left hand. Oh, you can't see it? That's okay. I'll blow it up for you. There you go. Look at that left hand. Notice anything lacking on that left hand? Like maybe a wedding ring? Why is she not wearing her wedding ring in all of this? Jordan, maybe you can explain that. Oh, it's out for cleaning, right? Why is she not wearing a wedding ring? If somebody first pointed this out to me when she went on with Pierce Morgan and she's, she's not wearing a wedding ring on that, on that, on that interview. I, I have to go back and look at the, the, the video again. I'm not sure if that's the case, but in this one, it's definitely the case. Where's that wedding ring? The one that, that Jordan put on your finger that you really like, like my wife, oh my gosh, poor Jordan. I feel so bad. Jordan, when, when the shit happens, Jordan, when, it, when it all comes down, when it comes crashing down, Jordan, I will be here. I swear to God, I, I, I mean this like with the, from the bottom of the depth of my soul. When all this shit goes, when all this goes to hell, Jordan, maybe if you, if you don't want to talk to me, talk to the Iron Disciples. I know he's a Christian guy, right? Seriously, Jordan, call me up, talk to me. Let me know what's going on. I will be here for you if this is, if, if what's going down is what I think is going down. Sorry, not sorry. You're like a bloody hawk for every deviation from honesty. And like, I never lied to him. And if I thought he was doing something stupid and terrible, I just told him that I looks to me like that's pretty stupid and terrible. Like there was no, I wasn't playing with him and I wasn't trying to impress him. And I talked to him for a long time. 
It's like, okay, fine. Like, can we get back to tape? Fine. No, you go into an institution. There's another jump cut right there. there. Bureaucratic personality disorder, and they decide that the good thing to do that day. Bureaucratic personality disorder. Let's look that up. Hold on a second. Right, I'm gonna look this up. Is there such a thing as bureaucratic personality disorder? Personality, there's a personality type. Bureaucratic personality disorder, obsessive compulsive personality disorder. That's what it is. There is a bureaucratic personality, but it is not a a a clinical. Diagnose. There's no. There's not. It's not in the FA or FS FSM. Yeah, the field. The F, the diagnostic manual. Obsessive compulsive personality. Obsessive compulsive personality. Define bureaucratic bureaucratic personality. There is no bureaucratic personality disorder. Although maybe he's just making a joke. Who knows? Hey, is to just screw up your life yeah, or some yeah, yeah, complication yeah. just because they can. It's my job. Right. right. And maybe it is time that the Canadian, like, I don't know if there's an APA for Canada, was a CPA? <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe you do need to, like, sort of take some remedial course. Right, yeah, well, yeah. you know, I have to do this. And they're, they're playing their little power game because yes. they're like Dostoevsky's underground man and they're resentful to the core. And so they're going to just screw around with you. Well, now and then someone would do that with him. And he'd say, I'm going to be your worst nightmare. <laughs> and then what he meant was, I'm now going to commit a sizable proportion of my... Now, what he's describing is certainly very much on the autistic personality disorder that's on the spectrum. It's certainly a cluster B, right? What, histrionic, borderline, narcissistic, and what's the other one? Oh, um, antisocial personality. Those are, those are the cluster B uh, personality disorders. Certainly he's describing that, but. My life and all my intellectual prowess to making you as miserable as I can possibly imagine. And then he would go do that. You know, and there was actually not like people who just like want to hold your feet to the fire because you're a piece of shit and you need to be you need to be held accountable. That's why we have police. That's why we have a, a legal system. That's why we have like that's why we have a social. That's why we have laws, man. Ooh. This is in, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ooh, well, maybe right. it shouldn't be a bureaucratic nightmare. Well, right, right. Well, and then see that. Well, and that was the weirdly admirable part, right? It's like. You know, because typically what would happen in a situation like that is you'd go into the bank and you'd just swallow it. And then yeah. you'd go out and, you know, go home and kick your dog and bitch at your wife because you didn't tell the bureaucrat to, you know, watch the hell out or something terrible is going to happen. Well, he was way on the other end of the distribution. It's like, don't muck with me. And he meant he was an honor code guy. It's like, don't muck with me. And what he meant was. See, here's the thing. This is one thing I notice about Jordan and his sort of debate style. I think he's really debate style. See, I mean, I can talk, okay? I know, we, here, what are we at? We're not even at two hours yet. I know, trust me, I can go. There's only two people who can out-talk Rolo Tomasi. One of them happens to be Mike Sartain. If he gets monologuing, watch the fuck out, man. He wants to tell you something. He wants you to know. Not he, See, the thing about Mike, when Mike starts monologuing, it's not because he's trying to prove himself right. He feels like he needs to make sure you get this information and you and you understand it you you acknowledge it and you understand where he's going and what he's doing with it right the other person is jim sexton <laughs> jim's kind of like the same I, I i cannot wait for the interview between mike sartain and jim sexton which will be the week of the 9th through the 14th in las vegas i don't know exactly what the date is going to be I, I i hope you guys do this live because i would much rather see a live stream of this than just a pre-record but I will tell you right now, those two can monologue like nobody's business, but at least their monologuing has a purpose. When when Peterson, when Jordan Peterson monologues, it's because he gets he gets started down a path that starts telling stories and everything that he thinks are pertinent. And he gets so far away from the point. He can't remember where he was when he comes back to it, when he, he ends his story. Oh, now, what were we talking about? Like that's that's senility is what that is, quite honestly. Don't muck with me now and he this guy was like will say fuck on his shorts won't say fuck in here on this he meant it and there was something admirable about that you know even though he was a very dangerous person and he had taken it way too far but there was that one there's this one video that he does where he's talking about uh 
was it? Oh, oh, it was uh, because the beautiful thing, like when he made the comment, I don't know if hopefully it was him, but he made that one tweet about the uh, Sports Illustrated uh, swimsuit edition. And he was like, not beautiful. And if you don't like it, fuck you like that. Go look it up. It's, it's actually a recent uh, short right now. You'll say fuck you there, but you won't say it here. This is what I mean by complexity of the villain. It's like, well, he had the courage of his convictions. Let's put it that way. You know, and so when you see someone like Andrew Tate, oh, well, first of all, if you have any sense, you think this is a guy that's actually crawled in the ring. And the second thing you think is, well, just because his moral compass is warped and, and warped in a serious way on the like electronic pimp. Get the muck out of here. Front And like, I think in a fatal way, personally, that's the highest likelihood, because I don't think you can do that without it permeating everything. That doesn't mean that, you know, he's a two dimensional villain. You know, or that there aren't things about him that are complex and interesting and potentially even admirable. Or you could ask the young lady sitting right next to you that you have known since she was born what her take on his personality actually is instead of like armchair psychologists that are talking about somebody you have no idea, admittedly have no idea what you're talking about, don't, are unfamiliar with them. You know, people are complicated and, and even the villainous types. I'm the, I just have a bachelor's in psychology. I'm not, I don't have a doctorate, but that seems like the most logical, rational, like, you know, deductive way to do things. It's complicated. And it isn't surprising to me at all that he's an attractive figure given the current, you know, war against masculinity. He's exactly the He's 100% predictable. He's exactly. God, Tate, God, please, please be watching this. Tate, please, please watch my show today because he, he's calling you predictable. Tate, if you're not watching me, like, please watch this and get, get my take before you do. Like, if you're not going to watch this, then like at least watch my take on what you, what's coming up, coming down the pipe for you. Because I guarantee you the only reason they do shit like this is because it's already in the can. They've already done the interview and this is the buildup for it. Or they have it already scheduled and it's already planned for him to go out to Romania. Like part because he's in his he's on his European tour right now. Wink, wink, nod, nod. Trust me, he's already been to. In fact, I think that was one a tour stop was Romania. Exactly what you'd expect. Wait, so, what? would you talk to him? You know, I pretty much talk to anybody. Oh. I thought about. Except for that roll of Tomasi, motherfucker. <laughs> roll of Tomasi don't get no holes, man. <laughs> Except for one guy. <laughs> Say my name. You know whether or not that would be a good idea. For me, you know, generally one of my prime wouldn't be a good idea for you because he'd say something that would set you off because he, you know, your daughter was involved with him to some degree, even if for even if it was a same night lay. Very driving force is just curiosity. Yeah, yeah. Like, and I am a clinician. You know, I like talking to. I've talked to lots of. I've talked to lots of very. Dude, right there, that's a Biden moment. That's a Biden moment. That's a, and I, and God bless him. Cause I, I, I know how this is. My father died from, from uh, uh, Alzheimer's dementia. If you have, if you have, and I'm not saying he has that, he can still string a sentence together clearly. But, um, but when you, when I see that, that's sorry, that's what it reminds me. I know he's 60 or 61 right now. I'm not really sure, but. Um, Strange people you know, lots of them. And it's very interesting to do that because you're really wandering into no man's land and that's perilous. And but you're not wandering into no man's land. You just said, you know what he's about. You just said he's predictable. Your daughter knows just how predictable he is too. She was there, met him live in real time, 2019, October, apparently, I guess. Costume change, man. I'm telling you. And ridiculously, crazily interesting. That's what I loved about part of what I loved about being a clinician. Like almost everybody is interesting enough to be a Dostoevsky character if you start listening to them. And so just ordinary people, if you listen to them, they're ridiculously weird and interesting. And Except for Rollo. And then you find someone truly weird and interesting and listening to them, listen to them. It's like you can hardly stand it. Carl Rogers talked about this. You know, he said they because they're too terrified of changing because, you know, if you listen to someone, they tell you how weird they are. Well, I wonder, did you get that when you were out there in Romania? How weird was he? You share in that self-revelation. It's 
It's too interesting. So, and I'm sure talking to Andrew Tate would be too interesting. Mind upgrading. There you go. Have you, has your mind been upgraded, ladies and gentlemen? Boys and girls, children. Hello there, children. How's it going? Have you been, have you been, has your mind been upgraded? Are you ready to go and sign up for your $4,000 uh, uh, graduate program at, uh, what is it, uh, Peterson Academy? Y'all ready for that? Now, we know that there was a costume change. We know that there's, we're not getting the full story in all of this. Why was that changed? Why is there a, why is a cocktail dress, right? I don't know about you, but if I had a girlfriend or I had a wife or I had a, hell, even a, just like a, a, an acquaintance friend. And she said, hey, I'm going to go fly. I'm had this guy's flying me to Romania. I don't know much about him. I don't know exactly what he does. I'll find out when I get there. Do you think I should wear this cocktail dress or this black mini skirt while I'm there? <laughs> Tell that just to be cool. <laughs> Can the prosecution rest its case now, Your Honor? Can we please be done with this? Because I'm tired of having to like listen to like fucking ten year old kids go, "Well, you yeah, we're be fucking Michaela Peterson owned you." No, no, she didn't. She's struggling to keep her story straight. And I, Andrew Tate's the only one who knows the reality of it. He ain't speaking. He ain't talking. But Lord in heaven, I would look. How cool would this be? It'll never go live. But how awesome would it be if like, oh, would you talk to Andrew Tate? The reason she brings that up is because he's already talked to Andrew Tate. Trust me on this. It's already happened. And if it hasn't, it's going to happen soon. That's the teaser. That's why that's a clip. That, by the way, that little 12 minute section is from a, a almost a two hour interview between herself. And that's the, the Tate part of that interview, right? That's that, you know, why people stop, you know, why they made that just a clip because they know that that's the teaser that they, that's got a real deficient. That's the bait. Let's throw some chum in the water. Andrew Tate, Andrew Tate, Andrew Tate. <laughs> Am I the only one that gets this? Am I the only one seeing this bullshit? I don't think I am. Oh, man. All right. Uh, you know what? I am remiss in all of this. Let's get back to it. Let's get back to it. Thank you for it. Good, good for you, Rolo. Thank you very much for your $20 shout. Uh, uh, Lewis, very much appreciated. Uh, let's see. Come on, my man. Podcast. Okay, I got that. Uh, anything worth doing is worth doing for money. Yep. Fuck you. Pay me. Uh, no only fans for Ned. Okay. Thank you. Ned appreciates that. Hello, Rolo. We rational pack of turkey. Okay, I got to turkey already. Uh, who else is this? Uh, Tate, uh, Z guitar account. Uh, Tate is one of the rare guys that's not only successful and intelligent. Well, clearly, he's also predictable, too, apparently. Oh, he's pooky. Okay, I got to you already. And let's see. Uh, I'm 19. I've been in the red pill for three years. I'm aiming to have a first date by the end of the year. <laughs> Good for you, man. Awesome. Keep it going, but, but far be it for me to actually try to, you know, help you out because that might turn you into a monster. Monster. It's a very monster Halloween with that monster, Andrew Tate. I'm here for the Petersons. Uh, let's see. I'm here for Michaela Peter Hatathon. Is it a Hatathon? How about Informathon? Can it be a formative? Can it be an infomercial? How about that? Infothon. Rolo, many forgot, but not me. Shut up and take my money. You got it, man. Here you go. Give me your ending track you used before the current one in Lossless Flack. Okay. Yeah. I, by the way, the intro track is I am. Uh, I'm not going to do it with Trial of Ascension because I just don't think it's going to. I was hoping to get it on the next album. We're By the way, we're, we're recording. We're going to do a full album on this one. So people say, well, how come you guys didn't do an EP in August? Because we're doing a full eight song, probably maybe even 10 song album that we're going to release in spring. So we're about, I think we've got like four or five in the can right now. So that's, we've decided to actually go, go all the way. Um, but as far as the intro track that everybody loves, it's from a song that I wrote actually a long time, very long time ago. And I play the guitar and everything else. I might or might not. I'm not going to confirm or deny that it was me singing on it. Um, but I don't use the vocals on the on the on the intro. Um, 
But uh, I have given that the actual full track to Giovanni Sanders, and between myself and Giovanni, we're going to do the uh, we're going to do the the intro, and we'll make it available. Uh, maybe we'll split the profits, whatever it is. I, the, the very the, the fraction, the the zero point zero 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 one three cent that we make off of every replay. Yeah, we'll probably split that. <laughs> but everybody keeps asking me for it, so I'll give it. We're, we're going to put it out. All right. Uh, let's see. And there you go. Yep. Okay. And Rollo, I'm 54. I live in the UK. I'm well, and you're wealthy. Cool. Divorce raped a year ago. Uh, you saved my life. Thank you very much for that, sir. Uh, it's sugar babes for sugar babies for me. Uh, from now on, you know what? Some people that might be your best option. Uh, saves a fortune. Uh, we need a book for older guys like me. Funny you should say that, Andrew Bilyeu, because Hello there, children. I am actually working on a program and probably a book to go along with that for my more mature. I'm gonna <laughs> I've I've got a friend of mine. Um I don't want to I don't know if he'd be cool with me using his real name at this point, but he's uh he's an older guy that uh, I am uh, pretty good friends with in Mike Sartain's Men of Action. By the way, if you haven't joined Men of Action and you want to, you want hands-on sort of like I want to go out and do this stuff, I need practical stuff. Join Men of Action. The use my link below. Um, and uh, you, there's so I, I don't even want to give you commercial because I've said it so many times, but it's uh, the only program that I endorse. But uh, I am presently in sort of like the uh, the outline stage and the design stage of a program that is directly catered for guys between the ages of 45 and 65 years old. Uh, I don't want to call it the Robert Kiyosaki program, but it's um, it's going to be uh, sort of the the divorcee reintegration program. Like, you know, when you get out of prison and they give you like the prisoners reintegration, you know, packages and shit like that. to like, so you can go, go rejoin society. Um, so me and me and this other individual, this guy, um, we're already working on it. We're going to, we're going to do probably a series of classes. We'll probably do some live stuff and we're going to, I'm considering doing a book, probably a smallish book, like probably no more than 200 pages, which is small for me. Right. Um, so, but yeah, uh, pay attention for that. I, I'll probably end up doing it in 2024. So, uh, uh, keep an eye out. And Andrew, if you are interested, you can also join my Patreon group, which is, I do, I'm, I'm upping the, the rate now, not the, the money, but the, the frequency. So I'm going to do two, um, I'm, I'm, I'm a, as of October, I will be doing two, uh, live zoom calls for two hours for people who are at the $200 level. That's the top tier of my, my, uh, my Patreon group. I've got, I, I limit it to 25 people. I'm, I've decided to do it like uh, to do two of them per month because sometimes like there'll be guys who are in the group and they couldn't make it on one. So, but they could make it on another one. So that's why I'm, I've decided to give, do two a month, two hours, 200 bucks. If you want to join that, look in this, like you have to go below the full, click on, you know, see more, view more. And it's right down there. The the link to my Patreon page is right there. Go join my Patreon. Even if you don't, gee, my Patreon is cheap. It's dirt cheap. It's only $5 a month. But um, I have a, I have, it's it's actually more like older guys that are in that old dish guys. There's some guys that are young, I guess. But anyways, coming up soon. Uh, women compete for me. Uh, uh, Carl Benjamin, uh, Bennington, Benjamin, Bennington. Uh, but I have this resistance to complete with uh, compete with other men for one woman at a nightclub. Even if I have game, uh, it feels like demonstrating lower value DLV. Um, even going around among other men, I resist getting aggressive. What's your opinion? Okay, you. Here's my opinion. Um, my analysis. I don't give opinions. I give analysis. I think one of the reasons why guys get like into it's. It, either it's intimidation or it seems you're, you're, it's, there's two reasons why guys feel the way you do. One is intimidation. Uh, that might not be the case with you. And the other one is self-consciousness. I have to be something that I'm not to outperform these dudes. I, I have more respect for myself than to do that and then to go to Omnia and pick up on hot chicks in Vice Vegas. Right? Um, Again, I'm not that. That's not a burn on you or anything. But a lot of that's those are usually the two roots when when people feel that way. They feel self conscious. Sometimes it's a combination of both, right? Um, but you feel like I shouldn't have to do this. People should just recognize my inherent value and and love me for me or want me for me. Because if they were really quality women, they'd be able to see that. No, no, they can't because they're looking at Brock the bartender. Because the guy, because remember, it's all perception at this stage. You, like people keep thinking, you know, when we when I talk about game, 
I think it's just like, oh, all you do is run game. No, there's a lot more to game than just like, you know, spitting good game. You still have to be attractive. You have to have style. You have to be built. You have to have you got you have good, good hygiene, right? You got to wear nice shoes, I guess, right? Uh, you got to drive a nice car or some approximation of that. I'm not saying you have to have a Bugatti. <laughs> Maybe you have a nice like Ford pickup, right? I don't know. You just have to be, you have to be the guy that other men want to be and other women want to bang. Right. And how that plays out contextually, it's going to be different than if you're in like, you know, Tacoma, Washington versus Paducah, Kentucky versus Brickle in Miami. So um, I think getting over, the, it sounds to me like what your problem is, is it's sort of this self-consciousness. I feel like I'm demonstrating lower value because I'm out there actually making and making an effort to do this. And there's nothing wrong with making an effort. In fact, you have to play the game. I'm sorry, but you have to play the game. If you want to be in the game, you got to be able, you got to play the game. And so to play the game, you have to sort of get over yourself. I'll, I will tell you, here's, here's my, this is me. This is a personal story for me. I'm not giving you an opinion. I'm just saying this is, this is me. One of the things that I had to do to become a writer is get over myself. But what is he talking about? <laughs> Rolo, you're so full of yourself. No, but back when I was writing on So Suave and I was writing on, uh, on my blog and uh, people said, you really need to do a book. You need to do a book. I'm like, okay, but who would want to hear anything from me? That was what I said. Like I would to myself, that was my inner com conversation. Like, why am I so important that people would actually pay money to read any book that I would put together? And I kind of had to say, you know what? There's a lot of people that would, because clearly I've been writing on, you know, so Swab for X amount of years and, and on my, my blog for X amount of years. Why not? It's just simply seems like the next step, but I had to get over myself. And by the way, once I did, it became much easier because now I'm like, you know what? I gave my per per myself permission to be conceited enough to think that somebody else might want to hear what I have to say. And then I wrote the second book and then I wrote the third book and then I wrote the fourth book and then I wrote the fifth book, right? Because once you start doing it and people say, oh, you're Rolo Tomasi, the author, then they're like, oh, cool. I have people that's, by the way, that's like one of my highest like social uh, forms of social proof for myself is I can be at a club around some very beautiful women. And then it's not the women that I like that are, are the factor in this. It's other guys come up to me, shake my hand and say, you really say, just, they say what you guys say. You really saved my life. Thank you very much. And when you like, I don't think men really realize that women pick up on cues like that. You would never realize that they are. That's a, that's powerful shit. Social proof and, uh, and, and, uh, well, demonstrating higher value, but social proof and um, pre-selection are very, very powerful. In fact, I would argue that they are the foundation of all kind of all forms of game. Social proof, pre-selection are at the root of day game, direct approach, direct game, uh, yad stops, whatever the fuck it is, right? You still have to look good. Don't get me wrong. There's the basics, like the physical aspect, but I think that social proof and pre-selection it is manifest in the way that you behave and it's manifest in your conversation. You, are you the kind of person who can carry on a conversation? Are you the kind of girl, guy who feels comfortable and just talk, approaching people who are complete strangers and then carry on a conversation with them? Not because you feel like you have to and you're needy. Oh, give me, give me, give me. That's not what I'm talking about. It's like right now. And I had to, I had to develop this. I've always been kind of, I'm kind of an introverted person, but I am an extrovert by necessity. So and that comes from like performing on stage, doing like stage acting, doing uh, well, playing bands for God knows how long. But uh, people say, well, that makes you an extrovert. Mm. It does when the situation warrants it, but I would much rather be sitting at home writing. Like writing is a very introverted <laughs> well, hobby and then profession if you make it a profession. So I'm kind of somewhere in between those two. And anybody who knows me, like they think of me as a, a very outgoing, very extroverted, very sort of like gregarious kind of person. Whereas like if I'm home and I'm with my dogs, I don't want anybody to fuck with me. Right? But for you guys, I make an exception. <laughs> but so when I gave myself permission to be a writer, then I had to give myself permission to be a podcaster. Then I had to be give myself permission to be a guy who would go and do live talks at conventions and stuff. Then I had to be the guy who would accept the fact that I am now good friends with Robert Kiyosaki. And that opens up another, another branch of the tree that I didn't even know existed. And now I have to give myself permission to go and rub elbows with guys who have like more money than I could ever like imagine of, like, I can't even like fathom that kind of wealth. Right. But I'd like to fathom that kind of wealth, but I don't like right now I'm just, it's like, you know, I am I am a small person walking amongst giants in that perspective, but they all have a high respect for me. So I give myself permission to do that. 
So maybe that helps you, right? I mean, it feels like going around and amogging with other men. You don't have to amog other guys. The best form of amogging is not amogging. It's just being there and being higher value that being clearly, obviously, blatantly, observably higher value than anybody there. Seriously, if if I'm if me and Mike Sartain, here's here's a good one. If me and Mike Sartain are at a club or we're at like Wet, Wet Republic or something like that, we're outside. And we're hanging out with the girls and they love us and da, 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 da. And we're just, you know, talking business and we're doing, we were talking, really talking business. right? Um, and we're, we're hanging out and if it's like people hanging around us, like guys who don't know who we are, maybe they do, but they're just like, you know, there's kind of you know, observers of and all this. And in walks Dan Bilzerian. Now suddenly he's amogging Rolo and, and, uh, and Mike Sartain just by his presence. He doesn't have to say a damn word because people know who he is, right? It's reputation. Sometimes reputation is more of an amog than anything else. Your amogging might, you might be Giga Chad. You might have that body, like the body of Giga Chad. You know what I'm talking about? Just walk in. You don't even have to know the guy. The guy walks in, he's six foot you know, four and he looks like a, a Greek God. And he's, it looks like he just stepped off the stage at the Mr. O or Fitness America or whatever it is. Yeah. He's going to amog you. So don't feel bad. Don't feel bad about that for Christ's sake, man. Uh, let's see. Uh, do you think dating too far down socioeconomically as a man can get to a point where it's going to be more trouble than it's worth? Mm, it can. Uh, if so, how do you draw the line and determine what, where that is? Okay. Well, first off, um, there's two, two things to, to remember. Why are you dating? Ask, whenever anybody asks me some like similar questions to this, I, what are you dating for? Are you dating because you want to find your, I got to find Mrs. Uh, Anderson. I got to find her. She's out there somewhere, right? Is that why you're dating? Are you dating for the long term? Because every trad con and every, you know, religious guy that I talked to last week says that that's the only reason you should be doing it. So you kind of have to clarify terms for me first. Are you there because you want to spin plates? Are you there because you just want to have a good time? Are you there because you just want to be open to new experiences? Maybe a girl walks in and she's long-term and maybe she's just recreational use. You don't really care. I need to know the context. That's number one. Number two is you're asking me uh, as a man, can it get to the point where it's going to be more trouble than it's worth? Yes, it can be. Because you've probably heard uh, Myron and myself and some other, some other like those red pill guys probably say this, before, you know, in, in the past that men don't have an attraction floor. Nobody's ugly after 2 a.m. Like guys are, are we, we're breeders of opportunity. Like we're, we, we, we fuck based on opportunity. You know, that guy's a, what was it as a Justin Waller? It's a, it's the, it's the stupid uh, uh, Chris Rock thing. You know, men are only as loyal as their op options, right? <sighs> yes and no, but that's a blessing and a curse. Okay. So to say like, well, you know, would you date down socioeconomically if the girl was hot, if she was a barista or a sandwich artist, or she had some, she was a janitor at a school or something like that, but she was a smoke show. First off, girls who are really smoking hot and they're in a position of being like poor or being lower on the socioeconomic ladder and they're still smoking hot enough for you to take notice of them and want to fuck them. There's guys who will be like, I want to save her from her. I want to lift her out of poverty. I have the golden ticket. I'm going to go off to Southeast Asia and Burma and Guam and Thailand and Vietnam and the Philippines. And I'm going to find some local girl who's like feminine and loving and kind and wants to fuck me and everything and pull her out of poverty because I'm just that magnanimous. That also applies in the States when you find a girl who is like, maybe she's a stripper or she's a waitress or she's a bartender or she's God knows what she is, but she is a smoke show. Girls who are smoke, I'm going to use a Vegas reference, but this is, you can contextualize this how you want, but girls who are like hot tend not to be bartenders and waitresses and, and struggling actresses and, and whatever it is they are that puts them on the lower on end of the socioeconomic ladder for very long. Because at some point they do what Jordan Peterson says and like, well, you know, uh, you know, it's, it's horrible to make money and commercialize your sexuality. That should be up to you. Yeah, that's in a perfect world. But it's an imperfect world, Jordan. Screws fall out of doors every day. And, you know, the world, sometimes the buses don't run on time. 
But uh, but women who are in a socioeconomic rung that are that you would take notice of and go, damn, she's hot. You most guys see that as an opportunity because they think that I don't have that much money, but I got more money than her. And so therefore I can help her out. And there then you get Captain save a Then you get scarcity mentality. Then you get the savior schema, which is, oh, you, your tires flat. Let me fix that for you. Or, or you get this. Where, where is it? Every time a man's being nice to you, all he's doing is offering dick. All he's doing is offering dick. Well, yes, you can. It can be a drag. And here's the other thing. So let's just say for sake of argument, you get to that point where you're like, okay, I've got a, I've got a hot smoke show. Uh, I lifted her up out of her socioeconomic, you know, squalor. Uh, but now she wants to fuck other guys who are a higher class than I am because now I've lifted her up to the next level and she's looking to get to the next level. And I'm not at that level. She like, I'm here. She's here. I lift her up to where I am. And then suddenly she starts looking higher than me. Right. That's a disadvantage of that. Because that's just how guys are opportunists when it comes to sex, right? But the other part is, you, yeah, and then guys get all pissed. That's when you, that's when the blue pill beta comes out because you're like, well, she should appreciate me for lifting her up out of poverty. Yeah, yeah except she's a smoke show and she's better than you. You just gave her the boost that she needed. Um, and then the other thing is like, maybe she's here and you bring her up to where you are and she never kind of like mentally gets out all the way from here to here. And so now she has like poor person's disease or she has sort of like this, this mentality of like, of like she's maybe she's ad addicted to something. Could be drugs, could be alcohol, could be daytime soap operas. It could be Instagram. I don't know. But like you have a girl that you think, Oh, I'm going to lift her out of poverty. And you only get her this far because she can't take the girl out of the gutter. Right. So, but you want to, and you think she's, you know, she's all that. And then you end up getting into, I think it's law of power. Number 10, which is, you know, beware of saving the drowning man because sometimes people draw misery on themselves and they will draw it on you too and they will take you down with them when they drown. So, yes, keep that in mind. And here we go. Thank you. So, wait, is Michaela and Tate banging confirmed? No, it's not. It's not confirmed. I did not say they fucked. I did not say they smashed. I did not say she's just like Casey Anthony. I did not say any of that. Get that through your head. And I know you're, you're, you're not giving me a hundred dollars because you're giving me shit, but I know that that's coming, right? No, it has not been confirmed. I did not have a secret camera in the hotel room when she took her clothes off and he put his PP in her VV. Didn't do that. Don't have that footage. Sorry. <laughs> But I know that's coming. I know it's coming. Thank you very much. Thank you for that too. For that 20, whatever that was, rupees. What is it? Uh, thank you for your contribution. Oh, there it is. Okay. I have to, uh, I, God damn it. Santa Maria. Why are you asking me about Tim Henson? Because you know, damn well, I'm going to stop and tell you all my opinion on, on Polyphia guitar. Tim Henson is a alien. He is, I, uh, there's, there's only three people I can think of who are better or like of that caliber. He's a fantastic guitar player, virtuoso. Is he an Eddie Van Halen? Maybe, of maybe to the Zoomer generation. He's a very good guitar player. Fantastic innovator. Yes, he got it. Looks, he's got it. I know he looks like he belongs in a K-pop band, but still he's a good looking kid. Has kind of an arrogant asshole, asshole-ish vibe to him, which I kind of can understand because he's that he's good enough to have that, right? I have seen him on uh, what's the guy's name? Um, forget the guitar player guy. Uh, he, I've seen him on on multiple interviews. Um, what the fuck is that guy's name? Older guy was a guitar player guy. Anyways, uh, anyway, I, his name escapes me at the at the point. But anyways, I'm very familiar with Polyphia. Yeah, playing God. Yes, uh, he's good. Tosin Abasi is better. Tosin Abasi is fantastic. Rabia is very, very good too. Um, if you know who I'm talking about, like people don't think I know modern guitar. Oh, trust me. <laughs> I'll tell you then the, the last person, the third person who's better than Tim Henson is CJ straw. My guitar, the guitarist for, for trial of Ascension. He is at least as good as Tim Henson and better looking and is more responsible and doesn't have, isn't, isn't an ass. Well, he's an asshole. <laughs> CJ straw better, better. He's, he's uh, CJ straw is the Tim Henson of Reno, Nevada <laughs> of Nevada period. 
I'll put him up against Tim Tim Henson any day. Uh, Rolo just bought uh, three your three books: uh, Rational Male, Preventive Medicine, and Player's Handbook. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the time, the work, and the dedication you put into these books. Still going to buy the other two. Thank you very much. Be sure you oh you got Preventive Medicine. Good. Thank you. Uh, religion is people people love religion once they read it. I think they're kind of like pass it over because they go, "What's in this for me?" When you read it, you'll understand that it's sort of like the hidden gem of the series. Thank you for that. And, oh, why not? Here, you can have one too, Roger. The left's left's abandonment of intrinsic human values has left the right claiming exclusive ownership of them, resulting in the politicization of values and religion. Matt Walsh trying to pigeonhole the red pill with the le- with the left exemplifies this. Thank you for bringing that up. Okay, Roger, here's your fifty dollars response to that. Um, I answered this on yesterday's uh, yesterday's Rule Zero, which was on uh, Red Pill Thor's channel. And if you're not subscribed to Red Pill Thor, you really need to be. And if you have not got his new book, you really need to buy that book. Uh, I did the intro to it, so please go get it. Um, but the uh, I I would I'm gonna explain a couple things to you about Matt Walsh and the, the pigeonholing of the red pill. Okay. The number one thing that you're going to hear, and you're going to keep hearing this repeated over and over, repeat a lie often enough and becomes truth. You're going to hear this repeated over and over and over again, right? Probably up until at least the first primaries uh, or whatever, you know, and everybody knows it's going to be Trump, right? But you're going to hear this probably up until May of next year, but it's going to be the red, red pill. Bad. Virtue, virtuous, uh, what is it? Uh, traditional values guy, good, right? And so they need a, a boogeyman. And if there is no boogeyman, no one gets paid. And Matt Walsh needs a boogeyman. Well, he's not willing to say my name, but um, say my name. But he is willing to say those red pill guys, and he is more than willing to use uh, Pearl Davis as a patsy. And she's more willing, more than willing to take their money and do whatever she needs to be told to do by Daily Wire, her handlers who work for Daily Wire, who used to work for Daily Wire. And that's why you get those. And trust me, in the next, I don't know, uh, what, four or five months, maybe six months, you're going to see this repeated over and over and over again. She's going to p- p- throw out some firebomb and you're going to see a reaction to it from from Matt Walsh. You're going to see a reaction from Ben Shapiro. You're going to see a reaction from Andrew Clavin and whoever the talking head is. Then they go, there's this red pill. She's, she claims to be the red pill, Andrew Tate, the female Andrew Tate. Like fucking Pierce Morgan is already billing her as the female Andrew Tate. Matt Walsh bills her as the female Andrew Tate. I mean, if you have not seen my take on this already for the, I did it. It's only an hour and 45 minutes. I think maybe it's just under two hours. I did a whole, a whole uh, general themed, you know, takedown of, of Matt Walsh and the daily wire when it comes to all of this bullshit that they're basically, you know, making it rain for you guys. But in that I, I pointed out, there's an example I used. And I don't have it queued up, I'm sorry, but I did in that in that video, and you can see it, but in that video, I queued up this other, well, I had Glenn queue it up, was this uh, this very infamous video from 2020, by the way. And so it's during an election year, and it is a composite video, an aggregate video of all of these um, uh, daily news, like a six o'clock news is this local six o'clock news is from all these major markets around the country, right? Seattle, Washington, Los Angeles, San Francisco, uh, Portland. Uh, I'm rattling off West coast names, but like they're all over the, all over the hell, even like Tulsa, Oklahoma. Right. And if it's a syndicated six o'clock news, they're all literally reading verbatim from the same script to the point where you can overlay the audio of all of these and they all say the same thing. This is a danger to our democracy. Like it's this over and over. And they even go like, like these little teeny tiny, like uh, picture in picture type things. And they go through the whole thing and they're saying the same line. They're reading the same teleprompter, reading the same script, using the same it's neuro-linguistic programming is what it is, but it's this constant droning of the same stuff. That's exactly what Daily Wire is doing right now. 
Every one of their talking heads repeats the same talking point verbatim, and they respond to the same firebomb that that Pearl throws out there. That's why each and every single one of them, including Pierce Morgan, calls her the female Andrew Tate. The end. Prove me wrong. Some Come at me, bro. Tell me that's not happening because I have all kinds of video footage of that. I have all kinds of tweets backing that up. Come at me. I will. That's a hill I will definitely die on. But as far as the politicization is concerned, the reason why you're hearing um, what you will hear, like I said, in the future, you're going to hear people compare the red pill to being the fe- or the male version of feminism. They're both different sides of the same coin. No, they're not. You know what's the other side? You know what the, their red pill version is? That's the other side of the coin? It's whatever Pearl Davis is throwing out. That's what it is. She's the other side of that coin. It's not the red pill. It's whatever she thinks that it is, and she can't defend, and she yammers on and blathers until she gets herself in trouble. And you know what? Let me tell you something, Pearl. If you're watching this, they're going to do that until they throw your ass away, and I'm going to laugh my fucking ass off when they do that. I will do a show right here. And it'll just be it'll just be this on a continuous loop. <laughs> Trust me on that. Take that to the fucking bank. Trust me, that's good. That that show and that day is coming. They will throw you away. They will use the same techniques and the same shit once they're done with you and they've used you up. You're gone out the door. Bye bye. And you know who's going to outlast you? This guy. You know who outlasted all these other people? This guy. The, guy, the same guy that you can't get away from. <laughs> uh, much respect for you. Thank you. Okay. Um, what do you got? Anyone ever tell you you have a the voice of a classic rock radio station host? Who? Wolfman Jack. <laughs> Who would it be? Les Nesma, what, what, WKRP in Cincinnati? <laughs> that's uh, Bender. Thank you for the, that's, I take that as a compliment actually, uh, because I had a good teacher. I had a good mentor and his name was Pat Campbell and he passed away on October 20th of 2021. So we're coming up on the two year anniversary of his death and I am going to do a memorial show for him on that day, but it is October 20th is when Pat Campbell uh, passed away and he's the one who gave me this voice. So thank you. Thank you very much. You are welcome. Thank you very much. You are welcome. Uh, Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, we're going to keep going. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Pee pee. Pee pee. There you go. Pee pee. Always, always good. Here you go. How many other ones can I give you? Thank you. Thank you. Pee pee. Pee pee has, pee pee's the only guy who's so consistent he gets. He gets his own. Uh, he gets his own sound drop. I think you only pay two hundred dollars just so you can hear this. <laughs> Thank you very much. Always a pleasure, Rolo. I send you a message in Facebook Messenger and an email. Uh, sorry about the Facebook. I rarely check Facebook. Uh, and an email about a super chat that I sent on Rule Zero was meant to be for you. Um, PP, can you uh, email that to me, please? Uh, email it to me again, and I'll pick it up. Um, I don't really, I, I wish I could say I spent more time on Facebook. I, I do more promoting on Facebook than anything else. Uh, Chirac, thank you. What did you say? Uh, the question is, how much was going for JP's daughter a clout move from Tate's part? Uh, oh, from Tate's part? Uh, that's a very good question. I don't think it's a clout move from Tate, only simply because like Tate's right. Tate's got bigger fish to fry right now. I, here, okay, so if there is, let's just say for sake of argument, you're right. Uh, I think that the Tates have sort of pivoted to this whole, they're trying anyways to pivot to this wholesome, we're family guys, look at our kids. Here's my little daughter that I'd never shown you in any other video at any other point in time. Look, I got this little girl. Here's, here's this woman, here's my baby mama, whatever. Who is that? We don't even know, right? All the shit that I used to get from the Tates, all the shit that Ryan used to get, anybody who's married in rural zero, anybody who is in any way has been like sort of has had lives that same life, right? Like I'm a father. My daughter just got married. I've lived. I've been married for 27 years. I love my wife dearly. Uh, she's the one who just handed me this. Um, and, uh, you know. I don't, I don't wear her on my sleeve. She's not content and she never will be content. My daughter will never be content because there are things that I, I keep, I keep sacred, I guess, if you want to call it sacred, I keep it, I keep it private. Not my entire life is not going to be content. I refuse. Sorry. That's just like people say, well, you're an artist. How can we don't show your art and stuff like that? Because that's not content. 
I'm not, I don't care. I do it for me. I do it because I enjoy it. And if I did it as content, I would hate it. All my hobbies, like people say, oh, Rolo, what kind of Warhammer 40K armies do you play? Well, I, it'd be easier for me to list all the ones I don't play because I've played everything maybe except Necrons, right? <laughs> There's a few that I haven't played, but like, um, uh, it'd be easier for me to name the ones that I don't play. But boy, well, why don't you do a stream about that? Because it's my hobby and I enjoy it. And the minute I start making it into content, then I hate it. I have to do it instead of I want to do it. Rolo, you like to fish. How come you don't do fishing videos? Well, I do kind of. I put my fishing pictures idiotically on uh, on Instagram when I go on like deep sea fishing excursion. But I do a lot more fishing than just that. <laughs> or like, <laughs> if you really want to know, if you really want to like a slice of life video from Rolo Tomasi, go look at all the videos I did for um, when I was on my, I foolishly brought my, uh, my cell phone on my my uh, my wave runner, and I don't I do not have a, a a case that's waterproof, and I do not have one that would float. If it fell off of there, I would lose my very expensive iPhone 13. So, but it came out, it worked out right. But it was fun because there's certain things I will share with you, and certain things I'm not going to share with you. And I kind of think it's kind of disingenuous. Like I was, you know, raging about like religion and stuff. I think that's something that's personal to the individual. I don't think it's something that. I mean, if you're a pastor, if you want to just evangelize or something like that, I have more power to you. Go. But there's ways to do that. It's just not here. And so, but I'm always of the opinion that like, and I wrote this in this book, fourth book, religion, go get it on Amazon today. Here, look, you can even see, like, there's the, can you see? Like, there's the use, you, USB or the you know, code, UCB code, UBS code. Go get it. That's, I explain it in great detail why it's like, I don't, I'll talk about religion, but like people go, why don't you tell us about your faith rule? I have actually, I've been on, uh, on iron disciples and talked about it, uh, you know, a bit, but if you really want an inside in depth, you know, like what is Rolo? Rolo, you're the rational male. How can you believe in God? Well, guess what? Last chapter in here, I explained that in detail and it's much easier for me to do that there than it is for me to like take up another hour of your time to explain everything to you. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Michaela and drink. No, you, you know what you should do is every time you should drink, you should drink when she says, um, what was it? What was the one? What would be a good drinking game for her? <laughs> the red meat no one asked for. Um, no, I don't care if you <laughs> do. I give a shit. I don't care. It's good for calling out Axis Vegas. Have only 304s on the panel in 2023. One of these 304s could pretty much be any of your daughters. Yeah, they could. It could be. And you know what? You'd probably love for them to be your daughters. You know why? Because they'd be making more money than any of these. They've, they've been making more money than Michaela Peterson is right now. There's there are We have had several women on the show who make way more than she does. So if that's what it is, you know, you're not, maybe you're not going to be proud of them. <laughs> maybe you're not going to like, you know, take them to Sunday school, but yeah. They could they? Yes, they could very well be. And let's see. I've been getting into debates about body count. I can't find the source where it says men's body count has no correlation compared to women. Well, um, there's several of those. Um, I would have to go dig them up for you. I don't have any. I don't have that shit queued up right now. But uh, but yeah, I, I I love it when like Matt Walsh feels like he has to like do a corollary for like people say, well, yeah, what about men? Men if you, or or oh no, I know what it was. It was um, Macklemore. Uh, Mac Murphy, Mac and Murphy, you know, men are just as likely to divorce women if they, uh, if they have high body counts. Yeah. But the thing is, is Mac is like guys who can generate high body counts are like 4%, 4.5% of, according to the latest statistics, by the way, and I'm going to talk about statistics here and, and tell you some, a few things that you maybe are aware of and maybe you're not aware of here. But, uh, according to statistics that, yeah, yeah, you might be right. Players who can fuck a lot of girls, they might not be the best bets for being for being loyal, faithful, loving, dutiful, generous, kind, human, humane, humorous, intelligent. They're not good daddy material, but you know what? They're good fun fuck material, and every woman thinks that they're entitled to that guy, at least at some point in their lives. So... Yeah. Are they good material? Well, yeah. But considering that more women than men 
can live that lifestyle because they're just simply that's the, just how it shakes out. Yeah. Okay. Well, you got me, <laughs> but it's not even so much that it's the, what, what you, that's not even your question. Your question is like, how come, like, why is it, why, why does this work? Right? Well, because men do not have the same emotional impact or the same emotional investment in sex that women do. Don't believe me. Just go ask your sex addicted friend, go ask your, or excuse me, your porn addicted friend, go ask your porn addicted self. <laughs> Like guys don't go, oh, I'm going to jerk one out and they, they get, oh, finally nut. Right. And then they're, they're done. And then like, oh my gosh, I didn't love that girl. Oh my gosh. What's wrong with me? I'm supposed to be in love with her. Oh, what would happen if she left? And uh, what oh, we, we have babies together. Like they're not agonizing over that. They rub one out and they go down to Seven Eleven and buy a big gulp. Chicken wings, whatever the shit is. And those rollers in there. <laughs> yeah. No, we don't have the same, like women by necessity have a, have an emotional investment in, or have to have at least an emotional investment in sex to some degree. Now, can they be conditioned out of that? Absolutely. Porn stars do all the time. I talk about this with Tiffany Fox quite a bit because I'm like, well, she's like, I really enjoy sex. I'm like, I'm sure you do. <laughs> but um, the, uh, the other thing is like, I've, I've said this, I said, yeah, there's probably a, a point in time where. You had to sort of make a decision and say, well, I really enjoy sex and I'm not going to make a big deal out of it. And I'm going to have to dissociate and condition myself not to worry too much about my emotional investment. If I'm going to make pornography my vocation. So are there women who can uh, dissociate themselves from that emotional investment? Sure. Especially in the age where we have hormonal birth control and you don't have to worry so much about pregnancy. So it's, it's been made much easier in recent times. But you know, we used to, but before that, we used to call them sluts and skanks and hoes and the town bicycle, right? Now we don't, we don't, don't judge me. Don't judge me. How dare you judge me? Because they want to enjoy having sex just like a, a guy does. What do we got here? What do we got here? Hold on. Laugh my ass off when Pearl shits the bed. I have to go clean up the red pill sheets. That is me and the cleanup crew. Uh, thanks for exposing uh, Daily Wire, Walsh, Pearl, and the whole crooked clown house. Yes, this election season will be fun to watch. <laughs> Popcorn, keep it flowing, bro. Yeah, well, thank you. You know what? Here, you get one. That was a good one. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I will. And I've got a lot of plans coming up for 2024 as well, here, both here in Reno and in the Southern Command Center, Red One Studios in Las Vegas, Nevada. Num home of the number one podcast in Las Vegas, which is Access Vegas. Thank you very much. Live from Las Vegas. You know, when we were on, um, we were on uh, Access Vegas, we had a really interesting question. I almost wish I had this queued up, but we had, I had this one question about um, one of the girls had said something about how much she like. Oh, I know what it was. Um, Mike went around the went around the table, and he asked, "Okay, what?" toxic behavior does a man do that really turns you on and they all had their thing you know and we got around to this one girl carly and if you saw the show you know who carly is because she was that girl for the whole damn show and she was you know she was sober when she started but she definitely was not when she left um but she she was the girl who <laughs> she was the girl who could divest herself from emotion when she had sex right the, the act of sex was just something that she just enjoyed and that's just how it was. And so she explained that she liked to be choked. She liked to be spit on and she loved all the rough, nasty, hard ass shit that you see in porn movies. And when it's the rough sex, so she was all about that. And all of the girls around her were like, they all concur. They go, yeah, I can, that's kind of hot. I could get into that. That sounds pretty good to me. And I, I picked up on that. I, I think I put a short out on this or there, there, if it's not out yet, it probably will be soon. But I, I talked about, I, I brought this up and I, I took a, a real quick poll, an instant poll of the girls on the table. I said, okay, so there's like 10 girls at the table. And I said, how many of you girls really like exactly the same thing that she's saying? And I think all but like one of them raised their hands. And I'm like, God damn. And then I said, okay, okay, we've, we've already taken that poll. Let's take another poll. Of all you girls, when you hear this, you hear this girl t talking about how she likes to get choked out. She likes to get spit on. She likes to, you know, really rough and gagging. And you know what I'm talking about, right? You, do you think that's hot? Yes, we do. Okay. Do you think that this is normal? Do you think that she is damaged goods because she likes that? Or do you think you are damaged goods because you enjoy it too? And every last one of them was like, no, no, not at all. 
I don't think she's damaged whatsoever. Like chicks really dig that. Like they, they enjoy rough sex. And so then um, Mike Sartain brings up some stats that I have referenced a few times. And the stats were um, that by and large women prefer and seek out pornography. That is violent porn, like much like that kind of stuff. They look specifically for more what we would call violent or rough sex. It is women who search that out, not guys. And I thought that was really revealing because it, it just flies, flies, flies in the face of everything Jordan Peterson wants to talk about. Oh, women are only into that or they only fall for bad boys and, and they only go for the Tinder swindlers and the Andrew Tates when they're young and stupid and naive. But when they get to be older, they can sniff those guys out. They're not stupid anymore. And they're looking for a really good guy who's a good bet for the future. No, no, they're not. They're looking for choke on me and spit me and, and, and gag me. That's what they're still looking for, Jordan. It doesn't matter what age they are. And if you think that I'm wrong about that, I got two words for you. Tinder swindler. And this is what I said on the show that, that, that night was like, I said, in the Tinder swindler, like there's three girls that are on that show. And by the way, there's a lot more than just those three girls. But the girls that were on there, they're in their 30s. At least the youngest one was like 32 or 33, I think. She's probably older now. But this is not the young, stupid, naive, 18, 23 year old, something like your, like your, your daughter when she got knocked up. Right. These are not like dumb girls. These are, or, or like, you know, naive girls. They're girls who think their ship came in. This girl was on a private plane within 45 minutes of hooking of, of matching with this guy on Tinder, flying to Bucharest or Bosnia or something with a B in it. Belarus. I don't know. <laughs> A guy that she just met and she's like, oh, but he, he's a Mossad agent. <laughs> he's the son of a diamond merchant. <laughs> what? <laughs> and I'm watching this whole thing and I am laughing my ass off. But you're right. They're seeking this shit out. That's believable. That could happen. This could be me. I could actually do this. Oh, my God. I finally met my my ship. Is, my plane has finally come in. <laughs> And it, and you've heard me talk about this before. It's like, you know, where's their father? Where's the, where's the voice of reason and all this. And none of, by the way, she even said like, she had, she was telling her girlfriends like, Hey, I'm going to go on this plane. Like she was at least trying to seem like she was like responsible by telling her girlfriends that she was about to get on this plane. And not one of the girlfriends said, I don't think this is a good idea, dear. <laughs> oh, good. Tell us how it works out for you. <laughs> Cause they all wanted it to happen to them. <laughs> They, it's not age, Jordan. It's just the nature of the beast. It's just, was it hybristophilia? People ask me about hybristophilia. Why is it that women like really like, you know, convicted criminals? Because we talked about that as well. I said, why do women like violent criminals, like felons who are incarcerated? Why do they like Richard Ramirez? Why do they like Andres Brevik? Why do they like the, what's that guy, the kid who's the Boston Marathon bomber, that guy? Why do they like this guy? Well, because in our ancestral past, the highest form of demonstrating higher value was to kill another motherfucker. That's what it was. And that's there's still some bit in that hindbrain that says, you know what? This guy is a dangerous, dangerous person. It's everything that Jordan Peterson was just talking about when it came to uh, the dangerous guy. I'm going to show you something. This, um, this is my segue into this, by the way. Uh, as soon as I get, oh, I already got you for that one. This is my segue into this, this video that I already showed you earlier, but the video is right here. Oh, no, that's not, I don't need to share it. I need to go and get the video. There we go. So I already showed you this once before, but I just want to show you the first half of this because I have some, th this is the uh, more to the point with dangerous men and high, because people ask me about hybristophilia. They also talked about, we're going to also talk about alpha widows here because that is actually the topic for today's show. Um, but I'm going to show you, you have to know a little bit about hybristophilia and you have to little, know a little bit about the beauty and the beast uh, narrative that, uh, that actually Jordan Peterson made a pretty decent case for in this one. Uh, oh, it's this one right here. The very first part of this. Here we go about Beauty and the Beast, and I do think that's the best Disney movie ever made, was that it's a real female hero myth. I mean, the woman, Beauty, is beautiful, so she's high up in the female dominance hierarchy, but she's witty and well-read and intelligent and adventurous and brave and courageous and truthful, mm -hmm. all of that. And she doesn't fall for Gaston, the psychopathic persona. And young women are much more likely to fall for men like that, by the way, than, than women who are slightly more 
uh, um, what would you say? Yeah. yeah. Okay. We know for a bloody fact that this is false, but. Wiser, wiser. So they'll fall for dark triad men, and that's partly how psychopathy propagates itself across the generations. Mm -hmm. right? They can be enticed by psychopathic personas, but she prefers the beast. Mm -hmm. Now, did you notice, like, I, I'll, I'll let him continue here, but did you notice this is like his mentality is that women are wonderful. Women would never get like given like everything being above board, women would make the best choice. They wouldn't go with Gaston. They would go with like the, the beast who they have to tame to become a prince. Right. They would. If, if you if you just let women like have free reign, just like take the leash off of them and let them do their own thing, that they will always make the best decision. It's men, it's horrible, horrible men who are deceiving these women. These women, they're psychopaths, right? They're Machiavellian. They're they're dark triad personalities, right? Uh, sociopath, psychopath. What, what's the other one? Psychopath, psychopathy, uh, Machiavellianism, and uh, narcissism. The, they're all those guys. Yeah, women only get those when they don't know well enough. Because if they're smart and you give them enough time, then they'll always make the best decisions. No, no, they don't, Jordan. They don't do that. Go watch Tinder Swindler. Seriously, go look at it. Go look at the highest. Go look at the incidences of hybristophilia. Only women get hybristophilia. Men do not get hybristophilia. Women get hybristophilia. Okay. That's the love for felons and dark triad personalities and convicted criminals. In some cases, they're murderers and rapists too. It's like, well, the beast is the adventure. It's like, well, it's this terrible man, you know, like he's, he's rough. He's unhewed. He's, he's, but he's got potential, right? And that's what really attracts her. And she wants someone who can guard the walls and make a safe haven for the children, but who's generous enough to who's productive enough to be useful and generous enough to share. Mm -hmm. And so she civilizes him. I hesitate to talk about Andrew Tate because I don't that know that much about him. Right. That is absolutely not what it's about. And I'm about to prove it to you. You guys are going to love this. This is I, I've been wanting to do this for a while, but I'm going to make the case because it's already been made for me several times in several years earlier. I'm going to make the case that Belle from Beauty and the Beast, Belle, should have married Gaston, not the beast should have married, but because women left to their own devices, and I'm going to use Jordan Peterson's logic to prove this to you because left to their own devices. And if they were making the best decisions and they had full knowledge of, of all the factors and all the variables that Jordan seems to think they magically know somehow, once they hit like, Oh, I don't know, 29, 30, 31 years old, that he should somehow be able to do that. What do you got here, Mark? Uh, Marty Mart, uh, I've noticed Peterson doesn't really understand the other side of hypergamy. No, he does. He just doesn't talk about it. He's stuck on the beta bucks as if that's all there is. Maybe it's because he never gamed women in his younger days. He's never gamed a woman in his life. Would you like me to explain that to you? Because I will be happy to. Um, you are correct, though. Uh, yeah, there is no experience. Yeah, there's no lived experience. He has no frame of reference for anything that he's talking about. And I'm about to prove <laughs> funny, funny. You should say that I'm about to prove to you why Bell should have married Gaston because if everything was above board and we knew everything, we looked at everything from a sort of a narrative perspective, Gaston is a, uh, the beast is a Spurg. He's an incel. He's in fact, he's not even an incel. He's a dangerous self-loathing self teeth gnashing incel if you think about it why do i say that well the the work's already been done for me and i'm about to read you that this was a while ago and probably most of my audience has never even seen this before but this is fun it's funny as hell when you think about it but here's the here's the uh this is actually an atlantic article is it the atlantic no it's the observer article why bell should have chosen gaston okay this is a powerpoint presentation now remember this is from back in 2017 uh, if you're wondering where the hell I got this, I actually did a show on this with my my mentor, God rest his immortal soul, uh, Pat Campbell. And we, we talked about this before. And the reason why I wanted to talk about it now is because it flies in the face of everything that Jordan Peterson has been talking about with respect to Andrew Tate. Okay. So let me get this out of here. Why Bell should have chosen Gaston, a PowerPoint presentation by me. Uh, I forget who the name chick, the chick was, Dana Schwartz. Meet Gaston. <laughs> Gaston, very strong muscles, great hunter, will be good at providing for you in uh, 18th century France. <laughs> Ready to commit, wants kids, lots of friends, very popular, great singing voice. All of this garnered from his singing debut in the very beginning of the movie. This is the Beast. The Beast is very moody, tried to kidnap your dad and lock him up forever. 
will yell at you for looking at a flower because he never explains the flower until later on. Uh, no friends, only hangs out with people he pays. <laughs> yeah, the the animated uh, furniture and and uh, and appliances. Uh, no friends, only hangs out with people he pays. Doesn't have a job. Lazy, <laughs> lazy trust funder. Doesn't know how to eat with a spoon. Was uh, was not hospitable to the enchantress, and then was not hospitable to Maurice. Did not lean. Did not learn his lesson. Okay. Side by side, here's the comparison. Gaston can get an entire tavern singing with him. Beast never sings with people. He is no fun. <laughs> On a first name basis with everyone. Uh, that's Gaston. Uh, the Beast makes everyone call him master. Gaston comes up with fun evil scheme. Fun evil schemes. The Beast couldn't scheme his way out of a paper bag. Gaston is a working man, and the Beast, eventually, as we find out, is a bourgeois pig. <laughs> Historical context based on clothes, weaponry, beauty, clothes and weaponry. Beauty and the Beast, 1991, takes place mid 18th century. 2017 version mentions Gaston came back from a fighting in a war, most likely the Seven Years War. Ergo, Gaston is a war veteran. Seven Years War ended in 1763, so let's put the action in 1764. What happens in France at the end of the 18th century? Now we're, we're splitting hairs. Answer, yes, the French Revolution. Uh, let's estimate that Bell spent about one year with the Beast before marriage, based on weather in 1990, with the 1991 version, going from summer to snow to summer for their wedding. 1764, Bell marries the prince. 1788, Royal Treasury Fund is officially declared empty. <laughs> April 1789, riots in the Revelion uh, wallpaper factory. 25 workers dead. June 28th, 1789, the third estate takes the tennis court oath vowing to give France a new constitution. Timeline, July 14th, 1789, the storming of the Bastille. October 5th, 1789, the fishwives march on the palace, furious that they cannot afford bread while Belle and the prince happily munch on the gray, on gray stuff. <laughs> Armory is ransacked. One of the sexiest triplets that Belle has uh, used to roll her eyes out uh, has beheaded a guard and she brandishes his head on a pike. <laughs> Belle and the prince are forced by the angry crowd to return with them to Paris. Timeline, 1791. Bell and the prince will attempt to flee to France. 1793, we see the, the trial and execution of the prince. <laughs> uh, 1793, the reign of terror begins. 17, or 18, October 1793, Bell is convicted of, and guillotined. <laughs> By 1794, Gaston is a Muscadin, a street fighter of the Thermidorian reaction. Uh, well dressed, lower middle class, wielding a stick and wearing a uh, wearing musk perfume. Gaston doesn't need musk perfume. Remember, his entire body is covered with hair. You know, it's funny. We're supposed to like think that that's really gross, but then you think about this: the beast is has way more hair than Gaston does. <laughs> Gaston, once again, Bell's choice. Gaston, working member of the third estate, the prince, lazy absentee royal who abandoned his people. <laughs> Uh, Gaston eats many eggs to help him stimulate the French economy. Uh, the prince eats wasteful magical feasts while his citizens cannot pay for bread. Uh, interested in home decor? Has decorative antlers. Uh, attractive hairy chest. Looks Looked more handsome as a beast. <laughs> and there you have it. <laughs> the end. Okay, that's the, histor the stupid historical way of, 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 of pointing that out. I thought that was pretty funny. Anyways, the uh, if you go and you have the... Uh, the you, you didn't come for the history lesson, but you got the history lesson today. Um, no, the, uh, the 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 funnier part of this is that Gaston is actually a better choice because when you think about the sort of if you look at the the beast in the beginning of that movie, he's a narcissist. He is a narcissist. He yells for no reason. He's just he's he's uncouth. He essentially, I mean, you got to remember that the reason why Bell goes to the castle in the first place is because the beast kidnaps her dad. <laughs> And he's like this pensive, brooding, you know, son of a bitch who was cursed because people hated him so much. But you know what's interesting is like, is Gaston is a better choice from the perspective that he's he's far more sociable. And he's, you know, maybe he's not as you know well read 
right? Maybe it's not, not about books and everything. Of course, they're trying to, what the, really the thing about Beauty and the Beast is it tries to paint the masculinity, two, two sides of masculinity. One is the beast that, and, and the beast, and Jordan Peterson's not wrong about this. The beast is, um, it, he does represent a, a, a male archetype that women love to think that they can civilize. It's Tarzan, right? Tarzan and Jane, Tarzan, the ape man, right? He lives in the jungle. He's raised by apes or raised by wolves or whatever. He's just this complete animal. And it takes a beautiful woman like Jane to go in there, clean him up, put him in a suit, teach him how to use a fork, teach him how to, you know, how to a proper etiquette. And uh, what is it? Uh, Tarzan, Lord of Greystoke. Remember that movie? Like that, if you look at that's that's nothing. Like Tarzan, the original Tarzan is really a romance novel. It's not a, it's not Tarzan the Ape Man. It's not like Pulp Fiction like it used to be when like Edgar Rice Burroughs wrote it. They, they turned Tarzan into, oh my gosh, he's, he's, he's got long hair. Oh my goodness. And he's, he's sad. He's a savage that needs to, he's, he's basically the alpha, he is the archetype, the alpha male archetype that cannot be tamed. And that is exactly what Andrew Tate is to Michaela Peterson, which is why in 2023, we're still talking about this shit today. She can't, she is the guy, she is an alpha widow. What is an alpha widow? An alpha widow is a woman who can't get over that alpha guy that she couldn't lock down. Sometimes there's more than one. And I've, I've, I've done episodes on alpha. I haven't touched on alpha, being an alpha widow in a long time. So I, this kind of gave me the opportunity. Here's the, here's the pill that's stuffed in the cheese. Okay. Here's your pill today. Here's your, here's your nutritional value of today. Michaela Peterson is an alpha widow. The fact that she's not wearing her wedding ring and looking nervous, sheepish, and almost like blushing when she's being asked and she's, you know, tell me about Andrew Tate, right? I am sure there's a lot of stuff that's on the cutting room floor of the Daily Wire right now that we will never see because it's just too much. It's just too embarrassing. It's just too, it, 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 there's too many tells in it. But when you look at the way she treats her present husband and you look at the way she still moons and, and gushes over, well, I don't say gushes, but like the way she still kind of like, she hates him, but she loves him. And that's one of the things that when women become alpha widows, when there's the one that got away, uh, I don't know if you're, I know it's, uh, God forbid, I'm, I'm going to need to listen to Slayer after I tell you this, but like there's that one song by um, Katy Perry called the one that got away. You want a, 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 a lyrical story of an alpha widow. That's it. And by the way, she was literally an alpha widow. She was pining for another dude. Um, when she was married, she was still pining for the dude. And she wrote that song. I don't know if she's even still, was she married? She's still married now or not. I'm not really sure. Or she was going to get married and it never worked out. I can't remember, but she would literally go on stage and say, like, call out this guy's name and go, ha, see, I'm more successful than you. You, I'm the one that got, got, got away. You should have stuck with me kind of thing. And it's like, but she's still pining for that guy. Was it Russell Brand? Maybe it was Russell Brand. Um, yeah, I guess they did, didn't they? Russell Brand and Katy Perry. Um, but the, um, the, the dynamic of the alpha widow is really what Michaela is dealing with right now. I told, I, in, even in that, I didn't, I didn't pull this clip from my interview with her, but I told her, I said, look, you know, you're getting, she was just about to turn 30. Uh, in 2022, she was going to turn 30. And I, and people will, lo they love this clip. They, they're, they love throwing this back in my face and I'm about to throw it back in your fucking face right now because I said, she's doomed. I, I didn't say she was doomed. She said, so I'm doomed. I'm not going to be able to get married, blah, 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 blah. She knew she was going to get married. She had already been proposed to by like Jordan Fuller at that time. And so she was, she knew what she was going to do. She was going to go and make these clips about like Rolo said, I'm doomed, but look, here's my beautiful, beautiful wedding. Look at me, look at me, look at me. Right. And if you've ever seen her wedding pictures, I mean, it looks like something that was very high ticket. I know it was in like uh, Half Moon Bay, I want to say is where it was. And I think her dad officiated over it. I'm pretty sure. But like there's like, I mean, it's, I have some, I think I might have some of the Instagram shots of that somewhere. But uh, if you've ever seen her her wedding pictures, it's, she was actually on Bride Magazine or some shit like that. I don't know where, what, what were the magazine cover was for it. It was like this fairy tale wedding. And then she's married to this guy who will never be as exciting as the bad boy who rocked her world that she's still talking about with dear old dad today. Hey, would you want to talk to him? Wink, wink, nod, nod. Oh, look, I'm not going to wear my wedding ring on this interview. Oh, this wedding ring? Yeah. 
People want to say, oh, well, she had another one on her right hand. Yeah, not that one, dude. Now, now, you, now you see it. Now you don't. Oh, who else did this? Pulled this off uh, this uh, quick, uh, this magic trick. Oh, that's right. Lauren Southern did as well. Yes. That's what these people do. That's their level. This is the level of fucking ingenuity. This is, this is how real these fucking people are. This right here to this right here. Unless what that was in 2022, this is 2023 Unless in about a year, just about a year. Boom, boom, boom. In before it's out for cleaning. <laughs> you know, it's not out for cleaning this woman's ring. The, the defense rests, Your Honor. Anyways, the, getting back to the Alpha Widow uh, point, uh, the the idea is this, and and so I was just asked earlier in the in this in a super chat, as a matter of fact, about promiscuity and you know having more partners. Is are you more prone to to uh, are you more prone to divorce? Blah blah blah. And we can have that discussion. I can, we've I've had that discussion so many times. I don't even do I need to really cover it again. I don't think so, but. Uh, I mean, I will if you want me to really do it, but the um, the really the reason like people say, well, why is it important that why, why why is a high body count for a woman important? Why do guys obsess over the high body count? You know, you know, you weren't the first one to put plant a flag on the moon, right? And yes, there is a flag planted on the moon. <laughs> you can see it with a telescope. It's not graphic design or it's not computer graphics. Mike Sartain. Frodo stole her ring. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. That was good. That was that was good. Wait. Hold on. That was the wrong one. There you go. I know it's two dollars. I know I said I wouldn't read it, but that was too good not to read. Um. <laughs> my precious. <laughs> I got the ring. I got the ring. <laughs> There's your clip. <laughs> you know who has his ring on? Me, bitch. I still have my ring on. Twenty-seven years later. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, guy, you're freaking God, goddamn right. <laughs> yeah, you know who still has his ring on? This month. This guy. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. So, anyways. Um, God, where was I? Oh, the, the Alpha Widow thing. So, she's got this, you know, she has this big wedding and everything, but she still is still talking about Andrew Tate Sands' wedding ring. Why? Is there something we need to know, Michaela? I will I'll throw the, here. Here's your clip, uh, Nick. I my guy, Nick. Here's your clip. Michaela, are you still married? It's uh, let's see. It's no. Well, no, it's October 1st, October 1st. By the way, the 10th year anniversary of the rational man. Um, uh, hey, baby, are you still married? Did it? Are you doomed? Did it blow up in your face? Oh, Lord, Rolo, you just want to gloat over there. Oh, you're goddamn, you're goddamn right. Say my name. Well, you're goddamn you're right. goddamn right. Yeah, I'm here I am. I'm here for it. I'm with, I'm, fuck that pill. I want the cheese. <laughs> yes. Tell me. We want to know. Are you still, are you, are you still happy? Are you still in it? Is it still, like, is Jordan still hey, holding your hand and calling, oh, my gosh, my wife. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Is he still doing, uh, is he still doing, um. Uh, where did it go? Oh, is he still vacuuming? <laughs> I'll tell you who wouldn't be doing this. Andrew Tate. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be mean. You're going to get yours too. Oh, no, I'm not. I've got mine. Plum. I got mine in spades. Thank you very much. And yes, I did get a new, a new uh, noble rocker seat. Finally, somebody suggested that like, cause I've mentioned I needed a new one. It's pretty good too. I like it. Lumbar support really works well. Um, it's supposed to be really good for like gaming, I guess. I don't do much gaming, but I do do a lot of writing. I do do, I do do, I do do a lot of writing here. Uh, yeah. Uh, are we, is it still marital bliss? There's that, that way. There's a wedding ring. It made it an appearance. Why isn't it in this one? It's out for cleaning Rolo. <laughs> I, uh, you know, maybe I shouldn't laugh. I feel bad for, for Jordan. Like, like uh, Michaela can go do Michaela things. Jordan's the one I really, uh, Jordan, really, I'm, I don't mean to like to, to be pissy with you or anything like that. I'm, I'm sure he, I'm sure Jordan Fuller entered into all of this with the best of intentions, but we're still calling Michaela Peterson, Michaela Peterson. I changed my name. No, you really didn't. <laughs> it's Fuller. 
I would like to see if it's actually legally full, or maybe it is, but she's we still know her as Michaela Peterson. Uh, was it Piers Morgan introduced her as Michaela Peterson? She still t- calls herself and has the Michaela Peterson show. So, sorry, poor Jordan. You know what, Jordan? Let me tell you something. Here, I'm, you know, I don't, I don't usually, I don't want to be your enemy. I don't, I hate being guys' enemies, right? I don't want, I don't want that. But I'll tell you this, Jordan. Tell you what, once the divorce is final, assuming that's where it's going, but once the divorce is final, you come to Vegas. You come on Access Vegas. I will make you the, you don't have to like be with the hoe, the bitches and hoes. I know how you're, I know you religiously what you're about, but if you want to come to Vegas and you want a fresh start, please come to, come to Access Vegas. We'll put you on, we'll make you the, I will, I will personally make you the male guest on Access Vegas and we'll get you into men of action and we'll talk to you and we'll, we'll cater it to your liking. I don't have to, I don't want to be a dick about it, but Jordan, if, if push comes to shove, just know I'm here for you. And a lot of other guys are here for you too. I don't think, here's a, the, the thing about me is like, I think that a lot of guys think that I hate on blue pill guys or like, oh, well, you were married to Michaela, so there must be something wrong with you. No, no. Let me explain something to you. This woman right here, I've been talking to her ex for all, for almost a year now, talking about how she can, uh, how he can like get uh, his parental alienation case put through internationally. I, my heart went out to this guy, such as it is my black and horrible, evil, demonic black heart went out to him. Same thing with uh, with Jordan Fuller, man. I'm I'm here for you, man. You, you let me know, and me and Mike and everybody else, we got your back, man. Because you have a whole there's a whole community that will have your back. I trust me on this one. You know, I'm not going to steer you wrong, <laughs> but I do that. No. So there you go. See, I give and I give and I give. I'm a humanitarian at heart, if you think about it. <laughs> yeah, man. Best of luck to him. You God, you know you're God. You're yeah. goddamn right. Best of luck to him. Because you married an alpha widow. And I think that that's probably one of the reasons why she really wanted to clear the air with me back in what, November, December of uh, 2021, because she knew it was coming up. She knew she was going to marry him. I don't think she's ever really been into it all that much. She like fights with that guy. Like if you listen to how she liked to, I don't, I mean, there's up to a point where I just, I just gave up on it, but I have people like who will send me, um, will send me like videos or those like the only reason I knew that she had done this video with her father was because I had all these people on Instagram, like, you know, keeping me up, up to date on all this to please do. Cause I'm blocked by her. And even if I wasn't, I probably wouldn't pay attention to it now. But, um, but again, I, it's not even about her. It's about Jordan Fuller. I would, I, he's the guy I'm mostly concerned with because you're putting up with this autistic bitch, dude. And, and she's, not wearing a wedding ring and she's, you know, pining over her, over the guy who possibly could be going to prison for quite some time. Now he's now he wants to talk about how, here's what's going to be interesting in the future. Let's just, okay. Just speculation, speculation here. I'm not saying this is going to happen. I don't hope this will happen. I hope, I hope Andrew and Tristan beat the rap. I don't know that that's going to be the case, but let's just say I, I I'm always hoping for a better outcome. I do actually believe in hope. I know I'm not supposed to, but, um, but let's just say for sake of argument that they go to prison for quite some time. Do you think, who wants the over under bet that Michaela Peterson will then become the hybristophilia chick for the, 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 the ride or die girl. I'm going to try to break him out of prison girl for the Tates (laughs) or some sort of functional equivalent for that. I would, I would say that there's going to be some sort of like manifested functional equivalent of hybristophilia for her if Andrew Tate goes to jail. 100%? 100%. Yeah, Sneeko too. Is Sneeko going to jail? Sneeko's not going to jail. Oh, you think Sneeko will be a hybristophilia? Yeah, you're probably right about that. <laughs> yes, Sneeko will get hybristophilia for Andrew Tate when he's in a Romanian prison. Oh my God. No, I, again, I don't hope that happens. I, this is not an opinion. This is not me speculating one way or the other. I'm just, I'm just, this is a hypothetical. I know it's dangerous to do thought experiments, but there you have it. I think she probably would because the alpha widow is the one that got away. The alpha widow is the guy is the Tarzan is the beast that the woman cannot tame. If bell can't tame the beast, she becomes an alpha widow. 
She becomes an alpha widow. And I'll tell you the other thing, the other story, the other aspect of the beauty and the beast uh, dynamic, the, 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 the reason why that's a, f- a fun story and it's still a kid's story and it's a Disney story is because it's based on archetypes. In this case, masculine archetypes. And they wanted to make Belle out to be this very intelligent. She reads a lot of books. She spends a lot of time at the library, in fact, in the in the movie. And that's one of the points of contention between her and Gaston. Because he's like looking at the books. Like, oh, what's this book? Well, I don't know. How do you read a book? Like that's how they that's how they want you to think of that particular type, that toxic masculinity. Because that's really what he is. He's an archetype for toxic masculinity. Whereas the beast. And I don't know why Jordan Peterson just doesn't simply say that Andrew Tate is an archetype for toxic masculinity, because if you're going to make the comparisons between, like, say, someone like Andrew Tate and Beast and Gaston, then you might as well say that that Andrew Tate is a an archetype of toxic masculinity. He's, he's a danger. He's a monster. He literally calls him a monster. I, I didn't call him a monster. All you war room guys who want to come at me, go after fucking Jordan Peterson. He's the one calling your boy a monster. Why don't you go and jump on his ass? Oh, fuck Rolo. He's, he doesn't have any receipts. Well, apparently my receipts are better than even Andrew Tate's because our receipts are supposed to be wives and kids now. Guess who wins that fucking contest? This guy. The phrase that goes along with Alpha Widow is, I ruined her for all men. Yeah, I licked the ice cream. You're right. That's, the, that's a Hafizism, I'm sorry to say. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I ruined her for all other men. Yeah. You know, it's funny. Like, I, you, if, I, if I have women who are like, like in Vegas go, Hey man, I, I don't know how you are about it, but like, I'd really like to fuck. I'm not going to, I'm not doing that. I am no, never going to cheat on my wife, but, but even if I did, I would ruin you for all other men ever after. <laughs> That's what I should say. That's what I should lead with. Huh? Um, because it's like the, the alpha widow or the alpha that is, that women are widowed from, is an archetype. It's an ideal. That guy's an ideal. And it's, it's a hundred percent worse if that woman actually has a shot at that ideal and fails at it. She had a shot at taming the beast, but the beast would not, he wasn't marriage minded. He, we couldn't lock him down. Jordan or excuse me, Justin Waller, you're not going to lock him down. He's not going to play by your rules. Lila Rose, because that's not how he's built. He even said, "Ah, that's not how I'm built. Your standard is we, we ought to be playing to the correct notion that women ought to be it ought to be close on his end and close on her end, blah, 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 blah. And you should do everything and be a good servant leader for your wife, because if mama ain't happy, God ain't happy. Fuck that. That's not how it works in Christianity or any other religion that I know of. And it also doesn't work for Jordan or excuse me, Justin Waller. So the the alpha that you're widowed from is the guy you couldn't lock down, the one that got away. It's even worse if the guy's actually somebody who died and then he's literally a widow at that point. But the, um, the archetype is the guy that she pines for and she marries the guy who's just sort of good enough, but she just can't get over that one guy. And you want another movie example for this? Look no further than Titanic. Titanic is not about Jack and Rose and, you know, intrigue and, you know, arist- aristocracy and all, you know, the, all the t- you know, the ship's going to sink. It hits the iceberg. Got it. Spoiler alert. Okay. We know, but it's not about that. It's about women, the way that women love. It's about the way it's about the alpha widow dynamic. Jack who went down to the bottom of an icy grave in the sea, at the bottom of the ocean. He's literally, she Rose is literally widowed from Jack. Jack was the perfect lover. Jack was an artist. He was a happy go lucky, plucky old guy who just pulled himself up. He was lower class. He wasn't an or an aristocrat, but man, she was a, a, an aristocratic woman. And so therefore, but she fell in love with a commoner. It's the princess who falls in love with the pauper. But the pauper is an alpha or functionally equivalent of an alpha male of the time, right? And he's he's got he's got the whole package. He's cute. He's a Leonardo DiCaprio, for fuck's sake, right? As, as, how old was he in that? Like in his teens or his like early 20s? Um, but at the end of that movie, Rose is 100 years old. And the last, I've, I, the reason I know this is because I, re, I have written several essays about this, the difference between how men love and how, concepts of love, right? But at the end of that movie, you have this panning shot 
of all of her life, the photos of things. She brings them with her on the boat, right? We're going to go and investigate and see if we can find the bottom of the ocean and see if we can find the, uh, the unsinkable Molly Brown, whatever her name. Like they're going to try to find the, 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 they find the Titanic at the bottom of the ocean. And that's sort of like the, the impetus for it. But she brings all of her pictures with her and knows she's going to die. And her last dying act is not an act of appreciation for the husband she married that gave her the life of being like Amelia Earhart because she's like flying airplanes and she's lived still lives an aristocratic lifestyle. She rides in horses, English horses, right? English horse, English style horses. She's got all of these other accomplishments and kids and grandchildren and everything else. She's lived this fantastic, wonderful life that Jack tells her to live before he slips away and falls into the bottom of the ocean and dies instead of climbing on the plank with her because there's probably plenty of space for them up there and they have this big oh my god i let you go you know and then so the last act of that movie is her taking literally the diamond that they were all trying to get you know and she drops it to the bottom of the ocean and that's her soul going down to the guy her soulmate the guy that she was really supposed to be with the one who got away literally slipped away down to the bottom of the ocean and now they live forever in the ballroom, dancing on the on the ballroom of the Titanic. The end. That's the female love dynamic. That is the alpha widow dynamic. Fucking who cares about the guy that like funded her entire lavish, luxurious lifestyle, who gave her kids, who gave her grandchildren, probably great grandchildren, too. Right. No, I'm going to take the heart of the sea and drop it down to the guy I just can't fucking get over. The end. Yeah. <laughs> like Looney Tunes. Um, I love being called a narcissist because I've taken in what you and Aaron, Aaron Clary, Cappy, Captain Capitalism, not a homosexual. Uh, have talked about on red pill uh, on red pill. Uh, love the work, love the work. Uh, I read all your books, please. Oh, really? Then if you love the work, please suggest them to other people <laughs> available on Amazon. Um, all your books on deployments. Oh, awesome. Thank you for your service, sir. Um, thanks to you and Aaron and my family. I won't ever get married. Thanks. Well, do have good relationships do have good relationships with women, do have fall in love with women, have long-term relationships. If marriage is not in the cards because you do, it's because you don't like the way that we do it, fine. That doesn't preclude you from having relationships. Just because you're not into marriage does not mean you shouldn't have relationships. Uh, you're my favorite guy, Rolo, even though you don't get no hoes, man. Who said that? Who said that? I mean, well, sometimes you don't get no hoes, man. I know how it is. And... Huh. Michaela Peterson claims you're totally wrong and don't know what you're talking about. Five minutes before turning around, proving you're right. Yes. Well, oh, it gets even better than that, though, my friend. I'll explain to you what I mean here in just a second, because there's one final like cherry on top of today's show that I'm a, it's another pill that's shoved into cheese, <laughs> the cheese tax. Uh, but I do want to point out that the the I, I get this quite a bit. So there are two dynamics and people seem to think that they are some, somehow opposed to one another. The first one is the dynamic of the alpha widow. And the other one is the war brides dynamic. And I've read, I've, I've written uh, a couple of essays about the difference between those two, because it seems like they, sorry, I have to, I'm, I'm weird. Sometimes I have to like sit Indian style. It's just weird. Um, <laughs> keep my blood flowing. Um, but the, uh, the, there's the so the the let's just re, to review the, uh, the class this is a pod class the to review the uh the alpha the alpha widow concept is the guy that is the beast right that can't be tamed he's the one that got away he's the hot guy in the foam cannon party in Can cancun on spring break and when she was in college and she just can't he he fucked her and he like she enjoys fucking him but he's never gonna be he's never gonna be dad material He's never going to be boyfriend material. He just simply is not because like he can, he can afford to be shared by other women. And I, mean, I think more and more women are starting to like realize that's the case. Like the uh, Pookie Pook once said that um, uh, it was Pook who said that women would rather share a successful hot alpha guy than be saddled with a beta loser than be saddled with a guy who's just this faithful beta loser. It's preferable to be with an alpha guy 
and like try to, and share him with other men or with other men, with other, hopefully not other men, with other women in the hopes that she can lock him down at some future point and that he'll magically somehow see something in her. And maybe he'll get to the point in life where he matures enough that he wants to fall in love with her. And that never really happens. That's the alpha alpha widow. Now, now what is war brides? The war brides dynamic is this, is that women would tend to fall in love with their captors. Okay. And that was the, 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 I'm going to, in a nutshell, it's uh, in our evolutionary past, tri intertribal warfare. Uh, all the men and all the boys would be killed. All the older women, all the women who'd known a man would be killed. This is actually in the old Testament even. And the women who were virgins or who had not the, the, the desirable fertile females would be taken as spoils of war and integrated into the, the conquering tribe. Right? So the theory, the hypothesis, the theory goes that women who are, um, more able to let go of their prior attachments to their children and their men, their men folk and everything else. And they would be more survivable in their new situation where they were taking a spoils of war and integrated into the, the conquering tribe and their, and the collective of women that are there. That's why women tend to be more collectivist and more communitarian than men who are tend to be more hierarchical. Right? So, uh, and, and the, again, that's as a function of survivability. It's either you, you you develop some sort of like psychological mechanism for Stockholm syndrome or else you die. And meaning that uh, loyalties towards tribe are preempted by loyalties towards uh, offspring and survivability for women because women have one intrinsic value. They can incubate the next generation. So a lot of people will say, well, if that's the case, Rolo, then why is it that women can so easily get over a guy but yet they'll pine for an alpha male. And my answer to that is that they usually will. So if there's a woman who is really a ride or die girl who is with her man and that man is killed by another by a conquering tribe, however that plays out, it could be an army, it could be whatever, he's killed, that woman has two choices. She can either be killed herself or she can join the tribe as a spoil of war for the conquering tribe. Most women will join the tribe because it's just simply simple survivability, right? But there are women who will say, you know what, screw it. He was the best that there could be. And I don't, I don't, I, I will just, I will die rather than, than give up my man. Like the Spartans, right? I would rather die than give up my man, right? Then those, they didn't go on to reproduce anymore. <laughs> and so over the course of history, more women who could develop Stockholm syndrome as a mechanism and an adaptation for survivability, they became more prevalent because they were the ones who survived and not the ones who like had a ride or die mentality. Now we live in the 20th and 21st century, and now we don't have to worry so much about that. So the natural inclinations become what they are. So are there like when I talk, when guys ask me, one of, one of the reasons why I came up with the war brides dynamic theory um, was because so many guys were saying, Rolla, why is it that women can get over men so quickly after a breakup? And there's two reasons for that. One is what I just said, the war brides dynamic, which is the Stockholm syndrome. And it's like, it's this necessity. It's like a, a hindbrain thing. Women are solipsistic and it, it kind of plays into the solipsism, the innate, you know, subconscious solipsism, but that's neither here nor there. The idea that, um, that women need to, they need to find a new mate to survive is still something that's part of the female psyche, the human female psyche. Men don't understand this because we don't have to worry about that. We either die or we live. <laughs> um, but the, uh, that, so that's, that's dynamic. Number one, that's consideration. Number one, uh, consideration. Number two is you've got to also consider that like when women are ride or die women, um, they're doing so because like that guy, like they have a much harder time getting over a guy who was a really good catch. They have a much, that's why they pine for the alpha. That's how they become alpha widows because that guy represents the idea or the ideal that she could have had or hoped that she could have had. Uh, you can just go to hell, dude. Bye. Um, so when you are when so when you look and you say that well there must be some sort of conflict between those two there's really not because it's all it's all depends on what the priorities are if a woman is attached to a guy who is a faithful loser who is the beta guy well losing that guy is not that big a deal to a woman who already probably think because most for the most part women are the ones who break up with men sometimes i'm not saying it doesn't happen the other way around it does 
but very rarely. And usually the, the men who break up with women are higher value than the woman they're breaking up with. They will usually be like, or at least perceptually to them, like Justin Waller would probably have no trouble breaking. And I know, I know, cause I've seen it happen has no problem breaking up with a woman because he knows he's going to get laid by the next girl who comes by and puts a, a phone number in front of him, which also I've seen happen. He knows he has options. He knows he has opportunities. It's much easier for a guy who is the top four and a half percent of alphas to break up with a woman than it is for a woman to break up with a guy like, like uh, who's a represents the apex of alpha maleness, right? That's probably not going to happen. So because there's the ratio, the ratio imbalance, if the, if Justin Waller is a nine and he's like banging eights and sevens, the eights and sevens, they're on their best behavior because they're like, uh, you know, but they say, well, they don't have, they don't have self-esteem. No, they do. But you're going to see that that's going to be manifested in their, uh, in their behaviors. So women are loathe the idea. They want to be the one. They want to get the rose. They want the ring. They want to be the baby mama. They, they really want, and I know the baby mama, but they don't want to lose out on the best thing that they ever could get. For men who are in a state of sexual deficit, the best thing they, they could ever get is whoever fucked them most recently. Wherever, because most 80% of guys are betas, right? And if they that beta male gets laid, it's his world collapses if he can't like maintain that and he'll do anything and pedestalize that woman. That's why there's this sort of innate pedestalization for most guys when it like we, they hold women to this just high, high standard, right? They, or I mean, they, they praise women, they lift women up to that high, high standard. They pedestalize them. That's what we call it. Pedestalization. Men will do that innately. That's not even a learned behavior. That's just that's just practicality. It's just deductive logic for most guys because most guys live in a state of sexual deficit. So if you're not, if you don't know when your next meal's coming from, the meal that you just had, you you this is the best fucking cracker I've ever had in my fucking life. I can't believe this is so amazing. This cracker, holy shit! I didn't even know they made crackers like this. But it's just a fucking cracker, right? It's not filet mignon. But you don't know that because if you're starving in the desert, that fucking cracker looks pretty fucking good. So yeah, and yes, I'm stealing that from uh, was it crack? no uh, uh, Eddie Murphy. <laughs> what do you got here? Uh, can woman can women be alpha widowed from a superior beta bucks side of hypergamy man? No, or only Giga Chads. Okay, stop, stop, stop saying Giga Chad. Stop thinking in absolutes. Everything you just said is an absolute. If you see things in absolutes, if you see it, there's only Giga Chad and there's only doormat beta male alpha beta male dude, you're in the wrong, you're in the wrong classroom, my friend. Oh, they only go for Giga Chad. No, no, they don't. Remember, most women aren't gonna get with Justin Waller. And most women aren't going to get with like the do the doormat beta male out. There's always, it's always a, a, a gradation in between women who understand their own sexual market value. Yeah. If, if they can get that, then they, that they'll stick with that. Right. But stop thinking in terms of superior beta. What's superior? What is superior beta? The guy who has a lot of money, the guy who is superior. Okay. So what would his superior beta be? He'd be the guy who's like, he's the best father in the world. He's the most emotionally supportive. He's in touch with his feelings. He goes to church on Sunday. He's a leader of industry. He's a, okay. Well, you're describing really, and as long as he's in shape, you could describe that guy as an alpha too. Because people always say, well, it's like, what is it? Uh, an alpha Chad and a beta loser. But remember alpha and beta are just designations for, for, character traits really for attributes to that guy you know there's 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 alpha you know like i said there's blue pill alphas and there's red pill betas as well too remember those aren't mutually exclusive terms so if you're going to say oh well would they only was it the would they be alpha widowed from a beta bucks guy um probably not because well, i mean they could they could miss the they could miss the the lifestyle they could be alpha widowed from the lifestyle that was provided for them, but they probably wouldn't miss the man himself. And I've been saying this for a while now. It's like women, at least today and to, under today's market conditions and the way we do marriage now, women want to marry a lifestyle. They don't want to marry the guy. I'm not saying that it's impossible for them to want to marry the guy. They do sometimes, but the, 
but it's, there still has to be a checklist, right? It's like the uh, the Royce's four hundred and thirty six bullet point checklist. You got to mat. You got to meet at least the first four or five before you're even considered for an emotional investment. And that might be you got a big dick and you got you're six feet tall, and that might be enough for women to emotionally invest in you. You know, if women are investing in Richard Ramirez and Anders Brevik and the Boston Marathon bomber and Nicholas Cruz and all of these convicted bloodthirsty criminals those guys have met have met the minimum requirements so what does that tell you <laughs> for conjugal visits they've met the minimum requirements to get, to generate a teenage fan club of girls in the in the in the clink yeah that that should tell you that it's not just giga chads <laughs> if you think nicholas cruz is a giga chad you are gravely mistaken trads and tra most trads or trads okay all right so the difference here is the alpha widow dynamic is enough for women to sort of get paralyzed in their lives and by the way ladies if you're watching this too i uh, again i people don't think i'm sympathetic or they think like i shit all over women i don't shit on women i am very sympathetic to the plight of women i am i'm not a feminist obviously but uh, I can understand when like women get to a certain point in their lives and I feel bad for them too, because they were sold a bill of goods, just like, just like men have been sold a bill of goods been sold this idea that if they do everything for a woman and they do, they become clingy, they become good. Like, like they become like serviceable betas. If they become, if they do these things that like Matt Walsh says, Oh, you should do this and go to church on Sundays and do this and, and make enough money and blah, blah, blah. And, and you're doing it. What? Not for yourself because women need you to do it because if you don't, then we're the, the society will collapse, right? It's never for the benefit of the guy. It's always for the benefit of the woman. We need better men, women most effective. That's basically what it is. And you want to talk, I'll tell you the thing that gets me is like for all the shit that, uh, that trad cons throw at the red pill saying like, oh, it's just the feminists and red pill are just different sides of the same coin. No, it's trads. It's traditional conservatives. It's the Matt Walsh's who are the opposite side of that coin because they're saying that it's the same thing. They're just saying, they're saying, do the right thing, man up. So when, so you'll be more acceptable for women, which is exa exactly what the feminists have been saying since like Gloria Steinem and Betty Frieden. Men need to get in touch with their emotional side. Men need to uh, get in touch with their feminine side, anima and animus. There's fucking Carl Jung again. They need to, they need to express themselves and they need to be more emotional and don't judge me. And you want to know why we're at where we're at right now? It's because of this. Uh, it's, it's not because of men and women or some sort of war between the two of them. It's a war between emotionalism and empiricism. And whenever I speak the language of empiricism, trads hate me, feminists hate me, destiny hates me, everybody fucking hates me because the, the, the empirical language speaks the truth and people simply don't want to look in the mirror. All I do is hold up a mirror and you have to look into it and they don't want to look into it. They don't want to see themselves. They, like even when we start talking about politics and everybody wants it to be something outside of themselves, it's the Jews, it's the Illuminati, it's the, 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 you know, the Jeffrey Epstein Island people. It's the, no man, it's us. I've seen the enemy and it is, and he is us. And that's why we have to externalize it because it's too terrible an idea to look and say, you know what? Human beings are pretty fucked up. I can't understand why God would love us at all because we're really fucked up animals is what we are. And man, I, I real, really feel grateful. Thank you very much for that. Cause I'll tell you right now, man, it's a, uh, it, it's us. It's the nature of the machine. I talked about this with Mike on, uh, I did an interview with Mike last week for him, for his 100th show <laughs> on his podcast. And it was sort of our anniversary episode between myself and Mike. And I told him, I said, look, I said, man, it's not, it's not something that's outside of us. I mean, you could say, oh, it's Klaus Schwab and it's this, you know, this evil cabal of people who want you to like, you know, live in pods and eat bugs and everything like that. I said, you know, the people who are saying that, who you think are like horrible people, and they probably are very horrible people, no doubt. They're still living in the same machine that you are. The same machine that hasn't changed in 100,000, 200,000 years. They're, they shit and eat and fuck just like you do. And they want the same things and they have the same neuroses and they have this, the, the same positive attributes and the same negative attributes, maybe in different distributions, <laughs> but they're not demons, Jordan Peterson. They're not aliens. They're not angels. They're not freaking goblins and ghosts and any of that other shit. You know what they are? They're humans like you and me. 
And that's not like to be sympathetic towards them or anything. They're still sons of bitches. Yes. Some of them deserve to get punched in the face. Yes, absolutely. You're right about that. But you know what they're not? They're not fucking demons. They're not extra dimensional beings from Xenon. I mean, take that shit and go back to Dianetics and Scientology and L. Ron Hubbard. Okay. You may as well be a Scientologist if you're going to go and like think, think in those terms. Go get the fucking with the machine with the Enneagrams and shit like that or whatever it is. Go get to clear. I mean, I love L. Ron Hubbard. I really do. Like from a business sense, like he's like, you know, if you want to make a few pennies, write some, this is a quote, you write a few books, but if you want to be a millionaire, create a religion. <laughs> it's like, yes, absolutely, man. You're goddamn right. L. Ron Hubbard wasn't much, but I will quote him on that one. What do you got there? Yeah, it is. I've, I've said in the past too, is, uh, what was it? Uh, Tradcons are just prettier feminists or tradcon females are just prettier feminists. They tend to, at least at the very least, you know, tradcons tend to take care of themselves. At least they understand the game. They don't expect men to find them beautiful when they're overweight and you know, have underarm pit hair. <laughs> it's kind of hot. Nobody does this anymore. They do tend to be prettier. They do tend to be prettier. I, 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 I tr <laughs> like Jedediah Bela took that totally wrong. I, cause I remember one time I said, you know what? I said, you're just basically like making this, you're speaking the language of emotionalism in the same way that feminists do. I said, you know, trad cons are just simply like prettier feminists. And I was trying to give her a compliment. Like, hey, you're pretty. <laughs> you're still feminist, but you're pretty. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> How dare you? Yeah. Armpit hair, man. Who loves armpit hair? You know, it's funny. Oh, God, you guys are going to laugh at me. Have you ever seen the, there's a, what was it? Um, uh, oh, it's, um, there's a, a series and it's on Paramount Plus and it's like the the prequels to Yellowstone and there's one that's called 18 is it 1823 or 1873 and then there's another one called 1923 the one with the 1923 has Harrison Ford in it that's why I was and it has uh, Helen Mirren in it it was actually a really good series but <laughs> they stay really historically accurate because the women of that time didn't shave their underarms <laughs> And they even make jokes about it too. Like, oh, I can't, because like in France, they're shaving their underarms right now. Oh, how could, that's horrible. Like the women like of the time, like who lived on the prairies and shit in Montana or whatever. I'm like, oh man, I can't believe times are changed. 1883, that's what it was. Thank you. Yeah, they, 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 I laugh my ass off on it because they, and they had to have, the ladies, the women in that series actually grow their underarm pits, hair is out. Oh man, that was funny. Because that's historically accurate. I'm sorry to say, but yeah, the people, the people think you know times change, beauty beauty changes. There was a time when women had a, had furry underarm pit hairs. We we don't even think about it now. I wonder what it would take to like bring back furry armpit hairs that, that with in a non liberal way. Like I know if you go to Portland or you go to wherever you go to you go to Burning Man, you'll see a lot of freaking women with underarm hair. Um, yeah, I wonder. I wonder what it would take. <laughs> nose rings. Yeah, nose rings. And, and, and Glenn's wife Coco has a has one of those septum things going too. I'm, yeah, I've, I I remember when I first saw that. It kind of freaked me out for a second. And now I've seen it so often that I don't even think twice about it. Uh, isn't that interesting? It's like sexual. I don't say sexual, but it's it is. It's like beauty escalation. I remember when a a belly ring, like a navel piercing, what only strippers get those. Oh my, she must be hot. She must be, she must like to fuck. She must be a stripper. She's got a belly piercing. Everyone has a belly. Every chick has a belly piercing today. I would, in fact, I'm shocked when I don't see one now. And then it was the tramp stamp, right? That The tattoo that would go across the back of your ass and stuff like that. And maybe that was like a millennial thing. Cause that was really kind of a big deal in like the mid nineties was the, the tramp stamp. And then, uh, then it was a septum. And then it's like, you know, that big gauge earrings and or like the piercings and stuff like that. And now it's, uh, it's nipple piercings. It's like the, the bar through the nipple kind of thing. And if you don't believe me, there is now, uh, I, this is Mike. I coined this term. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. It's called, what is it? It's a nipple pierce chic. <laughs> Women will get like, they'll go brawless. And they'll and maybe not in your town, maybe in Brickell and and Vegas is where this only happens. But like the women that I see who come to who are in Vegas and who come on Access Vegas, they'll wear these very sheer like like you know shirts or dresses or skirts or, or whatever it is you know over tops of some sorts, or um 
or they'll wear like bikini tops or something like that. And they'll be so tight that you can see the nipple bar that goes through the nipple right there because they didn't do that shit for nothing. And you're going to appreciate that. And you can't just see it because the only other way you're going to see that shit is if you're naked and you're fucking that girl. So it's like, no, I didn't do this for nothing. You're going to be able to see that I have pierced nipples right here. And I'm it's, it's nipple piercing chic. <laughs> it's like a, a, a fashion of a fashion sense or a fashion trend that's come out so you can so you can at least safely show off the fact that you have pierced nipples well done ladies bravo you've raised the bar to nipple piercing chic <laughs> yeah yeah i don't know does it, do people find that hot i don't know but here's the thing you probably do for briefly for a while then everybody's has it or that oh no it was the tongue piercing like if some chick has like some stud in her tongue like that and then of course you know if you see a man with a pier- tongue piercing, he'll probably suck your dick. Same thing with we see a woman, she'll probably suck your dick. Because what other function does that serve? <laughs> it's for, you know, it's like the, the tongue piercing, that's for girls who who don't know how to give head without it. It's like it's like a crutch. <laughs> oh, I can't get them off. What else should I do? Uh, how about a... <laughs> All right. <laughs> I win. It's a crutch. It is. Is it? I don't know. I kind of like it. I don't know. It just maybe it depends on the girl. Like if you see some big fat chick at Walmart with a tongue piercing, you're like, <laughs> they all like tattoos on her legs and shit like that. I would be, I would like, I would run. I would run the other way. All right. Who do I have? Who's giving me grief right now? Uh, why do people like try to text me in the middle of my shows? You know, I'm doing a show 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern. Always at this time, do not text me. You are, I put my phone on do not disturb. I only want to be with you, all of you in my chat right now, all 11, 1146 of you right now. All right. Uh, anyway, so I wanted to make sure I pointed that stuff out. I also wanted to just here at the end, I wanted to also um, say that I need people to be a little bit more aware. Here's, this is the pill and the cheese here. Okay. People need to be a little bit more aware of what's happening in the man is what's a man for a bit like to the red pill from outside of right now. Okay. And by outside, I mean, it's not even so much like feminism. Feminism's easy. It's easy to fight feminism. It's easy for, for to fight the, the arguments that women want to throw at the red pill. That's why I don't get into heated debates with feminists because it's too easy to destroy them. They just simply don't have the the faculties or the they don't have the the arguments to really fight against it, right? They don't have the data sets. They don't have that. But when I have to deal with like sort of half measures, like Matt Walsh or Ben, well, not ben Shapiro, but like um, Michael Knowles or the rest of these guys, I I see the method in the madness. So no, I'm not signing an NDA. No, I'm not going to do your show. If it requires me to sign away any rights or any, you know, waive any, uh, any way of using or responding to your bullshit because it's, because that's basically what Michaela Peterson, Michaela Peterson at the very least taught me a lesson. And the lesson is this trust. No one people want to have a, I want to have, we want to have a good discussion with you. No, you don't. If it's a pre-record and you want me to sign a non-disclosure agreement uh, the, I left that with, with Dr. Phil, I did that because I had to do that if I wanted to go on that show. I do not have to do that anymore. If you want to have a re, if you, if you are a genuine agent, if you are, if you are acting in good faith, if you want a good faith debate, you will come to Vegas. You will sit across the table from you, from me. I will not make you sign an NDA and you will not make me sign an NDA. We will put oil we'll throw, we'll simulcast live to your stream and live to my stream. And we will let our streams and our chat people throw questions at us. And we can duke it out like fucking men. But if you're going to tell me to 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 do it with handcuffs on and to do it and you all by your rules, fuck off. That's that's disingenuous. And so again, I put out the challenge: if anybody wants to come to Vegas and they want to say, "Hey, Rolo, I want to challenge you on X, Y, and Z," have something, have a topic, please. Don't just come up here and say, "Oh, Rolo, I want to tell you what a son of a bitch I think you are." Well, that's a that's like your opinion, brah. Yeah, and hell, I would even be happy for that. No, people won't even come to do that. But if you have something and you want to, you want to say, "Hey, I disagree with you on this and this." Hey, man, even um, even Sergio. At least I, like I said, I got respect. I mean, 
it's Sergio, right? But at least I've got respect for Sergio for coming in and doing it. And he had some things that he had like a, a list of items to talk about and which I talked about and refuted every single last one of them. At least I think I did a pretty good job at that. People, you know, it's funny. It's like people want to like pick out the shit where it's like, oh, you didn't debate destiny as well as I thought you were going to do. You don't do really well on your own. Fuck you, Rolo. You don't go and you didn't. Did you not see with with uh, the, the debate with Sergio Sol? You didn't see that? No. You know why you didn't see that? Because you only remember the shit that you want to remember. You only want to remember and you only want to like throw out the, the soundbite shit that serves your, that you align with. I'm a fan of X, Y, you're, you're, you're a rooter. You're a team play. You're, t you're, you're it's your team win or lose. That's all it is. You don't care about like a, objective realism. You don't care about a debate. All you care about is just, you know, content more or less, but really all you care about is like your team winning and that team losing. If and that's why I, I, and even my guys, even my people who are fans of me, they say, man, I would love to see you go and debate at so-and-so. I, I want to see you destroy that guy. I'm like, dude, I don't have debates to destroy the other person. I have debates to challenge ideas. That's really what it should be about. Not a team sport, not a, not a fucking, you know, oh, I always, oh, uh, what was it? Somebody told me about like Andrew, Andrew Wilson. Andrew Wilson wants me to go on his show and I'm probably going to do it this week. And I'm happy to do it because I think he at least argues in good faith, right? Now, I don't know if I'm going to have the religious argument with him. I'll, I'll be happy to talk to him about anything else he wants to talk about. I just, I, I think that that ship's kind of sailed, but, uh, but I'm happy to, I'm happy to talk to Andrew. I consider him a friend. I think he's a good dude. I don't, I'm not going to um, agree with him entirely. I got that, but, um, but that at least you can go, like, I didn't agree with uh, what uh, Richard Reeves, Dr. Richard Reeves, when we interviewed him, I still would like to go back and have another talk with him as well. Especially now, you know, six months, eight months later, I would love to talk to him again, but I don't get to do that. If it's a team sport, if I destroy him, you destroyed Richard Reeves. All right. Sunday, 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 monster truck with Rolo. <laughs> Get a free Snoopy. <laughs> free beer for everyone. That that does that doesn't serve anything. That doesn't serve in, in that doesn't serve the red pill. The red pill is a praxeology. It's not an ideology. And the more people start saying destroy, 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 that's the more you make it a team sport, the the worse. <laughs> that's all the cheese around the pill. And there's no no pill and it's all cheese. <laughs> it's all red meat at that point. And I understand why that plays that obviously it plays. That's why I'm doing the Michaela Peterson show today. Right. So, but there needs to be nutrition value inside of the cheese. You can't, you can't just eat. You can't just eat ice cream and popsicles for dinner all the time. Right. You have to have something with some nutritious value. And by the way, that's a, that's a, a grandma Tomas, it's a Grammy Tomasi saying popsicles and ice cream for dinner. <laughs> yep. All right. <laughs> Did he? Did he destroy Jimmy? He destroyed just sword, sword. Sunday. You guys don't even remember monster trucks, do you? You were denied the pleasure of monster trucks. How redneck can you be if you don't know what a monster Grave digger. <laughs> Grave digger Sunday. Flawless victory. Yes, you're right. There you go. Flawless oh, victory. You get it. <laughs> Finish her. <laughs> God damn it. Stop. All right. Uh, let's see. How can I get out of here for you guys? Uh, oh, um, so long story short, uh, the, just to sum this whole thing up uh, again, uh, let's just give you the announcements real quick. Uh, I will be in Vegas on the 4th, 5th and the 6th. Access Vegas will be on the 6th. It will be a Friday. Uh, I, I don't know how many girls we'll have for it, but again, Mike's birthday is the 5th, the 4th and the 5th. Oh, by the way, the 4th, we're going to go do, uh, what is it? Top, top, top golf or something like that was it top no it's where the driving range with the, the big multi-tiered driving range what's it called is it called top golf something top golf anyways um i have to go i have to bring my driver down there too i've got a really nice sumo driver that i'm gonna bring with me um yes i do play golf um and uh and then for the fifth is his birthday and you're gonna see some pictures of me that you're gonna just be like what the fuck is going on so just giving you, just giving you the heads up because if you're part, if you're part of them, if you're membership, if you're part of the Raulo Tomasi family, you deserve to know ahead of time. Uh, and then uh, let's see, please, uh, you guys, uh, I've got, I've got a lot of other projects and irons in the fire. Some of that I can talk about. It's Top Golf. Thank you very much. Um, 
So I'll be doing that. And then the sixth, of course, is going to be Access Vegas. Um, but once again, uh, I think that you're going to see a lot of this stuff come up. I'm seeing a lot of people coming up with bullshit data sets and bullshit research studies right now. And the danger of that, I think, right now is for, like, I remember I said, like, the threat comes from outside, not for, or from the inside rather than the outside. Well, right now i see a lot of people who want to standardize on data sets and research and studies and stuff that are really shoddy research methodology to begin with and in some cases very questionable funding very questionable individuals involved in this but then i see bigger names quoting those studies as if they're fucking settled science they are not settled science in fact the people who are doing these studies are should in no way be taken seriously in, in any context and I'm just going to throw this out. I'm not going to get into too much detail because I want to save this for a standalone show because I'm already up, almost up on four hours right now. But uh, the standalone show is going to be about research methodology and statistics and stuff like that and really what to be careful of because you're going to see more and more of this come up in the 2024 election cycle because they're going to want to find ways that are sort of sciencey and truthy ways to demonize the red pill that much more. The red pill that is responsible for saving thousands if not millions of lives and it again deliberately becoming obstacles to people becoming more than they are deliberately becoming obstacles to trying to discredit the the, the red pill or discredit the well really the praxeology that is a red pill anything they can do for an agenda and by the way the people who are doing this are funded and supported by people like jordan peterson like daily wire like Peterson Academy, the organizations and people who are, are you know, collectives and tribes of, of people who do not have your best interests in mind. They have a political ideological agenda and they need something that sounds truthy. They need something that sounds sciencey. And all I'm going to tell you at this stage is check their work. Ask them how they came to those conclusions. Because when I'm seeing Tim Poole and I'm seeing even Aaron Clary quoting these guys, uh, quoting studies and research that I know is shoddy, I know has been funded by U.S. counterintelligence or counterterrorism, you know, elements that I know for a fact. And, be, and when they're presented and confronted with these things, they, they block you. They, rather than rather than say or try to refute you, they just simply block you, and that seems more incriminating to me than just simply trying to say something or saying you're you're a fuckwit. Bye. So keep that in mind. I'm gonna I'm gonna do a full up show on that as soon as I as soon as I verify a few more things. But that's that's coming up soon. Yeah. If you don't know the truth, you're easier to fool and control. That's why I don't want you to take the red pill. Exactly. Thank you, Infamous Rife. It's good to see you in there. Yeah. So anyways, that's that. Um, I have one and I think I'm going to go out on something different this time. Uh, much as I love Giovanni Sanders. And by the way, Giovanni Sanders has a new uh, a whole like a set of like four or five songs right now that are really, really good. I heard one of them at the Wet Republic uh, bikini contest. As a matter of fact, the, the DJ mixed it in. Um, but go do go check out Giovanni Sanders. But uh, I think this is more appropriate to end the show on right here. So let me see if I can go dig this up. Uh, where do we go? Oops, not in there. Hold on. This is a better, I think this is the good, this is the way to do it. All right, people, I'm just about out. So uh, please uh, watch me on, I'll, I'll be back in Vegas on the, oh, 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 wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. And do that just yet one more special announcement people uh people keep sitting, looking at me and they go well the rollo that trt is really working really well for you you know um i'm going to on i believe it's going to be wednesday or it might be thursday uh depending on how how the schedule works out but on wednesday or thursday of this week i'll be doing i'm I think it'll probably be a recorded interview, but I'm going to interview a one Mr. Hide Tata Yamagishi. Yamagishi. Hide, H-I-D-E, Yamagishi. Y-A-M-A-G-I-S-H-I. He is the current reigning champion, world champion in uh, World Body the World Body World Bodybuilding Federation, I think it's WBBF. I think that's what it is who just won uh, the, the championship in uh, Romania, of all, of all places. 
And he is also the proprietor of Powerhouse Gym in uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. And I will be doing an interview of him. I'm actually I'm going to do two things. Uh, we're going to do a quick video because I've been training on a train with with Hide. And then uh, we're going to go into the studio and I'm going to do an interview with Hide. Um, I hope I'm saying his name right. I think it's Hide. Hide Tata. He's Japanese. And um, that's going to be a really good inf- interview. You guys, you know, I'll tell you what's funny. is like when we talk about like, uh, what is it? Uh, money, muscles, and game. We always get into like money is easy. I can talk to Miguel and Charlie for crypto. I can talk to George Gammon. I can t- talk to, you know, uh, Kiyosaki and uh McElroy, uh Ken McElroy and um Jason Hartman anytime. Well, I, in fact I would love to interview Jason again. Um so the money's taken care of. The game's easy. I mean it should me, Mike, whoever else, you know, you name the name the the character, I can probably do that. But we don't really spend too much time on like well, muscles, right? So I'm gonna spend some time on muscles with Hidetata, who is the reigning champion for World Bodybuilding Federation. Go check him out. Good dude, man. So when people say, Rolo, oh, it must be the TRT. It must, you must be juicing. Da, 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 da. Look, oh, where's the beach? It's over that way. Well, it doesn't magically show up on your body unless you're actually working out and you have a workout program. <laughs> so I'm going to talk about that with Hide, who's a good friend now. So, so that's going to be a lot of fun. That's something to look forward to. But that said, I have to, uh, I have to go out with this one because if I don't go out with this one, well, I don't think, I don't think we could have a, a Michaela Peterson episode. If I didn't use this as the exit for for our uh, for our uh, our time together, because if it's I'm here and you're here, doesn't make it our time. See you guys later. I was at the club the other night. I was down at Life, chilling at the club. You know, I'm chilling with this girl and she was dancing. And it's about two in the morning. I'm talking to her and realize she, you know, she had like two kids at home. Now I don't mind the two kids at home. That's all good. I'm like, what the fuck is you doing in the club at two in the fucking morning on a Wednesday night? What the fuck? Thy mommy's in the club. She gon' need a babysitter. Call a babysitter. She gon' need a babysitter. Thy mommy's in the club. She gon' need a babysitter. Call a babysitter. She gon' need a babysitter. Thy mommy's in the club. She gon' need a babysitter. Call a babysitter. She gon' need a babysitter. Thy mommy's in the club. She gon' need a babysitter. Call a babysitter. She gon' need a babysitter. Thy mommy's in the club. I ain't never had a problem with a bitch. Young fly, yeah, nigga getting rich. Hit the club, got my bitches on the list. Drop some commas or some product. I better holler cause I'm lit He probably wonder where his mama at Got DCF on the steps and a welcome mat But my service with a burden I'ma give him a brother And if the youngin get the waller He had care for the summer She fucking with me cause she know that I'm about that MKZ be the whip with the loud pack Four holes deep and they latch to my belt strap The crib reek of weed in the streets Probably smell that mommy's in the club She gon' need a babysitter Call a babysitter She gon' need a babysitter Thy mommy's in the club She gon' need a babysitter Call a babysitter she gon' need a babysitter. Thy mommy's in the club. She gon' need a babysitter. Call a babysitter. She gon' need a babysitter. Thy mommy's in the club. She gon' need a babysitter. Call a babysitter. She gon' need a babysitter. Thy mommy's in the club. The club stops for nothing. She gotta get that party out her system somehow. And the bar's still jumping. So get your squad to meet with my squad. And the car straight bumping. Your favorite song about how men ain't shit and hit up the function. Only thing that can stop me is if a baby daddy run up on me. I'm with your baby mama, but she ain't got no baby body. I'm at the blazing sign. I've been rocking with the lady. Lady drama product of what I drop and I ain't about to waste a condom Her last man had a problem with Ativan And if he find out where she's hanging he'll get in his battle stance Now the club ain't no church and the church ain't no club But she's happy to get her drink on and leave with a broke bum And they'll call this misogynistic like booty popping and pimping Cause I'm trying to fuck but I'm also wondering where her kids is And girls wanna dance to songs that refer to women as bitches If you let your kids dance to it too don't cancel me for tripping Thy mommy's in the club She gon' need a babysitter Call a babysitter She gon' need a babysitter Thy mommy's in the club She gon' need a babysitter Call a babysitter. She gon' need a babysitter. Thy mommy's in the club. She gon' need a babysitter. Call a babysitter. She gon' need a babysitter. Thy mommy's in the club. She gon' need a babysitter. Call a babysitter. She gon' need a babysitter. Thy mommy's in the club. Cold out, bruh. Now you buggin'. You pay a lot of money for your kid and now she's stuntin'. You working for a living, but she sippin' and she puffin'. You try and hit a line, but she fuckin', so she dubbin'. Now you stressin' by the hoe. I've been getting up my money. She sayin' that she loyal, but she fuckin' with your buddy. And Shorty let it clap on the Snap for everybody. She say 
say she went to college, but the hoe and what she studied. I know you wanna backtrack, skipping that tap. One mistake and now your life changed, saying that's that. She get it poppin' with her bitches and she make your rack slack. Now your baby got no dinner, only eating fruit snacks. Leave a message, little bitch. Why you playing with me? I seen your ass up on the snap, you should be laying with me. I pay you running all your payments and I'm hating to see. I heard you got a babysitter, I ain't paying the fee. Mommy's in the club, she gon' need a babysitter. Call a babysitter, she gon' need a babysitter. That mommy's in the club, she gon' need a babysitter. Call a babysitter, she gon' need a babysitter. That mommy's in the club, she gon' need a babysitter. Call a babysitter, she gon' need a babysitter. That mommy's in the club, she gon' need a babysitter. Call a babysitter. She gon' need a babysitter. Five mommies in the club. He's saying podcast has been a production of the Rational Mail. All rights reserved. Number 23. Still awesome.